It is six minutes, uh, about six and a half minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba Show's kickoff hour. We're off and running. We thank you for making us part of your day. Don't forget there's two new contests at rickandbubba.com. What in, uh, is your chance for a meet and greet with uh, country star Riley Green as he's Grand Marshal of the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix? It's a great little package here that you could win, the meet and greet Sunday, April 28th with Riley. Uh, you've got some tickets to the race, uh, garage tickets, uh, parking pass, uh, really cool stuff. But you only have until Friday to register because the contest ends at the end of Friday, and we'll announce the winner next Monday. Also, don't forget Fix Mama's Mouth. It's there at rickandbubba.com. For both of these, just click on Contest. Easy to find. They're the, they're the top two there. Uh, you uh, have a chance for your mom to win a, a $17,000 uh, dental makeover, including 10 upper veneers, lower bleaching, cleaning, x-rays, a uh, really great annual uh, promotion we do with Dr. Dudney. His staff is the absolute best, and uh, you have till May the 3rd to get those entries in. Just email them to support at rickandbubba.com. All the instructions, which are very important, by the way, for them to, uh, get, to narrow it down to the uh, the top three, uh, are at rickandbubba.com under the Dr. Dudney registration. Sits there and tells you exactly what they need. Please make sure you follow those instructions. Uh, and get those in. Uh, the deadline, as I said, is Friday, May 3rd. Then the top three will hit the website. You, the audience, will vote. And then the day after Mother's Day, May 13th, that's uh, Monday, May 13th, Dudney will be in and announce the winner. So those two promotions are going on right now. Also been getting some emails. Okay, guys, are y'all at Regions again? What's the date? It's Wednesday, May the 8th. Regions tradition, the Champions Tour comes through Birmingham, Greystone Golf and Country Club. Bub is scheduled to play. Uh, and that is Wednesday, May the 8th. Uh, that is the day that we'll be out at Regions Tradition. All right, over to my left is Mr. Greg Burgess. Let's bring him in and get this thing started. And thank you all for being with us. What's up, my man? What up, what up? What, what up? up? What's happening? Oh, just checking out the news, seeing yeah. anything good out there. Yeah, which is tough out. to find. It is. I love when we both just read headlines to each other, and it's the shock and awe factor because there's some crazy ones out there. But back to regions, this will be the time of year where you kind of get around uh, golf and you're like, you know, I, I really like this. And I then, and, and I then, agree with Rick. I like the clothes. Yeah, the clothes are fabulous. Uh, <clears throat> and then you'll declare that, hey, you know what? I really could do I could pick this up, and then you never will. No. Uh, <laughs> That's how many years has that been going on? About. Twelve. How many years ago did was it that you took your shirt off and walked behind uh, you know, one of the stand up? Time flies. Let's see. It's, it's longer ago than we. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna say eight years. Eight years. That's just a guess. Uh, let Let me see something here, Greg. I'm gonna go back because it was on my Instagram uh, at Calvin Speedy on uh, on Instagram. I think I actually posted that as a story. I, I believe. Let me. I'm going back right now. Boy, it's way back, Greg. Oh, yeah. my gracious. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm just, here I go. Way I, back, buddy. I think it's on there. Uh, let's see what we got. Um, so, so long ago. Oh, look at there. there. We have gotten, Steve Harvey, we have gotten to see a lot of oh, really cool people. I remember when he was there. Yeah. yeah. That was, the when, when, do you think, when do you think that was? Six. What? Six years. It's 2016. Oh, wow. Just want to let you know. All right, here we go. I've post, I posted it on May 18th, 2016. was a good year for 2016. us. 2016. Uh, and um, WIET 42, that's the CBS affiliate for the Birmingham market, was doing a stand-up, and we challenged you to walk <laughs> behind the stand-up. You are. Yeah. Walk behind the stand-up. Uh, they were in He was there. The, the reporter was interviewing Rick and Bubba, and uh, you there you are. You and I just, acted like I was lost. <laughs> you're just yeah. walking. You walk right behind him shirtless. <laughs> if y'all want to see that on my it, – it, it's not Your a – Your house, he wanted to leave. He yeah, I know, I know. Back back on uh on <laughs> on my post it's May eighteenth, twenty sixteen. Good gracious. Well, you know, we got a rule that if there's a live camera, someone Golly. must pull their shirt off and walk through it. That's like a rule. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, Greg. Greg, and you hold it for some reason you holding a cup of coffee makes it even better. <laughs> I forgot about that. And you can kind of see uh I'm sitting there with Helms at the broadcast uh because we were doing the kickoff hour, of course, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and then you get up, take your shirt off, and walk right by. Yeah, it. No. All 
All right, so you never know. Lisa didn't think it was funny. No, no, very embarrassed, uh, Um, I think, probably of you. But uh, the Rangers, that that broadcast has brought so much over all these years. I'm already thinking about the breakfast. Yeah, it's a good one. You know I love the breakfast. It's a good one. It's a good one. Get the show going. I go in and give me a plate. Get you a plate. Uh, So be looking for that May 8th. Um, That's always fun. You playing? Uh, no, Bubba. Bubba's okay. playing this year. Uh, he is. He says he's in. Oh, so, good. He good said he's, try, he's trying something new, not touching the club till he plays. Well, that may make him <laughs> hit better. Hit well, him. yeah. Why, why fret over it, right? I think I did hear him say last time he did that, he hit the, somebody in the audience. He did, but but like we were talking about, they weren't hurt. <laughs> you know, they weren't <laughs> they weren't hurt in the gallery and got a signed golf ball out of it and can True. say Bubba hit me. Big nod on right? your head. You know, it wasn't too bad. It is impressive, though, uh, in these golf tournaments when you watch the gallery and the camera people that are – they they trust these pros. <sighs> they, they're right there in front of them. Uh, and, and, uh, but not in the pro-am, my friend. Mm-hmm. Do not be careful. Uh, hey, when Charles Barkley hit the, uh, the, the guy in the gallery, I think in the neck, I can't oh, remember. You could hear it. It was it. It's when uh, for a few years the region's tradition was at Ross Bridge, uh, yeah. and I'll never forget. I think Taylor Hicks was in in my group. Uh, Charles was there. We were telling everybody, "Hey, watch out right here," because they were just they, there. They are. They're on the right. Watch out! And he hit that, and everybody ducked. But this one guy that was around wasn't the corner paying wasn't paying attention, and bam, he got hit. It went down. He he ended up being okay, but. Yeah, but it, it hurt. Had yeah. to rub a little dirt on it. Yeah, and then didn't uh, Stan White get hit in the head by something? But one time uh, he was with Bo. I'll never forget. Bo Jackson comes in his golf. Uh, he's in the golf cart going, you know, uh, you know, golf cart path. Go, you know, path. You know, he's just trying to clear everybody. Cart path. Cart path. Screaming it, and and he comes by. I think he was in the group in front of us, and uh, and Stan was holding his head uh, with a little bloody towel. Where oh, I guess wow, I, I think it might be Tim Brando or somebody. I can't remember who Good it was time. that hit him. There's just so many memories that oh, come yeah. from this. So um, we've had a lot. So hey, you never know, mm. and that's uh, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all that then is fun. Charles finally got the hitch out of his swing. He did. Do you remember when uh, it was at uh, Shoal Creek for, mm-hmm. uh, and he went and, and did the one one, one arm, arm swing, and, and it went and, right down oh, the middle. It was beautiful. He did the hitch, and then he just took one arm. And yeah, swung and it. he got frustrated. Yeah, he was doing the hitch, perfect, and then just grabbed it with his right arm and just swung, and it went right down the middle. I That's insane. Uh, but yeah, he has gotten a lot better, a whole lot better. All right, so uh, we are off and running for today. Don't forget those promotions; uh, those are pretty cool promotions. And um, uh, coming up in, in a couple of hours from now, scheduled to appear is Coach Skip Holtz uh, of the Birmingham got Stallions. The stallions rolling. Yep, uh, I look forward to being out there. Sunday night, um, I think it's a six uh, Sunday night, Saturday night. Uh, it's about a six six p.m. Uh, kick, I believe. We've had him here in studio three, maybe three times, mm-hmm. two to three. Yeah, and what a nice person he is! So nice. Skip Holtz is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and obviously a pretty good football coach because you know they've won it two years in a row mm-hmm. and they're off undefeated right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but I mean, just a great person. Yeah, and he gets it, man. He gets in here and he knows what to do, how to yeah. do it, um, and uh, great. Uh, Great conversation always with him, and yeah. he'll be on Zoom today. He's not, not going to be able to come by because, you know, now they travel like they yeah. do. He's just not in Birmingham all the time. But we'll holler at him uh, on Zoom today, scheduled to appear in about three hours from now. So don't go anywhere today. We'll get you going, get you through your morning if you're listening live. If not, just hang out with us. We'll get you there. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Most emergencies come without warning, and when the next one comes, you won't have time to pack and prepare. It's better to get ready now before an emergency strikes. Start with a four-week emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply at preparewithbubba.com, helping millions of Americans prepare since 2008. My Patriot Supply are experts in self-reliance. Their four-week emergency food kits offer over 2,000 calories every day, and these kits last up to 25 years. Go to preparewithbubba.com, save $50 
$25 a kit. Are you somebody who likes deals? Well, go to MyPillow.com slash Bubba because right now they're having their $25 extravaganza sale. For example, premium Giza My Pillows are $25. My Sandals, $25. Six-pack My Towel Sets, $25. Four-pack Dish Towels, $25. Two-pack Multi-Use My Pillows, $25. Beach Towels, $25. Don't forget their 100% Arabica Organic Coffee to start the day, 50% off. It's deal time, baby. MyPillow.com slash Bubba or go to Rick and Bubba. Dot com under the sponsors. Helix Sleep does it again with an innovative kids mattress made to flip. Why? Well, the firmer side is great for younger kids when they need more spinal support to aid proper development of their growing bodies. You simply flip it over when they're a little older, around 8 to 12 years old, when they want the softer side for sleep. Handcrafted and assembled right here in the USA, Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders, including the kids' mattress. Go to helixsleep.com slash bubba. Helixsleep.com slash bubba. Patriot Mobile offers the same dependable nationwide coverage we all want, accessing all three major Major networks, but without funding agendas you don't agree with. Switching sends the message you support free speech, religious freedoms, our Constitution, as well as our military, veterans, and first responder heroes. Their 100% USA based customer service team makes switching easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade. Your choice. Check them out at patriotmobile.com slash bub and get free activation or find the link at rickandbubba.com. There's a popular saying out there health is wealth. And folks, I couldn't agree more if you're dealing with everyday aches and pains, I want to tell you about Relief Factor, a daily drug-free supplement developed by doctors. It's not just a pill that masks pain. Relief Factor uses a unique formula of natural ingredients that work together to help reduce or eliminate pain. Try their three-week quick start kit for only $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. You can also find the link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Debt. Keeps you tossing and turning at night. You can't get away from it. Insanely high interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. There's a new way out of the debt trap, Pivotal Debt Solutions. Pivotal Debt Solutions can cut or even eliminate interest. They can find programs to write off your balances. They find every solution possible to end your debt. Before you do anything, contact Pivotal Debt Solutions first. Talk to them for free. Find out how fast they can help you get out of debt. Just visit zapmydebt.com. That's zapmydebt.com. You ever know Notice when you ask moms what they really want for Mother's Day, many of them ask for one day of peace and quiet. Maybe you can't help mom run away from all her responsibilities, but at least you can help her tune them out and tune into something great with a brand new pair of Raycon earbuds. Their audio quality rivals the big audio brands that you know and you love at a price you'll love even more. With eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life, Raycons are perfect for all-day listening. Get 20% off plus free shipping at buyraycon.com slash bubble. Springtime is all about fresh air, freshly clean homes. It's also the perfect time to give a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security, the only home security system we use and recommend. The system blanket your whole home in protection. It has sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you go to simplysafebubba.com. That's simplysafebubba.com for 20% off. Also, find the link at rickandbubba.com under sponsors. There's no safe like Simply Safe. A wave of concern is washing over America. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of our fellow citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming presidential election. Hey, this is Rick. This is why we're standing with AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now listen, AMAC is more than a senior discount organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and hope our nation returns to traditional American values. Now as an AMAC member, uh, we're not only going to enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, a free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots who love this country. Take advantage of this election year special for Four years for $30 and be part of the solution over the next four years by becoming an AMAC member. You're strengthening a movement dedicated to preserving the principles we hold dear. Join now, amac.us slash Bubba. That's amac.us slash Bubba. There's also a link at rickandbubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't stop. 20 minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and tuning in to the kickoff hour. Helmsy off till next Wednesday. He's out coaching. 
uh, and uh, Lord willing, we'll be back with us uh, mid next week. Uh, we are rolling, and uh, we thank you for being with us. Uh, this week's RBU is with uh, Dustin Connell, uh, and we've talked to Dustin. He's the uh, 2024 winner of the Red Crest uh, that was just in Birmingham with the MLF, and we look forward to sitting down with him where he's not as busy and crazy. I say that. They just had their first child, Trent. He was born uh, on the 8th of this month, so um, – he was, I think, born in the middle of the last event, uh, actually. Uh, so I say that Dustin, uh, I was communicating with him yesterday. He said, he said, you know what? It'll give me a good break to come up. He's going to be in studio and do the podcast um, and just kind of clear my head a little bit because, yeah. you know, first time dad, it, it's, oh, it's kind of busy, uh, busy, there. busy. He said it's been a fun time, but a busy time. It's a big adjustment. And, uh, and so we'll have him in studio. We've, um, had him on Zoom a couple of times when when the Red Crest was going on, uh, but uh, we'll have him in studio and uh, really break it all down from Clanton, Alabama. Him and Gary. How about that? <laughs> Two famous people. Yeah. So that's RBU this week. So be checking that out. Don't forget to Skip Holtz, uh, coach, will be with us in a, a couple of hours from now. All right. So I've got a story for you, Greg. When I saw this, I, you're the first person I thought of. Okay. Th- uh, you ready for this one? I am. Thousand pound sisters. Oh, is it Tammy or God, what's the other one? Tammy. Okay, the biggest one. Well, she's, she was the biggest. She's so she's showing off her weight loss journey. Oh no! With shocking new selfies. No, have you got the selfie? <laughs> I do. Uh, after already dropping nearly four hundred pounds. How about that? She's uh, thirty-seven, and a thousand pound sister star. She went underway. Uh, un- she underwent some. Um, uh, surgery, I guess, at the end of 2022, yeah. and it gave uh, gave fans a closer look at her transformation with a slew of photographs on Instagram. Uh, she's all excited. Um, it says Listen, here she the was post gigantic com- when it started. She was gigantic. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it says it says here it uh, Tammy has revealed she revealed in December that she weighed 285 pounds down from her starting point of 717. Dang, and here, here you go, right here, Greg. Look at Tammy. Hmm. There, look at Tammy. <laughs> I can't wait for next season. <laughs> I uh, so I mean, you look at. Uh, so we all thought it. Is she's the point, one on the right. Is no, that, she's on the left. That's Tammy on the left. Yes, she was the bigger of the two. Oh yeah. Okay. And the other sister had already lost some a uh, good bit. Mm. But Tammy was, I mean, gigantic, a huge. You couldn't. That's the ones that had to take the seat out of the van so she could get in it. <laughs> And all that. You love that. Well, no, I just love the you way. Can't turn away. I've can told, you? Well, again, a lot of that uh, is hard to watch, but the the way they interact and the way they talk to each other, like I was telling you, it's awesome. I mean, they dog each other. There's, let's see, three girls and a boy. Mm. That's the siblings, and every one of them's had gastric bypass or whatever. Every one of them, and uh, some are bigger than others. But it's, um, it's the whole gang. So this rehab center that she was at, she spent 14 months. Mm-hmm. at the um, Windsor Lane Rehabilitation Center in Ohio, where she lost more than 400 pounds through treatment and surgery. This is where she met Double K, her late husband. Yeah, he, he died Caleb. last season, Caleb. Yeah, Yeah, they got married with about 30 friends and family, and then he ended up passing away. But Caleb but, wasn't doing good on his – Yeah, mean, he, 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 he didn't quite – was dedicated to the weight loss as much mm-hmm. as Tammy was, evidently. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it's sad that apparently was. she's doing well, Greg, and she's showing it off with her selfie uh, photos on Instagram, and the fans are proud of her. And and I saw this story; it's it's one of the top stories in entertainment. Uh, and uh, I just had to I had to print it because I knew well, I knew Tammy. I knew you would be interested in it. And her brother, who has to push her around, I know he's had because he's already complaining about pushing her big A around in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Tammy, that's how he put it. Okay. And but I mean, at two eighty five now, does she have to stay she, in the wheelchair? No, I think now she can. Okay. By the end of last season, she could walk around. But if it was like a long distance, they had this wheelchair with these giant, big rubber tires because they were on the beach. <laughs> you still, you love it, don't you, buddy? <laughs> I do. So you saying they had to take the back seat out of a car? Yeah, you. Uh, before she lost the weight, yes. And and what no, she, like a van, they take the back seat, and she'd go in there and just fall over in the floor what was left, like you were hauling, fall lug, like you're hauling like luggage. <laughs> I mean, then, goodness, it was tough to get her I'm out. I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at your delivery of it. And bless her heart, I've never seen anybody gain so much weight in her forehead. Really? Yes. But 
in her forehead. Yes. She would gain weight in oh, her. It, was, yeah. it kept getting bigger. And they would make fun like of Like a it. Klingon? So that's the thing. They'll make fun of each other. The sisters do. It's well, how funny. would they make fun of the forehead? She would talk about her forehead sticking She out. would? Yeah, see, one sister can't see good and got her feelings hurt because <laughs> they were making fun of, made a joke about and she only had one good eye or something. <laughs> hurt her feelings and then Tammy pointed out, well, y'all make fun of my forehead. It's all, you know, no big deal. <laughs> Back at you kind yeah. of thing? Okay. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't start crying when y'all do that. <laughs> It's it, 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 the this it, again. It's the interaction between the siblings. That's why. Okay, I watch that, it. that's that's why you watch it. Yes. Um, stuff like that is hard. It's hard for me to. They'll watch. get in a fight. It's, it is hard for me to listen. Watch. They'll get in an argument in a minute. In a second. Yeah. Oh yes. Also, uh, I see Don Day brought his peanuts he in did. from uh, delicious as usual. The uh, the weekly Bible study yesterday. Um, uh, you were tearing them up early. Get your handful. Uh, well, I might. I might go by there. Yeah. Uh, my favorite is that you got choked up about two minutes before we started the hour. Yeah, them little. And you couldn't shake it. Yeah, you know, the little red outside of the peanut. It'll yeah. get in your throat. <laughs> well, especially when you're, I guess, so hungry that you don't take time to even no. hardly get them out of the shell. I mean, you're I don't throwing them the in shell. your mouth. Huh? I'm not eating the I shell. Well, but I think fragments of it get in there. I'm pro. I can, I can crack them. <laughs> you're a pro. <laughs> um, this story I don't know what to do about. Now you t- get, let me get your feel on it. Thousands of everyday snacks that face being banned in multiple states because their mm, ingredients are linked to cancer. I, I don't like the sound of this. Legislation is being advanced in Democratic states, so take that for what it's worth, over health concerns of, I'm talking about foods like Flaming Hot Cheetos, Mm. Lucky Charms. Yeah, we even like, have drinks like Gatorade. Well, that hurt. I like um, Gatorade. Let's see what I else like here. Powerade. I'm seeing Oreos. I got Doritos on here. Uh, Fruit Loops. Uh, hey, Tricks. Doritos are good chip. Nerds. Pop Tarts. No. no. Hey, I eat Pop Tarts every mm. weekend. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Frosted or unfrosted? <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> there's a daily. In other words, everything out. that's good. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, there's a bill advancing in multiple states that could see thousands of some of our favorite candy, snacks, sodas banned in their current form. Well, it's too late now. We've been eating them our whole life. Nobody told us nothing about it, so just keep it to yourself. Right. Well, last October, I don't know if you remember this, we skimmed past this story. In California, they approved like an historic Skittles ban that outlawed four food additives linked to cancer and fertility issues. Now New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois have advanced similar measures. Well, I will say um, this. And it's some of the additives in some of these things uh, that they don't like. I can live without Skittles. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're okay. Uh, But let me tell you something. There's a generation out there when I was, when the kids were Mm -hmm. still in school and we were at concession stand, them kids would tear Skittles up. I mean, it was like the largest selling thing at the concession stand. You had different flavors. Mm -hmm. And they loved them. Well, a lot of folks are saying that you might see some changes in the look, taste, and texture of some of our favorite food items. Mm. So, Did you mention Oreo in that? that I, yeah, you? I saw it. There's a big picture here. here. Let me show you this. There's a big picture there oh, of all the... a lot of good stuff. Like yeah, that. And, and you see some Oreos there, oh, top right. Um, uh, wait a minute. Is that M&M's? Yeah. Crap. I know. Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, there's some uh, cheese dip. Cheese dip? Yeah. What the? Certain brand. Hmm. Fruit Loops, I can live without that. Yeah. I can live without Tricks, Lucky Charms, I can live without that. I can live out with that, without all the cereals. I, I mean, yeah, I don't I like it. But I could go, now, Pop-Tarts? Now, hey, we we got to talk about that. Saturday morning, I, I'm a threat to eat a blueberry Pop-Tart and put a little butter on top of it Ooh. with a glass of milk. Come talk to me. It's good huh? stuff. Especially during hunting season. i got to have mm. my Pop-Tarts now. We'll be right back. Resolving to eat healthier this year, that was easy. Actually doing it, not so easy. That's where a field of greens comes in. Better nutrition is a key to health and longevity, and a healthy diet could even help you avoid health risks that run in your family. Field of Greens is your healthy superfruit and vegetable habit. It's the only fruit and vegetable product that literally promises better health at your next checkup. Your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. Do your vitamins or green drinks promise? 
wellness, better health? No. I love this stuff and definitely feel healthier taking it. Each super fruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you're resolved to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. And we got you a 15% off first order with free rush shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba for 15% off. Or go to rickandbubba.com. Find the link under sponsors. So there's many options for phone service. But how about spending your money with a company who shares our values? For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been the only Christian conservative phone company out there. They offer the same dependable nationwide coverage we all want, accessing all three major networks. You'll get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding agendas you don't agree with when you switch to patriotmobile.com slash bubba. Now, switching sends the message that you support free speech, religious freedoms, our Constitution, as well as our military veterans and first responder heroes. It's a win-win. It's money you'd be spending anyway. Now it will be working to help make a difference, and their 100% USA-based customer service team makes switching easy. Now, you want to keep your number? Fine. You want to keep your phone? That's fine. Or you can upgrade. It's your choice. They'll also help you find the best plan for your needs. So check them out at patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. That's patriotmobile.com slash Bubba and get free activation. Springtime is all about fresh air, fresh starts, freshly clean homes, and it's the perfect time to give a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security. The only home security system we recommend, the system blankets your whole home in protection. It has sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more, plus a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras that keep watch over your property day and night. It's backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. So you get fast emergency response when you need it most. Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can even help stop crime in real time with no contract and a 60-day money-back guarantee. You can try Simply Safe risk-free. Simply Safe will give you and your family a real peace of mind. So don't wait any longer. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for a fast protect monitoring at simplysafebubba.com. That's simplysafebubba.com for 20% off when you sign up for fast protect monitoring. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Ever notice when you ask moms what they want for Mother's Day, so many of them just ask for one day of peace and quiet. I mean, good luck. Maybe you can't help mom run away from all her responsibilities, but you could at least help her tune them out with a brand new pair of Raycon earbuds. Raycon's everyday earbuds are the perfect way to tune out all the noise around you and tune into something great. Their audio quality rivals all the big audio brands you know and love at a price you'll love even more. With eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life, Raycon's are perfect for all-day listening. Raycon's also come with three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. That explains the tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Right now, get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping when you go to buyraycon.com slash Bubba. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Bubba. Buyraycon.com slash Bubba. Buyraycon.com slash Bubba or look for that link at rickandbubba.com. You'll find it right under the sponsors button. Folks, most emergencies come without warning, and when the next one comes, you won't have time to pack and prepare. It's better to get ready now in advance before an emergency strikes. In all kinds of emergencies, supplies should be ready to grab and go right away. Secure those supplies at this website, preparewithbubba.com. Start with a four-week emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply, helping millions of Americans prepare since 2008. My Patriot Supply, they're experts in self-reliance. Their four-week emergency Emergency food kits offer over 2,000 calories every day, protected by heavy-duty four-layer packaging. These kits last up to 25 years. They're sealed inside rugged handled buckets, and they're made to grab quickly. Go to preparewithbubba.com and save $50 per kit. They ship fast and free in unmarked boxes. Once again, you can save $50 per kit at preparewithbubba.com. That's preparewithbubba.com or find the link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start All right, 25 minutes until top of the hour. It is the kickoff hour. Speedy and Greg here. Helmsy off till next Wednesday. He's out coaching. 
Uh, and Lord willing, we'll be back with us next Wednesday. All right, we've talked about a couple of contests that are at rickandbubba.com. You need to go there, uh, especially if you want to meet uh, Riley Green. There's a meet and greet opportunity for you uh, coming up uh, on April the 28th at Barber Motorsports Park uh, where uh, they're going to be um, the hosting the uh, Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix. He's the Grand Marshal this year, so cool for that. him. He's got a lot going on, but there's a meet and greet opportunity. Got some garage passes, of course, tickets to the race, uh, parking, uh, all of that. All so that you got to register for that. All you got to do is just go to contest, click contest, <clears throat> click here to register. Boom, put your stuff in, submit, and then uh, on Monday next week we announce a winner. So go there at rickandbubba.com under contest. All right. So Greg, you said you have a story for me. Yeah, what you I got, do, buddy? And I know you're excited. Okay. Because you know how you feel about your Browns. I'm oh, call them your the Browns. Cleveland Browns. Okay. Well, they've made a big step towards the future. All right. And this is when Baker Mayfield played for the Browns. You I kept, predicted. I claimed a, a change was coming, uh, if you remember. You got it right about him, but it was a different team. Yeah. And it was a few years later. Right. He right. came in a little quick. Yeah. Had some good commercials. Just a little bit. A little bit. But the Browns, and if you'll remember this, when I was a kid, to be honest, I, I really hadn't noticed that they had changed it until they brought it up. Going back to the white face mask. The white, really? Back to Brian Sipe days. You remember Brian Sipe was quarterback? Mm-hmm. And they had the white, the orange helmet with the white I face do. mask. I yeah, yeah. Well, they're going back. This may be the turning point they're looking for. Okay. Did we ever figure out why they keep having an elf on the fields? You remember the on the logo? Yeah, we did talk. I think that's the brown. But I, Well, anyway. <laughs> Good news for you. This may turn it around. They're going back to the white face mask. And I know you're excited about it. I heard you talking about it earlier. (laughs) Well, this will do it. This may take them to the finals. Brown the elf. All right. Brownie, excuse me, the elf. Uh, It says here, yes, their beloved mascot. Great. Yeah, but I thought they were. Uh, here's what's funny. When my parents went to high school over here. It's a, it's no longer a school. It's Jones Valley, and mm-hmm. their mascot was the Brownies. Okay. But I was told that. That is over in a mining area, ore mines. Mm-hmm. And all the, 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 a lot of the ore miners were called brownies. Okay, because they get they get that soot on their face, and that you know, like the the seven dwarfs, the elves, they were yeah. miners. I, somebody tied that to it one time. And said that's that's where it comes from. That's why there's a elf, and they call him a brownie. Mm-hmm. And it was, I thought the I, I don't know where the the NFL Browns got their name. I thought it was the Brown family that originally owned them. Remember? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It Paul says Brown. It, it says here. Um, because, I mean, you know, Brownie the Elf, uh, it came to first it'd be the first official mascot of the Cleveland Browns some 76 years ago. Didn't know that. Uh, and Art Modell uh, put the Elf on the shelf after buying the team in 1961. But uh, Brownie is back and bigger than ever, it says this story that was uh, uh, written in uh, 2023, of the summer last year. Yeah, we remember last yeah, year on the field. We talked everything. about that. Yep, yep. And yep. it's saying in this article about the face mask, they come up with a new emblem, but I can't find it. Oh, really? Article. See what it looks like. The new, a new emblem. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what that means. But we all, they got a weird uniform anyway with their brown jerseys. It's kind of weird, but. Again, I do like the white face mask. Though. Yeah, yeah, I do. the The white face mask will be interesting, and I won't bore all y'all with brownie information. But I'm sitting here; it, it started yeah. way back when. But the uh, the story today, as you said, is is the white face mask. Yeah, so. so that ought to do. Yeah, it. so that that's going to be different. There's hey, playoffs. So you talking about now a change is coming? That's right, change is coming. <laughs> now it's coming. Mm, they better hope. Uh, Deshaun Watson shows up with his white face mask on and maybe plays a few snaps this year since they've invested so much in him. So do you think that will go down? And, and there's some. I mean, we can remember back, way back, the, the Herschel Walker trade, oh, yeah. with, you know, with the Cowboys and the Vikings and all that. But could the Deshaun Watson, could that could that trade and and that contract be go down as maybe one of the worst ever? I think so. And, and like I said, one, I think the number was too high just based off his ability. Yeah. I mean, he's a good quarterback, yeah. but I don't know if he's elite. Two. Right. The fact that he had to serve a suspension, too. Yes. And you knew that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the worst deal, or if you look at it from his perspective, the best deal. Right. In the history of the NFL. Golly. Weird. It, very weird. Um, all right, I got a story here for you, too. It's staying with, um, uh, uh, I think it was from Yahoo. I think that's where you are now. Did you see um, the, the man that's been uh, charged in uh, transporting Masters Golf Tournament memorabilia? Taken from Augusta National. Oh, a bootleg. He's been charged in federal court in Illinois in the transportation of millions. I'm talking about millions of dollars worth of Masters Golf Tournament uh, merchandise and memorabilia stolen 
from Augusta National. Uh, oh, wow. The uh, document filed yesterday in district court uh, there in Illinois accuses uh, – uh, this man of transporting the items across state lines to Tampa, Florida, knowing the same had knowing that, that it all had been stolen, uh, converted and taken by fraud. Uh, so these items were taken from the famous golf club and other locations beginning in 2009 through 2022. So this was a wow. long deal. And Who's supposed to be watching that? I mean, I, I don't know if it was a little at a time or what, but uh, he worked there at the golf club. Uh, at the golf oh, club, okay, and yeah, a little um, plan. yeah, yeah. For many, uh, for many here that have been going for a long time, I've never been there, but but they say it's really something else because. And we talked about one of the houses that you know the 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 ninety something year old widow is not selling oh, yeah. and all that. That you you're basically in neighborhoods and all of a sudden, boom, there yeah, it is. There it is. It, it's kind of crazy. I've never been there. Uh, I wish she would sell the house. Yeah, I, I really do. Yeah, you do. Every okay. year, and it comes up. We're going. How can you leave that money? I know she. Anyway. Right. But the story is, I mean, that's from 2009 to 2022. So let's say this. If you're doing something like that that long, you have to feel like, I think I've got away with this. Right. You know, what if he'd have stopped maybe at nine years? Into it? <laughs> right. What do you got away with? I don't know what the deal is. Is it, is it that? I'm going to do it one more time. I got a little system. I tell you, he, I'd like to hear how he done it. Well, I, you know, I would too, because the story doesn't exactly say that, but it, upon conviction, uh, the, um, it's, it says here, uh, his name is Richard. Uh, he would have to forfeit any property and cash attained from proceeds traced to the stolen items. That's the government take some saying. paperwork, figure that out. Good night alive. Um, wow. so anyway, so th- that's, that's interesting that millions, they're saying millions of dollars, Must not, not just plan. a little bit. That's yeah. A, that's a long time to miss it. It is. It is. It had to be maybe just a little at a time. I so guess. he was an employee. He gave himself a raise. Yeah. Like, huh, but you know that no memorabilia. That's a big deal. Uh, I mean, folks that you know, uh, you know that that go there always try to come back with something. I talked to you about my neighbor that brought me back uh, a yeah. Masters golf shirt. You um, couldn't believe it. Yeah, I couldn't. Very kind of them last year. Uh, but it they it say it's hard to find. They I bring mean, you he, nothing this year. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I think she went, but I don't know how long for uh, she, how long she went or whatever. Well, she, but she said there's pictures of like the, the the memorabilia shop in there and the pro. I call it the pro shop, whatever. Yeah. Uh, people just standing over each other trying to get stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very hard to get. But this guy had them on well, something. Them on, so I guess if you're still gig. in that merchandise, you know, huh, yeah, come on, bring me a little bit here. You looking for a shirt? I yeah, think I got it. What color you want? Right. What size? We'll take a break. We'll be right back. 866 Weeby Big is our number. A lot to happen in today. What happened with Caitlin Clark at her press conference? Nothing. These hand gestures and everything. What's, what's the deal? I, I thought it was supposed to be like it's a big story, and I read it, and it's absolutely nothing. It's one of the top headlines today. Caitlin Clark and Uncomfortable I, Moment press conference. I didn't see anything uncomfortable at all about all right. it. All right. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Taco Bell just dropped the new Cravings Value menu. Now you can get 10 items for $3 or less, which means you can get the food you want for the price you want. It's almost like you can have your cake and eat it too. But in this case, it's a double stack taco from the new Cravings Value menu. So basically, you can have your double stack taco and eat it too, which is a lot crunchier than cake. The new Cravings Value menu is here. Get it at Taco Bell today. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Contact store for price and participation which vary. Tax extra. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. 
If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawon'twait.com. Family Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. It's time to get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data. And you get to choose who joins your family plan starting as low as $25 a line. Does it have to be family? It can be family or people you like. Get more lines and more savings. Switch to Straight Talk for family plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Family plan discount with four lines, all on the Silver Unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Right now, get a free leaf blower and select combo kits. And stock up on soil for all your gardening projects. Get three bags of three-quarter cubic foot miracle Grow garden soil free when you buy three. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Offers valid through 417. Compared to trimmer purchased separately. Blower and trimmer sold packaged together as combo kit. Includes one battery and charger. miracle Grow offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. While supplies last. Doug. Being a spokesperson's easy, kid. Just say, customize and save with Liberty Mutual. Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. That's not it. Let her be mutual. Mm -mm. Liberty Musical. Nope. Lumberty, um, line. It's two words. Liberty Mutual. Got it. Don't not pay at LibertyMuttNoodle.com. Wow. I guess I'll just do it. <clears throat> Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. That's a wrap. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates. Resolving to eat healthier this year, that was easy. Actually doing it, not so easy. That's where Field of Greens comes in. Better nutrition is a key to health and longevity, and a healthy diet could even help you avoid health risks that run in your family. Field of Greens is your healthy superfruit and vegetable habit. It's the only fruit and vegetable product that literally promises better health at your next checkup. Your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. Do your vitamins or green drinks promise better health? No. I love this stuff and definitely feel healthier taking it. Each superfruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you're resolved to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. And we got you a 15% off first order with free rush shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba for 15% off. Or go to rickandbubba.com. Find the link under sponsors. A wave of concern is washing over America. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of our fellow citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming presidential election. Hey, this is Rick. This is why we're standing with AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now listen, AMAC is more than a senior discount organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and hope our nation returns to traditional American values. Now as an AMAC member, uh, we're not only going to enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, a free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community community of like-minded patriots who love this country. Take advantage of this election year special. Four years for $30 and be part of the solution over the next four years by becoming an AMAC member. You're strengthening a movement dedicated to preserving the principles we hold dear. Join now. AMAC.us slash Bubba. That's AMAC.us slash Bubba. There's also a link at RickandBubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. All right, we're leaning on uh, about 11 minutes until top of the hour. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us here at rickandbubba.com, the kickoff hour. Uh, we are coming on back uh, and. Looking forward to another day here as I'm rolling through some stuff here, getting some paperwork ready. Don't forget, we got a couple of contests at rickandbubba.com. Uh, just click on contest. We got the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix contest. Uh, and then we've also got uh, the registration for Fix Mama's Mouth. Uh, this portion of the show is brought to you by simplysafebubba.com. This 24 7 burglar busting protection for your home or small business. Uh, it is uh, springtime. It's all about fresh air, fresh starts, and having your place freshly cleaned. This means it's the perfect time to give a fresh look to simplysafebubba.com. The uh, only home security system we recommend, the system blankets your whole place in protection, has sensors to detect 
uh, break-ins, fires, floods, and more, plus a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras to keep you uh, being able to watch over your property day and night. It's backed up by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day, so you get fast emergency response when you need it most. Their professional monitoring agents can even help stop crime in real time. With no contract and a 60-day money-back guarantee, you can try it risk-free. Just go to simplysafebubba.com and give uh, give your place a, a real uh, you know, a, a, a nice, safe uh, run through of going, OK, let's make sure that we are secure, because uh, a lot of you this time of year, too, you're traveling, you're out, you're doing different things and you, you want to make sure that you're protected. SimplySafeBubba.com, SimplySafeBubba.com. You're going to get 20 percent off just because you're part of this show. Any new system when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring is 20% off. SimplySafeBubba.com. Find a link at RickandBubba.com under the sponsors as well. And as we always say, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Um, all right, so we're rolling on back. Speaking of Simply Safe, do you know what happened? I, we, I have Simply Safe. And you know those little yard signs that you can, you can, yeah. you, you see people, you know, staking their flower beds or whatever it says. This you know this house is protected by yeah. whatever. Well, I have a little simply safe side. Uh, Smith and Wesson. Yeah, <laughs> right. That too. Uh, and we have a little you know uh, simply safe monitoring twenty four seven you know whatever little sign uh, that it's just just around the flower beds and stuff. It doesn't like stand out. But yeah. One of the dogs was running by it yesterday and broke it in half, <laughs> just flying by it. The, the I told Terry, love our Showing dogs, herself. love our little dogs, but. I would say 80% of the handles around that house are the dogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. And, yeah. And, no, no, no. I'm in your boat. It, it, absolutely. That's not a high, I, too high a figure at all. And breaking a Simply Safe yard sign is not that big a deal, but it's just stack that on top of everything else. Uh, hey, try this on for size. How about chewing the wiring on your garage door? Are you serious? How about that? Who did that? Who you think did? Millie. It? Millie. Millie. That's the garage that door on a grateful little girl. I go out there. And she has chewed the wires up. Are you serious? With the sensor. <laughs> so I just twisted them back together. <laughs> yeah, well, at least good thing you know how to do that. Golly. I was, it's every day is something. She'll chew. Kid gracious. Yeah, how about that? Well, I, I knew to, it. I, I looked over and they were just all, I said, golly. Bum. You can't. So I had to go. So I went back into the garage and I and I found, I kept, that, luckily, I kept the, um, and I forget how I got two of them, but I kept the Simply Safe box that the unit came in, mm -hmm. and uh, I opened it up, and there was another little yard sign in there that I never did use. So I just they stuck it on there, pee on it, and run over. I probably it, so. Everything else. Well, they get so excited, I, and I have to tell them. Like when I come home, it's like, man, I, I was just here this morning. Yeah, y'all calm down. Yeah, it calm isn't that big down. A deal. I mean, they're sitting there, and I'm thinking, okay, Jack could have a heart attack at any moment. He's like. <laughs> Oh, he just came, he's like, I can't believe you're back. And I'm like, I was just here. Yeah. Calm it hadn't down. Been that long. And then I get out of the truck and they're just like running around the truck like just crazy they people. Can, they're so glad you're home. I know. And then they tore around the they tore around the bush to go to the front door where I was gonna go in and down it went. You can't have a thing. Well, Not luckily one you thing. had the old backup till they <laughs> yeah. get it. Well, and I didn't know. I was like, you know, I think I remember seeing something in that box, and sure enough it was there. All right, so uh, here we go. We're off and going here. Rick and Bubba join us right after top of the hour. Um, this is a weird story. Uh, you know, nowadays there's so many rules at at, uh, at schools and stuff like that, and there, there doesn't seem to be any common sense at all. But apparently well, a, a high school student in Ohio will miss out on her senior prom after getting suspended over bringing a bag of corn chips to school. A bag of corn chips. I've never heard of corn chips being a threat. Ah, let's hear about this. She I don't... missed out on going to the NBCTC prom, and now not we have found NBCTC. out that she's not going to be able to go to her homeschool prom over a bag of potato chips. Ali had had taki chips on the school bus. She was hungry. <laughs> Somebody gave her some chips. She opened them on the school bus. She ate them. She had two chips left back in her bag. She got off the bus. She were... She ate the remainder of the two chips. She put the trash in a trash can. She went to her class. The school principal called her down to the office. And at that point, they asked her if she ate the chips. She said yes, and they suspended her for five days. That's the student's mother, wow. uh, Amber Guy, talking about what happened to her daughter. Apparently, the snack was not permitted because there's a teacher that's severely allergic to them. I guess corn, the corn chips. chips or something. I I've don't heard know. of uh 
Peanut allergy, never yeah, corn. Right. Good gosh. They so, banned them, huh? Yeah. So, uh, so, so she's a senior hmm. at Miami Valley Career Technology Center, okay. set to graduate in December. Uh, and um, so you're at home. So she gets some chips, gets them on the school bus. She was hungry. She ate them, threw them away, and then um, it says Allie didn't finish the chips. Uh, brought the bag inside the building, but there was only two chips left in the bag. You know, when she finished the remaining chips, Allie gonna, threw the bag away and went to class. I'm gonna tread lightly around this because I don't want to defend anybody. Offend, excuse me. Mm-hmm. I, if I have a, a severe allergy like that, mm-hmm. you know, the world cannot be corn chip proofed, right? And I have to live in the but, world. What'd you say, corn chip? Corn proofed? chip proofed. Okay. So, you know, I've, I've just got to learn that, that I have to, you know, try to pay attention mm-hmm. and, and, you know, go the extra mile and mm-hmm. all that. To, mm-hmm. Because, like I say, the world is not going to make it a corn chip free world. No, no that's going to be and tough. And maybe at school you should do the same thing. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I'm just, you wonder about the ban. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I understand. I mean, zero tolerance, I'm just saying, I think, what is do you lazy do leadership. When you're not at school? What do you yeah. do? How do you survive then? Right. When you're I, out in public. I, so some of these schools, and, and I understand because people don't know how to act, you've got to go to these zero tolerance things because, you know, if you bend here, you bend there, then people. But I think common sense has left the building on some of this, and we've talked about it. The zero tolerance stuff is just lazy leadership because nobody wants to make a decision. Because sometimes you can make a decision, and in one case, because of the situation, like a dishonest mistake here, she was eating something on the bus. She brought yeah. in. There was just two chips in the bag. She ate them and then threw the bag away. They act like she went. She in. ran up to the teacher and was like yeah. pushing them in they her act face. Like she or went something. in and, and like planted them on her desk, some under something, so she could touch them. Now that, then you would be in trouble. Right. Good gracious. But. Um, so anyway, yeah, student missing out on prom after ba- bringing bag of chips to school. Mm. So why'd you miss the prom? Well, I brought a bag of chips to school. Yeah, that's really? the reason you missed your prom. Yep, that's, that's it. it. I was banned. <laughs> Brought a bag of chips to school. Well, won't you just, how about this, paddle me and let me go to the prom. Yeah. If you want to punish me. Good gracious. Right? Yeah. Suspend me after the prom. <sighs> I don't get it. Don't get it at all. 866-WE-BE-BIG. We only have two minutes, but if I you're feeling answer. froggy uh, and you want to holler at us, unscreened phone calls are an option. Uh, don't, uh, don't forget too. There's a, a couple of things that are happening, uh, here on the show today. Uh, coach Skip Holtz will be with us in a couple of hours. Ojo. The, uh, Birmingham Stallions, uh, they're hosting, uh, I think is it the Washington Defenders, I, think I believe it is. Washington DC Defenders. Uh, and You'll be uh, there. I'll be there Saturday night. Uh, six o'clock is the kickoff. Uh, and mm-hmm. looking forward to that uh, coming up. Uh, it'll be my first time with the Stallions. Uh, and I, I saw a little bit of what we're doing and, Hey, we're busy. Okay. Let me just so tell it's you. It's a little different than well, what we yeah, used yeah. to. Yeah, it used to be that, or it used to be, with uh, with a lot of, like, with the Titans and then with the Blazers and then the Birmingham Bowl, about the start of the fourth quarter, you're kind of winding down or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going all the way to the fourth media timeout, fourth quarter, so it's going to be fun. You're going to be there full lot of, I think we, yeah. we have races. We have... I we have you. all kinds of things, and they said that the 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 crowd uh, this past Saturday night was was a really good crowd. Are you going to work them into a? Frenzy? Yeah, I'm going to go nuts, Greg. Uh, let's go here. Uh, we've only got about forty seconds. Two oh five unscreened phone calls. The phones went nuts. What's up? What, what you want to talk about? Hey, uh, so I was listening last week sometime and heard y'all talk about uh, Sylvester Stallone and his movies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to check in with Greg and let him know about Sylvester's latest movie, uh, Big Ass Tub of Lard. <laughs> okay, Greg. Gosh, I'm mighty. <laughs> see, you, see, you're proud of that. Huh? <laughs> he snuck it in there because he, he stayed calm. He did. He didn't rush it. Oh, it's excellent delivery. Well done, my friend. Well done. <laughs> So that's how we're going to end this hour. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> that's funny. Can't have a thing. <laughs> Hope you're happy. He's laughing. How hard do you think he's laughing right now? Well, he now? know he pulled it off. You know, yeah. He did a good job. And look, for some reason, you're standing up. God, it's half there. When I hear the music, I'd stand up. <laughs> we'll take a break. You we'll notice right. that? Yeah. Of course, all these other phones are just ringing like crazy. They and are. we just, we're going to break. But your buddy got in, though. That's Rick right. And Bubba, Rick and Bubba. camp and uh, he said uh, he did what he was told to do and part of his job was to build 
rockets, which is what he wanted to do, even though he didn't totally agree with how they were being used or whatever, but he was just being a good citizen at the time tough and doing right what he was, he was told to do. That's mm-hmm. a tough picture right there. But, oh, yeah. Well, but, I mean, yeah. Well, sure. yeah. Well, like I said, did the resume. They, he said, now, you know, anything you want to tell us? Well, now, you do need to be aware that I, I was a Nazi. Uh, okay, all right. So we'll get, somebody get the PR department in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you go from that to you got a civic center named after you, and <laughs> now I will tell you this, well, Rick, I, I, he, I prefer, I honestly prefer Von Braun. I think it sounds cool. I it's just not accurate. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 I, but I, I do too. think it's cooler. Yeah. You remember those days, great concerts coming to the Von Braun. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. If it had said Von Braun, it wouldn't have sounded. It's not right. as cool. No, it's not no, as cool, Rick. No. So so basically, his his story all along was that he was a victim of the Nazi movement and Hitler, just like everybody else was in Germany, and it was basically looked over then by Americans because hey, he was pretty good at what he did, and he carried us. He built the Saturn V right there in Huntsville that carried us to the moon. No, the PR on him now is is in Huntsville is actually really good. I mean, you just don't put people's names on things that you you're upset with, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he was head of Redstone for many, many years. Look, I, I'll just be straight up. I, I know people who work with him. Yeah. They they all rave about him. Yeah, this – well, mm-hmm. didn't expect this text I just got. But the uh, – <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know how you know somebody, you think you know him. I was going to say, you know, my grandmother was also one of his secretaries. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like somebody you like, no. That's never come <laughs> up. Hey, you, you just don't tell me your grandmama worked with Von Brown? I mean, well, but, let, look, let I've me, had lunch I, with the guy that you're talking about. Guys, I got the same text, and I'm thinking, we've had lunch about a dozen times over the last yeah. year, and that's never come up? Well, so, Rick, let me let me put it in contemporary terms. There are things going on in this country right now that are legal and are done every day that I think are morally reprehensible. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, yeah. and I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna t- speak plain here for everybody: abortion. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, if we went to another country at some point in time and they said, "Well, we're not going to let you here because you're from a country that that allowed abortions," you go, "I had no control over that. Right. I had none." I voted against it. I spoke out against it, but it didn't change a, a darn thing. Right. But I wouldn't want to be labeled an abortionist because I was from America. Right. And I, I think that is a, a modern comparison as to what went on with a lot of the German people. They had no choice. Now, they were held at gunpoint to their uh, the Nazi party. We're not held at gunpoint, but we also have no power to change it. Well, you remember Babylon B actually had a little fun with that. Because um, and and you know they sting with humor, which I love. Yes. Um, and and they were talking about when everybody got on Trump for going and meeting with Kim Jong. Mm-hmm. And and th- th- they were talking about Harry Lovett so bad to be so look at him associate with him and trying to talk to him. And then Babylon B put out that Kim Jong Un had to apologize for associating with the president of a country that killed this many billion million babies last year. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Y- you know, mm-hmm. and that was a good one. That that you know we got some pretty bad PR ourselves. Yeah. To Bubba's point. But that doesn't mean everybody here was okay with that or was all in on that. Right. So that's a good, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Yeah, we, we mm-hmm. are, uh, at least, you know, some of the time, we have had the ability to speak up against it. Now, that may go away, too. Yeah, I think the, uh, I think the number when Babylon B did that, I think our country was at $6 million that year. Uh, I also want to point out just briefly, because mm-hmm. the word Nazi is such a negative word, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, they even point out in here that the uh, the term and and this they were quoting, uh, they were quoting von Braun in this, said uh, because it was his national duty in wartime to do what he could do for the country, he admitted that he had been a member of the National Socialist Party, but labeled it normal and necessary to protect his career and livelihood, in a totalitarian government, so. National Socialist Party was what the Nazi Party was. Just remember that. Yeah, remember, that, yeah, the National Socialist Party was the Nazi Party. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. In Von Brown's own words, okay? Yeah. Don't trust me. Do your own research. National Socialist Party. Starts off as a fun zone, doesn't it? That's a mic drop right there. 15 minutes to the top of the hour. 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. (laughs) Thanks for being with us. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. the hour. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, a brand new hour starting. This baby starts with a national anthem. A brand new hour from the Big Boy Studio out on the bleeding edge of technology from Sweet Home, Alabama to the world. Thank you for being with us today. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, they've already knocked out the kickoff hour. Helmsy is coaching uh, tennis uh, in a conference tournament, so he's been out most of the week. Uh, Lord willing, back next week. Uh, Eddie Van Adler settles in for the YouTube experience. Uh, Hello to the tubers watching us either live or on the YouTube archive. We thank you for being with us. Uh, Yesterday's Wednesday Bible Study Archive, now available uh, on our YouTube channel or our podcast channel, whichever you prefer. Uh, And you do have daily archives of the entire show every day uh, on our YouTube channel and our podcast channel. A Best of Hour also available for you if you just kind of want to get a nutshell of the day. You can catch that on our podcast channel. Or you can watch that on Blaze TV if you're a Blaze TV subscriber. And there's also, believe it or not, uh, local television stations and uh, various cable stations that also carry uh, that best of hour. Just check your local listings for that. Uh, So however you're here, whether it be live or on an archive, we are thankful that you are here. We have another day to unpack for you. We need the silver tongue one. The man with a golden voice, professional lunch eaters, man of the year, the inventor of pizza and a cup, Shakespeare's worst nightmare, and the master of the king's English. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bill Bubba Bussy! Rick Burgess, friends, neighbors, associates everywhere. Howdy.
we roll clean out of sight. There he goes, Bob Seeger. In the Silver Bullet Band, Big on, Bob on his motorcycle headed west. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, in that song, Bubba, and you and I got to do this. He says at one point he stands alone on the Great Divide. Yep, yep. I could go east, I could go west. It was all up to me to decide. Yeah, I stood there, I looked down, mm -hmm. lost a lot of friends. <laughs> Just then, I saw a young hawk flying, and my soul began to rise. <laughs> uh, all right, so Bubba, we're unpacking another one today. Uh, uh, one of our favorites, uh, Coach Skip Holtz, will drop by. Oh, good. I'm glad to talk to him. He's winning again. You, you know, I, he just keeps winning. Yeah, you and I have a pretty. Uh, if you if you're if you're kind of a dude and, and some somewhat normal, you probably like these things. Today, you and I get to talk football with Skip Holtz. We get to talk professional bass fishing uh, with Dustin Connell mm -hmm. and the Rick and Bubba University podcast today. And if uh, if the the time works out on everybody's schedule, might get to roll over to the Kevin Derry Bay Golf Tournament today. Yeah, yeah, that uh, I always enjoy going to that, uh, doing the podcast on Thursdays, and it being on Thursdays have been a been a problem the last it makes few it years. A little more complicated. It is. It mm -hmm. uh, you know delays a us a little bit, but yep. uh, we'll mm -hmm. try to get it all in today. We'll we'll do it. And uh, so if you're coming in for Kevin Derryberry's golf tournament, Kevin came by yesterday. Of course, he was in love with Jesus. Yeah, love, but I didn't love Jesus. I love you designing this poster, but I love Jesus more. <laughs> it's so so anyway, uh, Kevin, his, his ministry he got, uh, yesterday. Kevin hung I might around. I'm quit doing that if I want to be invited to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Well, look, he needs you today. You know, I mean, we got Kevin right where we want him today. <laughs> but but the, I don't uh, think he needs anything. No, he'll have a great turnout. Like oh, he does. I talked with him yesterday a little bit, and uh, and I just want to get an update. I said so because he also receives a grant. Every month, for all of you that support the Bronner Burgess Memorial Fund, you help support Kevin's ministry. And I was asking how it was going, and man, it sounds like God just continues to. You know, we went back to you know he was telling me the testimony, you know, which we've all heard so many times from Kevin, but really powerful testimony. And it's also a testimony of the power of prayer of godly parents. And uh, I, I have certainly been there, and and certainly there now. Sometimes you just need to pray for them, you know, and especially when they make their own decisions and. His parents prayed for him for years, and he told me I, I, this part I guess I'd forgotten yesterday that when he left Telluride because he felt called to get out of that scene because uh, they were playing, you know, bars and stuff like that, and his life was kind of upside down, that he at one point, when after he'd given his life to Christ, did not have any income of any kind, didn't have any money in the bank, and he said, I didn't know what to do, and he said, Scott Dawson, asked me to come and play at a youth event and give my testimony, but he said he couldn't pay me, but I could sell my CDs. And he said, and then that, that time, all those youth pastors were there, and he, he got introduced to all them, and he said, so I, I had to go do one more Telluride gig in Huntsville. He set up for a New Year's Eve gig. It was my final gig with Telluride. And when I came back, remember, remember when you had phone machines? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, he said my, my my phone machine was full of people asking me to come and uh, and do stuff at youth events and stuff like that. That's great. And he mm. said I've, I've never never missed it since. Wow. The, the, you know, and, and uh, so it's uh, but uh, they do all kinds of stuff in prison ministry, uh, recovery ministry, and uh, and of course all the stuff Kevin does going around giving his testimony stuff. So good to see him and those of you that are coming today to play in that tournament. Most of you probably know that because that's why you're coming, but you, you might be a guest of someone, but uh, if you don't know what you're supporting today, uh, you're, you're making a difference. So I uh, look forward to uh, seeing all of you out there for a little lunch and, uh, and a little visit, and I hope you all have a great day. looks like the Alabama weather will be kind to you today. Good, good. So, uh, so that, Kevin's got a great record of that. Too. He really does, and there's been times when it looked like it wasn't going to work. Mm, yeah. But, but, you know, Kevin's one of those people when you see him, you just start smiling. And yeah, you in. have to. You know, And he's not he, a big fella. He's one of the good guys. You know, he's it's not no a big doubt. fella. He's not. No <laughs> it's, it's just, no. it, just this whole attitude like you're talking about, just that, that's just that laid back, just, uh, <laughs> you know, if you just, like you always sum him up, I just love Jesus. He just always positive. Yeah. You know where he stands. You sure. You know, uh, so uh, anyway, that's happening today. Uh, I told you what we'll do on the Rick and Bubba University podcast. We'll talk Major League Fishing. Uh, we also uh, have two contests going on at rickandbubba.com, uh, one of them involving VIP, uh, a VIP weekend at Alabama, uh, the Alabama Indy Grand Prix, uh, which benefits uh, Children's Hospital as well, as well. Riley Green will be the Grand Marshal. you get to meet him. Uh, and uh, so that's there. And also, Bubba Fix Mama's Mouth is back. There it is. Uh, if, mm -hmm. you, if, you, if you want to enter your mama, uh, you know, mama always thinks of herself last. And you've been looking at mama's teeth and, 
Maybe she puts a hand over her mouth because she don't like to smile, and she's done so much for all of you. I mean, could you get her a new grill? So just uh, go really? there. Well, I'm just trying to just, tell the kids. I mean, she's done a lot for y'all. That's what we've heard. Yeah, can't in you? Can't past you, cases. Yeah, every letter we read. Yep. So uh, fill out that information. Um, somehow try to get mama to give, let you take a picture of her teeth. I don't know how you're going to do that, but most of you have worked that out and, uh, and send all that in. Yeah. And, uh, and so all of it's there at the contest bucket. That's it. Smile <laughs> real big, mama. Why are you zooming in? <laughs> mama, come a little closer. Yeah. No, show me them teeth, mama. I got to see them. It's part of the requirement. <laughs> right. I mean, you, well, you have to do it. Yeah, we got to see the teeth, y'all. We got to know. We got to know, know she's know a candidate. We're up again. We got to know she's a candidate. <laughs> all right. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. We just wanted to clear it up. Make sure we had all the boxes checked. Oh, buddy, look who's coming around the bend. Ah, uh, yeah! It is Henry the horse. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so there sorry. There he is. There he is. There he is. Come on in here, Henry. Happy to be up in that camera. Watch out there, Henry. Here comes Henry, though. Look at him. Look at a little spry today, Henry. What's up, guys? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> How's it going? Doing great. I need to apologize. Okay. My cousin, you may have seen him in the halls of the Capitol building. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Adler. Yeah, he's uh he had his face all painted with the American flag and He's. You'll probably recognize him when I tell tell you who he is. He's. He's half buffalo, half jackass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all got family to be proud of. Yeah. Some excitement across parts of the deep south yesterday with Grapple. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of people. Say, say they've not heard of that before, and it doesn't happen a lot. But but this is nothing new. Did you guys see the grapple yesterday by chance? I, I did not. I it, saw the. It, picture it sounds a lot like sleet when it's hitting your windshield. Yeah, what is so, a little yeah, bitty know, it, round it, snowball? It, yeah, what it is? Yeah. It's actually <laughs> snowflakes that's coated in rhyme ice, and when this stuff comes down, it it, it looks like dipping dots. If you yeah. guys have seen <laughs> dipping dots before, don't get me started uh, on dipping dots. You mean the snowflakes of the future? <laughs> <laughs> Do not get me started on dipping dots. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, it, it's that. soft and it's squishy and uh, it, it's it's interesting. It, it comes through these super cool water droplets, which coats the snowflakes with this rime ice. And uh, again, it's pretty harmless, but uh, it, it was not sleet. It was not hail. It was grapples. So that was the Grapple. big subject of the day. And then we had freezing fog. A lot of people were talking about that. It, it coats the trees with rime ice. And it's just if you're not driving, it's beautiful. But if you're driving, the bridges get a little icy in spots. But uh, anyway, that we don't have too many problems this morning. Still a few patches of freezing fog. But uh, again, after that burns off, things should be pretty quiet for a while for much of the uh, southern and eastern part of the country. Quiet. So uh, we are uh, in a very, very weird time. I know a lot of you have been saying, hey, you guys haven't talked about the uh, impeachment yesterday and all that much because we knew uh, that representing Alabama's 6th dis uh, district uh, that Congressman Gary Palmer would be returning uh, back uh, to the home state of Alabama and has agreed, thankfully, graciously, to be on the show with us today. So we thought we'd talk about it uh, with him. Uh, so, uh, Congressman, welcome back to Rick and Bubba. How are you? Good to be here. I'm good. Anything Glad going on? <laughs> got anything going on? Boy, it's well, a, so trying to save the country. Yeah, well, and, and I think that is uh, not hyperbole. I, I think that some of us, and I know we've been through bad times. You've had people say, well, we've been through bad times. What would you have thought if you'd have been you know, during World War II and we've got the Nazis and we've got to try and attempt to eradicate a whole race of people? Yeah, you're right. I would have been thinking, man, this is, this is perilous times. What would you have been doing if you'd lived in the Civil War? Yes, I would have been saying those are perilous times. You know, the Cuban Missile Crisis, I mean, I talked to my dad. He said it was terrifying. Watch this. Didn't know what was going to happen. But, but I think this time, it's been a very long time in the modern era 
where, you know, we all go, hey, we don't need to lose the republic. And, you know, people say, oh, he's exaggerating. Never you roll your eyes, you know. But I think now the reality that there is a movement to, to take the constitutional republic and destroy it, wad it up, and then create something else is, is not hyperbole. It's not an exaggeration. I think people, from what we're hearing, think that is a legitimate concern. And what can be kind of scary is I think they're getting to the point that they're willing to do whatever they think they need to do to keep that from happening because they're starting to think that they have no recourse through the normal channels. That's what we're hearing. And, that, that, and that's what we got to kind of talk about today. Well, there, there are recourses that, that people can take, and, and every individual has to understand that, um, that as a citizen of this country, which is a republic, The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. 22 minutes now past the hour. Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us. Uh, a brand new hour as we work our way back. Uh, kind of gave you the, the, the updates on the things we'll cover today. Um, I don't know who, you know, there's certain heroes out there like you and, and I. Here. You and I, Bubba, have lo- looked for them for years. You know, who do we credit with air conditioning? You know, oh, yeah. uh, why do we not have a day set aside for them? And. Uh, and, you know, indoor plumbing, really big. You know, somebody named John, apparently. The refrigerator. Uh, yeah, I mean, all that was these. Big. That all gave these. us a chance to eat pork. Today, I don't know, <laughs> this one probably not near as big as the ones that we just talked about. But I don't know who uh, in, in at American Express uh, developed the technology that if your, your card is stolen or lost and you replace it, you don't have to go to every single place that you use it at and, and, and give them the new card, it automatically is now ready to go. I don't know who now, did what, what was this? Say this. So, so this, this, I don't know how they did it. So back in the past, the old days, if you, and I, I love American Express. I've used it for years. I put everything on it that will accept it, okay? And then just, you know, you manage it month to month, and you kind yeah. of see how you're spending. You, it's basically you, you're giving your, your family budget uh, right there in a, in a statement every month to look over without having to, you know, put it all in different categories. It's all just laid out right there. So anyway, um, uh, so in the past, uh, you know, and if you lost your card, then once you got the new one, you had to go to every yeah. Amazon, yeah. Every, whoever you set up accounts with, you had to go back and give them the Change new card. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do that anymore. Oh. Uh, I don't know how they did it. Hmm. Uh, it's just like once once you get the new but card, they did it. Uh, you, once you get the new card, they're like everywhere you had the old card, you're good. Oh. And I was like, wow, uh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> but I would I would love to thank you for that. Yeah. Now I don't know how I lost the the American Express card this time. Uh, it was a strange uh, losing of the card. It's lost it. Lost uh, it. And and I, I honestly thought that I had left it. And this will own y'all, and it won't surprise you in the least. So I was I was in a situation which is not the best situation for me, as y'all know. And I was having to wait. And, you know I'm not a, I'm not a big wait person. And I struggle with that. And I've, I've tried to get better about it. Uh, I, I don't really enjoy waiting a long time for things. I, I don't know anybody that right, does. Right, right. And, 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 you know, once you've returned every email and once you've watched every funny video your friends have sent you, you, you start getting kind of bored, you know. And, uh, and you know, you your people are start hearing from you that, you know, that left you a message two weeks ago. They go, oh, well, you called me back. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know that time I was looking for? I have it right now. Uh, and then you start thinking, well, surely it won't take any longer. And that's when you really get in trouble is when you think you're almost done. Yeah. But then you're, you find out you're really not. Mm. And, um, I, I made the, the, this was the worst one. I got up on my feet, walked with my stuff thinking I was done Uh-oh. only to be told still got something else they're doing. No, so, uh, great. so anyway, um, so not a big weight person and, uh, and, and I need, and I've gotten better, but still not real good. <laughs> And uh, like we've said here before, Bubba, if I once was a zero, now I'm a one. That was an improvement, but but not 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 right. a bit. You're still like a, one. a little more. Yeah. yeah. So I, of course, what do most people, you know, that from our community, if we if it was snack machine over, you know, and so I was like, let me ease over and see if we can find something for Big Papa. <laughs> Getting that? Yeah. Oh wow, they got sales fish. Uh, <laughs> of course. By the way, I don't know who's restocking upstairs. We're out, and we've been out for two days now. 
Uh oh. But what anyway, the, the snack machine upstairs. I, I love these Celsius drinks. These little no. energy drinks. I just I just absolutely love them. Now some of their flavors. If when I'm walking around with them, I cover it with my hands so people don't think I'm gay. <laughs> but uh, right. but but it, well, I'm just sure. being, I'm just being honest. So so anyway. Um, <laughs> So you know now these modern day snack machines, you just pop your card up in there, oh yeah, uh-huh. and, and then you do your selection. I'm pretty sure that I did my selection and walked away and left my card stuck up in that. Right? And, 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 Are you serious? Yeah, I think so. And um, right, come on. So I think to myself, of course, you know all you do is you just get on the horn once you've exhausted all effort. And I called back you to the place, you know, that I'd been there so long. We were like family. So I called them back and, uh, and they were like, no, we, we don't see it. It's not in that machine. It's uh-huh. not anywhere. Cause you know, you have to go back to the last place. You yeah, bought yeah, you right. yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you would think it'd be there. So anyway, so I called American express and of course they're like, yeah, no big deal. We'll cancel it. We'll have you another one in about 48 hours. Uh, so then I kind of enjoy the fun now. Because they're always American Express is very good about this. If you if if this happens and somebody gets in and starts swiping, they'll take them off. They don't they don't give you any hard time about it. Yeah. And so I thought I'm gonna have some fun and, and just kind of see what the people have bought, you know. Yeah. And uh, and of course usually they spend less than Sherry, so I let them have it a little while. <laughs> yeah, but uh, sure. but but anyway, so I, I so got, they actually were trying to get stuff with it. it they weren't, and that surprised me. So where is it now? Oh, so it is. Oh, that means you've misplaced yeah, it, yeah, not yeah, lost. Yeah, it. now I think it, I, it's it's falling somewhere. Where is it? It's in your car in between the seat down there. Is it? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Rick, past history, I'd car. phone the parking lot. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's somewhere out there. That's such a terrible thing. Could it be back in your wallet, but something. you put it behind another car and it's hiding from so. you? Uh, I, I hope, hope so. By the way, I'd like to thank you for that. That was what I did frantically. I emptied my wallet <laughs> probably 10 times. Yeah, and, like, and, like and, it somehow and got you, back in you there. Know you know how you, you empty it the eighth time, you go, so this time it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, It's like a magic trick. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, cause ah, that's one about, more time. That was back to what George Carlin taught us when you lose something. You always go back to where it should have been. Yeah, still not there. Not back yet. So... So uh, I don't know what happened to it. It's still a mystery. And hmm. the place where I left it was a lot of folks. No mm-hmm. one's called back and said they found it. I, I, I searched the, the vehicle, couldn't find it. Uh, so you but, don't have that one they can trace. Uh-uh. You know, they asked me for that this time. So I said, yeah, let's go this let's time. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, let's do it this time. But uh, but they're very efficient. I, the thing I love the most, I don't know who came up yeah. with, no, you don't have to go back to everybody now and put the new card in. It just uh, that's automatically, a good deal. automatically, that's, that's works. Big. I don't know how who did that. Yeah, they, I don't, I don't but, even know how they did. First but, of all, it's about time, right? But <laughs> uh, I, you know, we need some day for that person. Maybe yeah. we pull one of the what do we say, 135 days the LGBT community has. Mm-hmm. Maybe just take 145. one of those. 145. 145. Oh. Maybe just, just take one of those. <laughs> Mate, how about this? I'll take an afternoon for this person. Just yeah. a small yeah, one. Right, because, <laughs> hey, does that From not, noon on. Do you remember when you had stuff set up and all these accounts set up, and in no. the old days you had to go call every oh, one of them? yeah. And you had yeah. to get online and put the new card in? Oh, yeah. The, the, the little security code on the back changed and yeah. everything. you oh. got to update it. Yeah. I, I, I will tell you, in their travel people, you know, like you need to book airlines and whatever, their their travel people are great. I, I, I love American Express. Mm, you love them. I really do. Don't mm. leave home without it. <laughs> Unless you're leave you'll it. leave it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, really? Or was that Amer- or was that uh, was that uh, Travelers Check? Well, no, that one was it? No, it was American, American Express. Yeah. I can see their logo. Do you remember right Travelers Check? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah they Carl still Malden. Have them. Remember Carl Malden? You still have them. You're, you have to sign them on spot. You remember when, about Carl Malden? You remember when Sherry and I had that uh, big nose that a, yeah, that anniversary issue, and I came back and I said, "Have you ever noticed on the Traveler's Chest commercial, there's no cruise scenario? <laughs> well, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Nobody can replace them on a cruise." Bottom of the hour. Um, by the way, if you have my American Express card and I, I ended it before you could buy something, you know, send it back. I just like to have it. Don't leave home without don't it. Don't leave Rick. home without it. Or don't leave a place where you've You'll been waiting, fight. A, <laughs> waiting a long time yeah. without it. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, the future literally rests in each one of our hands. And, and when you've got, and that's still being reported that, what, 35, 40% of Christians are not registered to vote? When you've got people who will only vote if a name is on the ballot? Uh, you know, in 2016, the, the reason President Trump got elected was there were somewhere over 8 million people who had either never voted or hadn't voted in years came out and voted for him. In 2018, those same 8 million people, that number, didn't show up. Uh, his name wasn't on the ballot. And we lost, we lost the House. We lost the majority in the House. Had those people voted, we would have still been in the majority. Uh, the Russia probe would have been a big nothing. 
there wouldn't he wouldn't have been impeached. We would have handled COVID different, and he would have been reelected. Uh, so it starts with us, every one of us. And I know I'm a member of Congress, and, and but I'm I'm just like anybody else. Uh, I grew up here in Northwest Alabama. I'm like anybody else. And if if we want to get the country back, it's better to do it through the ballot box than by other means. Well, what if the, here's what we're hearing though, and I agree with you. Don't don't misunderstand. And we've said that, but we get. I mean, we're basically being called communist and liberals because they're saying, but what if our vote doesn't count? Do, what what if there was a illegal, unconstitutional changing of the way we're supposed to vote and our votes were not counted properly and votes were counted that weren't real votes if we can't trust the voting system what are we supposed to do and i'm just saying that's what we're here that's a huge issue and it's one it's it will be the top priority of of uh, those of us in congress we were already working on it. as a matter of fact uh kevin mccarthy when uh, on january 6th when he uh, was going to the floor to speak that was part of what uh, we were going to talk about i'd provided him with a lot of the, the uh, information that he was going to use in his speech. But let me just add this. We just lost those two seats, uh, Senate seats in Georgia because 200,000 people who voted for those can- those two candidates in the general election didn't show up on in the special election. Uh, now, there were 150,000 people who voted for the Democrat candidates who didn't show up. So the difference was 50,000 votes. That would have won both of them. So it, it's easy to steal an election when you don't show up, okay, or if you're not registered to vote. So let me just nerd out just a little bit here. Okay. Uh, Stand by. Should I send the nerd alert right now? <laughs> you, you can send the nerd alert out. Okay. But I want people to understand <clears throat> because there is a way to fix this. And it does, and it, and it, and it doesn't require Congress. No, we do need to hear this because th- we need to say here's because everybody says what well, we supposed he, here to here is a plan. So, here's yeah. a blueprint. So here's a plan. All right. First of all, uh, there's a Congressman Mike Johnson. And I've been working on this to get an opinion from the Supreme Court that that clearly sh- defines that all election law changes are to be made through the state legislatures. That's Article Two, Section One of the Constitution. We get that. Then we put tremendous pressure on the legislatures. of, of the, And there's 28 state legislatures that are controlled by Republicans, both houses. That includes Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. Okay. The next thing is uh, the Pew Center uh, Research Center reported that there's 24 million voter registrations that are inaccurate or inappropriate. There were 800,000 inactive voters on the voter rolls in Pennsylvania. The state of Michigan is 105 percent registered. Ten, uh, 16 of their counties are over 110 percent registered. Guys, the average is 76 percent. Something's so, wrong with that number. That's here. exactly right. And here's the thing: well, then, in 1993, maj- Democrat majorities in both houses passed the National Voter Registration Act. Bill Clinton signed it, and that that law requires that every state maintain accurate voter files. That's to be done through the legislatures. So that's what we need to do. We need to work with the legislators, legislatures around the country, Democrat or Republican, but especially those Republican-controlled uh, states, and get this fixed. And then we need to have a massive, massive voter registration effort. And, I mean, through the churches, through whatever venue there is, we could have one right outside your studio where people can come and register to vote. But we got to get our people registered to vote and ready to turn out in 2022 and take this back all right so we're us, baby. We're here. Uh, thanks for being with the show today. So excited. Uh, you know, Patriot Mobile, uh, they started uh, uh, advertising with us on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, and 
Your response there was so good. Uh, they then went into a national sponsorship with us, sponsoring the phone troll and being on the weekly show. And uh, boy, are you responding. And, and for good reason, because uh, so many of us out there, you know, some of the companies that, you know, we send our money to because we got to have their services uh, as part of daily life. And you're like, yeah, I wish I had another choice. Well, you do. Uh, when it comes to your wireless provider, you do have another choice, patriotmobile.com. But Rick, is, is it going to, I mean, is coverage going to be good? Yeah. Uh, it is. It's outstanding. They have access to, uh, you know, the, the same coverage of, of any of the competitors. Uh, but here's the difference. Um, their customer service, 100 percent USA based. Um, uh, they also uh, do not uh, support uh, uh, things that maybe you don't agree with. What they stand for is uh, religious freedom, free speech, sanctity of life, Second Amendment. Uh, they honor the military. They honor our veterans. They honor the first responders uh, properly as the heroes they are. So make your phone money matter. Start spending your money with a company that shares your values. So they've been doing it for a decade now. They make switching very, very easy. The only a Christian conservative wireless provider out there, and, and there there are no others. PatriotMobile.com slash Bubba. PatriotMobile.com slash Bubba. You want to keep your same phone? Fine. You want to keep your same number? Fine. But if you want to upgrade, you can do that too, and they make uh, switching easy. And because you're part of this show, it's really going to be easy. Uh, go to PatriotMobile.com slash Bubba for more information and free activation. Or you can call 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. Use the code Bubba for that free activation as well. Of course, the link is at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Well, Bubba, we're not going to wait long on this one today when it comes to Biden. Where did he go? Where did he go? Uh, Where did he go? Lord help. He's hiding in the basement. Does anybody know? <laughs> basement Joe. Well, uh... I couldn't believe the headline, Bubba. You couldn't believe the headline. Um, well, I haven't heard this speech yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we did see earlier this week a story where the president has claimed his heritage of about eight different oh, yes. groups of people. He can empathize with anyone. Any yes. group he's in. Uh, growing up, he was confused why his last name wasn't SK, uh, SKI when he was in the Polish community. Mm -hmm. When he was talking to the Italians, he, he thought his last name should have ended in O. Yes. I mean, he's always there to, uh, to empathize with whatever group you're in. But I, I, I saw this today, and I thought, who is he empathizing with? Well, he's still doubling down and saying the former president, uh, President Trump, he still continues this uh, unsubstantiated narrative uh, that uh, our president called those uh, that are, have been, are buried in, in France, uh, what was it, uh, losers? Yeah. Of, and, uh, suckers and losers. Suckers and yeah. losers. He continues that narrative, but he wants us to know that his family heritage, <laughs> uh, and when it comes to service to our country, uh, he wants to introduce us, Bubba, to his uncle, Ambrose J. Finnegan. Okay. Uh, now, he's going to tell you he was shot down. The Pentagon says they think it was engine failure. Uh, but then he goes further shot about down, about boy. where the plane went down and what happened yeah, to his in uncle. in New Guinea, uh, 1940, son. Uh, 1940. I think he's suggesting... Just listen. Ambrose Finnegan, when they called him Uncle Bosey, he, uh, he was shot down. He was an Army Air Corps. Before there was an air force, he flew single-engine planes, reconnaissance flights over New Guinea. He had volunteered because someone couldn't make it. He got shot down in an area where there were a lot of uh, cannibals in New Guinea at the time. They never recovered his body, but the government went back when I went down there, and they checked and found some parts of the plane and the like. And what I was thinking about when I was standing there was when Trump refused to go up to the memorial for veterans in Paris, and he said they're a bunch of suckers and losers. He looks so much like the puppet. All right, so it's, it's hard to get over. They, they, now, they, now, they, wow. Keep in mind, this story and this narrative about Trump has changed again. It used to. He said he went to Memorial and right. called them suckers and losers. Now, before he refused to go to the cemetery right. and call them suckers. And pay attention how this thing has important. legs of its own. He he's going to vary the story because he can't remember it. Uh, right. Also, keep in mind, I caught this one when I heard it uh, just then. I didn't catch it when I heard it yesterday. He's acting like when he was in New Guinea, 
as whatever he was in the You talking about Uncle Bozy? Yeah. <laughs> and he was standing at the remains of the plane. Then he thought about Trump. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that timeline doesn't work either. I mean, I, he, well, he, he I, wouldn't have been thinking I, about Trump then. I'm going to submit this to you. Yeah. I haven't looked at the numbers. Right. He, he <clears throat> said we called him Uncle Bozy or whatever. <laughs> Uncle Bozy would have had to have been at least 18 to be in the military. Right. Look at Biden's age. Look where we are. Is it even possible he was old enough to know him and call him by that name? If his uncle was, and was I, flying, I haven't run the numbers on. Maybe it'll. Maybe they overlap. I don't know. Well, let's go see, back. When did I the have Air to Force see the numbers? Yeah. When that. did the Air Force start? Because he said his uncle was in this plane when we didn't have an Air Force. It was just well, called Army Air Corps. Yeah, when did Uncle Bo? It, it wasn't go technically down? the Air Force, yeah. but he was shot down in 1940. He had to be at least 18. Right. If he was a pilot, and and again. If you look in the story, he wasn't a pilot. He was a passenger on that plane. But to hear Biden, he took enemy fire flying, you know, the way he's telling oh, it. He even it said that like he, he filled in for somebody that yeah. couldn't do it. He was heroic in so many ways. And I'm not saying his uncle wasn't a hero. Yeah. But it, but we do need to be factual. The uncle, I didn't even know that part, Bubba, was a passenger. And his uncle's, uh, they think, engine failure. And all terrible. Did the cannibals eat Uncle Bo? Well, he, 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 died, he died in service to his country in World War II. That is a fact. Right. But now some of these areas that Biden's trying to Embellishments. Uh, embellish on is, is simply not true. And then he throws in, he was eating, the, the suggestion he could have been eaten by cannibals. Yeah. Bubba, don't leave well, that he, out. He, he said, Please don't leave he, that he, out. He said huh. he went down in an area that was known to have cannibals and we never recovered his body. Yes, he did. So, so I mean, that's what he that suggested. Bozy did somebody was, have, did they say, what, what's on the menu tonight? <laughs> Bozy. We got Bozy. <laughs> is he suggesting his uncle was eaten by cannibals? But why, I, I'm looking here and and everything I see says Ambrose Finnegan died in 1957. Maybe that's a different one. No, it could be a different guy. Okay, now I found another a different Ambrose J. Finnegan that died in 44. Okay. Um, but this, it must be another Ambrose J. Okay, Finnegan. Okay, so this, this but okay, this is the great grandfather of Joe Biden. In the same story, the grand, in the same story, it says his plane crashed in 19. Okay, it says in the 1940s, and his remains were never located. Then, as you go down, it says uh, the courier flight suffered engine failure and ditched in the ocean on May the 14th, 1944. Uh, So maybe it was the technical year was 44. The first part said in the 40s, which that would be correct, but it it does change the the timeline a little bit. Did they not declare him dead until 57 or something? Because everywhere I look, it says, uh, anyways, all right. They, they think they got something. Are we just going to gonna move past Cannibals Eight Mile? Right, yeah. <laughs> because it seems like we're moving past that. Yeah. And to me, that's that's the most intriguing thing about the story, right. is that we the president suggesting his uncle was eaten by cannibals. And yeah. nobody checks up on it. Right, right. right. And, and that would be deemed racist if Trump had said it. I'm sure. Oh, of course. Sure. What, but to, to, to the people that are the in, that don't want us to be insensitive to cannibals? Right. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, That it, uh, there are so many just horrible things that have happened during Biden's presidency that they just ignore. If Afghanistan, uh, ha- the fall of Haiti. Haiti is just a, fault, a failed state. We don't hear anything about it right now. Well, you can't no. mention it. They'd have a death count on CNN if that, if that was going on during Trump's presidency. True. Of course uh, they would. Biden also yesterday said that... Uh, he, he was talking to Israel, and he says that Israel, we warned them not to attack, and unfortunately, the area and the, the city that he's going to say is in Israel. So he's going to tell Israel not to attack Israel, if oh you guys want to hear this clip from oh, yesterday. Oh, yeah, br- yeah, bring that beauty So out. he's going to say Haifa, it's H-A-I-F-A, but that's actually in Israel. So he's telling Israel to not attack Israel. And I made it clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. It's just not, I mean, it, anyway, I, I just. Guys, I think he realized. Look what we did recently when Israel was attacked. He's so confused. He's so, so I confused. think he realized, did I just mess up, but I can't remember what I told yeah, him. He realized he said something Hoffa that didn't make is sense. is the third largest city in Israel. And, but he, you could tell he, he realized, well, I, don't, I think I'm messing yeah, up, I but he, could, I, he couldn't get it back. Behind Jerusalem and, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. He couldn't get it back. Yeah, what did I tell him? And I think there's more. So he told, he told Israel not to move on Hoffa. Yes. Yeah.
Well, I, they I, said we can do that. I bet they said that. We, no problem there. You got it. Uh, I wish you'd tell our enemies not to move on. Huh? Third largest right. city behind Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. I, yeah. I hear there's cannibals there, so watch out. All right. Okay. So the, he says his uncle was eaten by cannibals. He suggested. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. We're in uh, Congressman Overtime. Yep. We've walked through all the major stories. If you're just now joining us, you need to go back and catch this conversation. Uh, you can do that in our podcast archives or our YouTube archives. Either will do. But, Bubba, you had one more thing you want yeah. to discuss with and, the congressman before we go. And, Gary, thanks for answering the hard questions. I, these are questions that, that but are they being, be answered. being posed to us, and I, I think you've been very honest and open and trying to explain the way it is from where you're sitting at. Censorship. I think a lot of this is being lost uh, in what's going on politically. But I think a bigger issue long term is a censorship issue. Um, Social media has been given special protection in our country. Uh, We've heard a lot about Section 230. And a lot of people are involved in social media. A lot of people get their news from social media. Their lives are around social media. And these guys are now censoring the president of the United States, and they've justified it by saying, hey, he's calling for violence. But yet they let the Ayatollah go. They let – I could give you a page list long of other people who have called for violence and are still calling for violence today, and they let that go without even giving it a second look. It's clear they have now become in the business of they want to stifle free speech and promote their agenda. How can we let, and it's it's literally a handful of people with bad haircuts and strange piercings who are now the absolute gatekeepers on our free speech. How is this allowed to happen? And what can we do to change that? Look, nobody wants insurrection uh, to, to happen. We don't want police officers killed at the Capitol. We don't want them at the White House. We don't want them at Best Buy, okay? But how can we, how do we balance free speech with this? And how are we going to get on top of this thing with social media? That is a huge issue. And um, Devin Nunes uh, brought up some points yesterday. We were in our uh, committee meeting yesterday and uh, pointed out that just on Gmail, uh, he's got thousands of people on his uh, Gmail list. And uh, that he uses to communicate with them, that it also is used to for fundraising. And Gmail was directing thousands of those into spam, into the people spam folders. And people may not realize that, but G- the people who run Gmail uh, can direct the legitimate messages that you're getting into your spam folder. And uh, they so control that you, our whole that, life they, now, Gary. Well, from and, our and iPhones on Facebook, right on down. Yeah. Well, well, Facebook. Uh, I got rid of my personal Facebook page because at the end of the day, I, I can honestly say, and, and, and maybe this I should be ashamed of this, but I, I can honestly say that I don't have 5,000 close friends. <laughs> right. Okay? I don't either. So, and, and the friends that I do have, like you guys, when I want to talk to you, I call you. Mm-hmm. Right. All yeah. right? Yeah. Because we're friends. Right. And, uh, and some of the stuff that's going back is, is again, done uh, by bots, uh, Russian bots, Chinese uh, the the just to gin up uh, anger with people, hate and discontent. I call it. But, but what's going on now is they're shutting down these platforms because we've become addicted to it. But I, I, as I reminded some of my colleagues, there are other ways to communicate, and we may have to go back to that. One of the things that I think we've got to protect is talk radio, and uh, we can't let corporate uh, uh, decisions dictate what you guys can or cannot say. So we we got to figure out a way to protect that. And I uh, you mentioned the fairness doctrine. I think you said that off the air. You may have said it on the air. We got to make sure that that doesn't get imposed on people because it won't it'll not only affect your political speech, it'll affect what you say in, oh, yeah. in the context of your faith. Uh we we saw that uh, they tried to do that to Rush Limbaugh. You remember that? Oh, yeah. What 20 years ago? Yep. So yeah, there's nothing fairness about the fairness no. doctrine. Well, he well R- Limbaugh made the great <laughs> statement when his show first started picking up momentum. He says, what are you talking about equal time? He goes, I am equal time. Yeah. <laughs> There's never yeah. been a, a conservative yeah. voice allowed. I am equal time. Yeah. And uh, so we've, we've got to be uh, aware of that. And uh, I, I just, 
uh, we're at a at one of the most perilous times in our country's history. I mean, it's right out of George or- Orwell's 1984. Yeah, yeah. And and when he when Biden talks about uniting the country, one of the things that he'll push is is single payer health care. Well, we got to get everybody so everybody. Now, the government will make decisions about your health care. Of course they will. Uh, you know, they they handle that's the, decisions the kind of they stuff so that, well. that they think is is a way to. Uh, it, it, that they'll tell you is a way to unite the country. Yeah, let's go, baby. Nine minutes to the top. Uh, listening to the president, it, it's not a good day for the president. Uh, he suggests that his uncle uh, was eaten by cannibals, uh, and uh, now he just told uh, Israel not to attack their what third largest city? Yeah, Haifa. Yeah, and uh, so they said, "Roger that." Uh, right behind Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, Rick. Pretty big, pretty big yeah. place. Well, you quarter could, of a million people. You could see that he, unfortunately, that he knew something wasn't right about that sentence, but was not cognitively. That's a tough word to say. Yeah. Able to save it himself, he couldn't. He couldn't go back and fix it. And uh, he, and he just, got his wits about him, Rick. <laughs> well, now Adler says uh, there, there's more, um, and, uh, and so Adler set this one up. Uh, what, what, what happens here? So he's gonna uh, he's gonna talk about an experience that he he had, uh, kind of going through real mm-hmm. America. He's he's pretty isolated uh, as mm-hmm. the president. I don't think he sees a lot of real America. Mm-hmm. He's basement Joe. Uh, he's basement Joe, you know, and so. Um, well, he's all over Scranton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here is his. He's uh, been to Scranton more than Michael Scott. He saw a, a he saw a Trump sign and he saw a kid on the side of the road and uh, he was kind of shocked. So here's President Biden. I never thought I'd see a sign when I'm going through a a, a neighborhood or a, a rural town in in the West or something and see big signs that have a Trump sign in the middle that says F Biden. Oh, and God. having a little kid standing with his middle finger, yeah. seven years old, eight years old. <laughs> well, I promise it happens all the time. I bet. It's not who we are. Well, this, guys, that, that did not that happen. not happen all the time. <laughs> so he gets guys. flipped off by kids all the time. It, it, that's just not. Yeah. All. Also, if you're getting flipped off by kids all the time, maybe you should look at yourself. Right. Maybe yeah, you should look maybe, inward. You know, kids have a second sight. They but, see but now yeah. keep in mind, he's not saying that that kid's family's who who his administration has ruined their lives have have told their kids that they hate Biden and Biden's ruining their lives. It couldn't be that. No, it, 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 no. President Trump himself are making kids give him a finger, and well, it happens all the time. All the Rick, time. Rick, he's never been shot or murdered by a kid, not one time. You, you know, too. I I wish you we know could it, get uh, someone, uh, a real journalist, to dig into this. Uh, Trump calling soldiers suckers and losers. I know. It. Um, I, I've done just a little bit of digging on mm-hmm. it and. Right. Biden's using this quite a bit lately, so they must have some polling data on it that that is something that uh, Mm -hmm. hits home with people. I don't, in my wildest dream, think that anybody would do that. No. Um, And in in looking into it yesterday a little bit, I mean level one stuff, it looks Mm. like they're trying to tie three different events together. No, I think you're right, yeah. And they have taken a bit and piece out of each event and tried to make it into one event. Right. And even Biden, he he, he he said, you know, it was at the, the graves of soldiers uh, from D-Day. And then he said it was uh, a memorial he was at. In Paris. You know, yeah. and, I mean, he, I promise you, Trump's not hitting all these sacred places and, and making a speech that these people were suckers and losers. So mm-hmm. they're trying to, to build this narrative up. And one of the stories that I read yesterday, just to show you how they, they, they do this, Trump wanted to go to this cemetery at Normandy, but they were having torrential rains and had for a few days, and the Secret Service squashed the visit and said, look, we can't get you out there. The weather's too bad. The roads are too bad. You know, the armored car we go in weighs, you know, uh, so much more than regular cars. It's just not safe. Mm-hmm. We need to wait till it's drier to go to this place. So the Secret Service uh, squashed that trip. Well, this is this is one of the narratives where you hear he refused to go to the cemetery. Sure, that yeah, that yeah. is not the case. Right. Okay. The other one 
I heard was where he was touring, and this is the one that John Kelly was involved in. Correct. Who has come out and he's and he's bashed Trump about some of this. But now remember, John Kelly was also a disgruntled fired employee. You mm. got to remember that. So he, uh, him, and Kelly and some other staff people were touring Arlington, and it was a section. I, I think the number, if I remember right, was section sixty or something. And they said this is and and Kelly had told Trump this is where the soldiers we lost during Afghanistan and Iraq are buried. And Trump is looking over it and he shakes his head and he said, you know, it was such a waste that we lost people over that. It, it was a because he was against that war. And he said it was a real loser for these guys. That's what he said. Well, it turned around and John Kelly didn't start a fight with Trump on the spot, what you call in soldiers losers. Right. It seems like he would have. Yeah. He would have been totally offended. Trump said this was losers for these guys. In mm. other words, he's looking at people that gave their life, and he feels like it was for nothing mm. because the U.S. did not accomplish their goals and gave Afghanistan back and look at it today. So that story turned into these people are losers, and that isn't what he said. Right. And that story has been perpetrated. So you have the story of he, he refused to go to the cemetery. He called soldiers losers. There's another story mixed in with it, too. And it turns into this narrative that Biden's saying that really never happened. Now, did he go right up to the line? And did he offend some people with his comments on uh, John, McCain. Uh, John McCain? Yes, mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. But they've tried to take that and turn it into a much bigger story that really never happened. That, that I have seen. Now, maybe there's other evidence out there. I don't know. But if, if that was said, it would have been highly offensive. And, and I don't think anybody would have liked that. Well, and, and remember, when you have things that are based, as, and I think y'all are 100% right, that he, they're, they're, they're taking three different stories and piecing them into <clears throat> one story and making them sound like one narrative. And if you listen, you can hear the inconsistencies. But, you know, I, when I want to know what what it looks like for those who want to believe that he actually did this, I just wait for the email from Danny the Democrat. Right, right. And, and Danny the Democrat, he is going to land on the John Kelly comment, and you can't move him off that. Well, John right. Kelly said he said it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so— Well, let me ask you this. John Kelly is highly offended that Trump said that mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. He was standing there when he said it. Why didn't he object then? He, he apparently was, didn't say a word about it according to the witnesses that were there, mm -hmm. because that isn't what Trump said. Right. Now, maybe John Kelly thought that's what he said, but the other people, well, there were several low-level staffers, and they've gone on the line and said Trump said this was a loser for them. Well, you, we and always, you could, and, and we could all say that. Mm -hmm. We've probably said that on the show. Yeah. This was a loser for people who gave their life, and then it. we didn't finish the deal and just let it go. And we should have finished it and could have finished it. Um, but the, um, yeah, but what happened, you know, this, it turned, just think about any courtroom, you know, the lawyer against you would say, so did you, or did you not look at the graves of people who had died and said that this, that, that, that this was a loser for them? Yeah, I said that. So see, yeah, but do you want to hear the whole story of what yeah. I was saying and the whole conversation around that? You know what yeah, I mean? Trump it, was mad right. that these people if that's had had to on. sacrifice their life for a cause that we didn't think was valuable enough to follow through. They did their job to the country. They are heroes because they did what they were asked to do. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the leadership of the country that failed them. Right. Just like we did in Vietnam. Well, yeah. We I, did it again. Yeah. I, we I haven't learned it. I disagree with Trump that we should have <clears throat> never been in it. I agree with him that we should have either not gone or finished it. Now, that, yeah. I, that I agree with. Yeah. Well, and I, mean, I agree with that with all wars. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Trump, it's just like North Korea. He feels like the greatest weapon that we have is economic, not missiles, not, you know, bullets. That if you can, can show these people that they can be part of the world community by having resorts or tourism or whatever, that is so much more valuable to them long term than winning some battle that doesn't matter. And, be, and being nation builders. Yep. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Yeah, I, I talked about this with you the the other day, and I'll mention it again. As a matter of fact, uh, looking at uh, a picture my wife just sent me 
uh, from the home, and, and she is so excited at, at how the plants and the trees are flourishing in this most wonderful time of year. Uh, you know, and thanks to the folks at Fast Growing Trees, man, they're standing by. You know, because there's nothing worse than for you to go out and invest in, in trees and plants. Uh, you don't have a green thumb, thumb. You don't have the expertise that their experts have. I would certainly, or my wife and I would fall into that category. You just want it to, to look great, but you don't really quite know what you're doing. Uh, it could be something as simple as you've ordered the wrong plants and trees for your climate. It could be that simple. Uh, so fastgrowingtrees.com, boy, they can help you. They have everything you could possibly want. Fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, so much more. Wh whatever you're interested in, they have it for you. So find the perfect fit for your climate and also the space. You know, certain plants need shade. Uh, some need sun. Uh, too much of one, not enough of the other, that kind of stuff. Hey, that's not enough room for that plant where you're wanting to plant it. Fast Growing Trees makes it easy to order online, and your plants are shipped directly to your door in one to two days. So now you're not going off, dragging that stuff home in the back of your truck or car. You got dirt everywhere, pots laying over. Um, they also have their 30-day Alive and Thrive guarantee. They offer free like I said, plant consultation forever. You always can access them, not just, hey, I'm talking to you. Hey, you bought from us. See you later. No, they're with you all the time. Okay. So why don't you go right now and take advantage of this offer and you can have plants and trees and, and, and other things that they offer uh, for your climate and you can have those thriving so you can truly enjoy them. And boy, spring is the best deals online. About half off, uh, up to half off on select plants. So right now, select plants and other deals, half off. And then, of course, you get an additional 15%, no matter what you get on the first purchase, when you use the code Bubba at checkout. That's an additional 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com using the code Bubba at checkout. Offer is valid for a limited time. Terms and conditions may apply. what it really is it's all about power guys it's not about liberty it's not about what's best for the future of the country it's about grabbing power and consolidating power and we're seeing it played out right now on the floor of the house with their with their speech code there's magnometers now that we have to go through as members of congress to get on the floor metal detectors metal detectors but gary back to the big tech how, how do we make a difference in this because i don't I hear that there's even some support on the Democratic side to get a get a hold of these guys. Look, we broke up AT and T one time because they had a monopoly, and it actually was it was difficult for a while, but it actually was good for the consumer long term through innovation and competition. But how do we? How do what? Are, what are you going to do to these guys? What are you going to do to Dorsey? What are you going to do to Facebook? How how do we address the fact they have a stranglehold? And they are deciding who gets to talk and who doesn't. Or just the 230 thing. That would solve yeah. a lot of it. It's well, just, that, it's that's just... part of it. But, but there's another part here, too. Parler it, it was a multi-billion dollar company. I right. mean, it sprang up in, in, in a short amount of time because there's a huge demand for it. Yeah. 20 million people already using Parler. And they shut them down. Apple will no longer allow you to buy that through their app store. Amazon. Amazon having their servers is yeah. what was the death blow. Yeah. I mean, they could theoretically have their own web page and sell their own app or push it, but when when the host can cut you off, and Gary, here's something yeah. that, you, that hasn't happened. I brought it up on the show. The people who run the switches on the Internet, Cisco, mm -hmm. the DNS servers, they can shut you down. That's right. And they can shut you down in a bigger way than the host can because it doesn't matter who's hosting or not if you can't get to them. Well, all these people you just mentioned, they used inciting violence to do nothing but take away a competitor. Yeah. That's all it was. Well, it had nothing to do with protecting anything. Because it, it, violence it, has been incited all <laughs> summer long, whether <laughs> right. you're behind the calls or not. The facts are we had a very violent summer, okay? And social media not only allowed it, was stirring it up in many cases. Well, based on the uh, messages that some of my colleagues and I are getting and, and phone calls, apparently they haven't gotten the message that you really shouldn't be inciting anybody. Right. They're not getting shut down. And uh, It just, they took out a competitor and they used it as an excuse. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we've, we've got to find a way. And, uh, and I think we will. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Look, we're, we believe in free enterprise. We believe in capitalism. But there is an enemy to that, and that is a monopoly. 
that does not allow free competition. And that's what we have now in the server business. It's what we have. You don't let one company own all the radio stations or TV. You, you, you go market to market, and you, you're sure that there is at least a diversity to a certain number, and that's always debated and argued, that there's multiple ways for you to get news and talk and information. Mm-hmm. And it's regulated that way. I don't know why in the world we're not doing that to these guys because they have a stranglehold on our country right now. We have They're more get... powerful than you guys are, Gary. I know. And, 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 and there's only about four of them, and they're, I'm not going to give my description of them anymore because they, they are not reflective of all of us. And you want to see what the future could look like. Look at what they've done in China and how they work with the Chinese government uh, to, to basically deny human rights to, to the people of China. Is they want us so that we cannot stop them from doing what they want to do around the globe militarily. They want us to be taken out of the game, or they want us busy with other things so we can't slow down their influence. In the- Let's go. Six minutes past. A brand new hour. Thank you for being with us, America. All right, let's set up uh, another hour. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Adler, all here. Uh, so things you need to know, uh, a new Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, recording it today. Uh, we'll talk Major League Fishing, uh, and that'll be out this weekend. Uh, we'll talk to Dustin Connell today, uh, who's one of the uh, top-ranked uh, Major League Fishing pros. Uh, he's been on the show for a short period of time, but we'll really unpack his story uh, this weekend. Also, yesterday's archive from the Wednesday Bible Study is available today. Uh, and also some great contest opportunities at rickandbubba.com under contest. Welcome back. There's Bill Bubba Bus. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, Rick. Hey, buddy. Thank all of you for joining mm-hmm. us now for three decades plus. Incredible. Bubba, this may be surprising to you. Uh, Bill Belichick, uh, one of the most successful uh, coaches in NFL history. He is 20, he's 72 as of yesterday. Uh, and he has now he he joined uh, the show that we have a kind of a you know a love hate relationship with the Matt, uh, the Pat McAfee show, uh, and he shared his thoughts about coffee and a lot of folks were surprised. Uh, says that coffee has never been part of Bill Belichick's daily routine. Are you surprised he doesn't drink coffee? Uh, well, based on the speed of his press conferences, I would uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm not shocked that he's one. never had caffeine. That's yeah. good. Maybe he needs some. <laughs> yeah. So it says that uh, uh, McAfee said he offered uh, to Belichick when they had dinner together an espresso martini. Hmm. Uh, and he said, I tried to get an espresso martini, and I found out that Bill Belichick hates coffee. And I had no idea. <clears throat> Quote from Bill Belichick, I have never had a cup of coffee in my life. Wow. Well, how does he know he doesn't I, like it? Yeah, Sam I started I to say, wouldn't you have one mm-hmm. to know you don't like it? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't know. Uh, and they, uh, you know, at 72, no, there's no takers uh, on him hmm. uh, being a coach in the NFL, hmm. which it, I guess it has to be just the age because his success is obvious. Yeah. Well, there, there's a couple of things, too. He needs 15 wins to be the the winning his coach all time and mm-hmm. pass Don Shula. Right. So you know in the back of his mind he would like to get that. Now, that's probably two seasons mm-hmm. uh, in the NFL right? to do that. Uh, there's also a story out. You know, he was in the running for the Falcons job yeah. down to the very end right, of it. Right, right, right. And he did not get that job. And there's a story out today that his uh, former owner of the Patriots actually intervened and told them not to hire him, that he was uh, too much trouble. Really? Yeah. Okay, I wonder Blank, about that. Blanks is the order uh, owner of the Falcons, isn't that his name? Uh, Blanks Arthur? or yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, um, but anyway, that uh, uh, the the that he he intervened and said, "Look, you don't want this guy." Mm. 
Hmm. Which is shocking considering how close they appear to be, even when he left the team on good terms. But you would think the well, long maybe. hours coaches have, you know, I know his energy level in press conferences, he hates those. You, you, he seems pretty. Well, that's very obvious. But the long hours coaches have, you would think he would have coffee or something like that. Well, he says he drinks orange yeah. juice. He said uh, orange juice is Which what we know is good for you, yeah, we, based we, on yesterday's We story. had that story. Yeah. It says he, he drinks that to stay energized. He said, I can drink tea. I like tea. He said, but don't worry, I've got a lot of other vices that make up for it. He said, that's just one of the few I don't have. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I didn't start drinking coffee until I was in my oh, yeah, wasn't that long ago. late 40s, mm-hmm. early 50s. Yeah. I, yeah. I've still yeah. never learned to drink it. Yeah, I and, started just for the reason you said, when I went to work for the power company, we'd work long hours to yeah. drink it to stay awake. Yeah. I'd never drink it up to that point. I didn't do it to stay, that you I know, liked it. To, to, have, to wake up. Because, honestly, I've never really had a problem with that. You know, usually I, I just never have been one of these people that struggles for energy or anything like that. Uh, and so I, 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 that didn't draw me to it. I, I really was drawn to it because it looks like people who drink it have a have a really cool social experience. And my wife loves coffee. That's where I'm at now. And and she, you know, and now you get to have coffee mugs yeah. and stand around oh, the yeah. coffee pot. I just wanted to be part of the coffee community. Yeah. And shake yeah. ups and all that hot water. Yeah. Oh, it's work. Oh, the pot ain't working. Medium today. roast, dark <laughs> roast. Yeah. You know. I miss what all about you roasted. I love roast all this. that. I love all that. Rick, now, I like a good Saturday morning. Yes. Read the news. Yes. A cup of coffee. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things. And plus, like it was that. good that I started drinking you coffee. You the horses later in the I day. I do, later in the day. So before my, you know, before Dad went on into glory, that Dad actually <laughs> had a period of my life that was very short that he wasn't ashamed of me. Uh, because <laughs> well, he was a coffee drinker from oh. the time he woke up to the time he went to bed. And he and Mom, and I was not a coffee drinker. And for a while, it was kind of a scourge on the family. <laughs> When and we, and we, Sherry, too. Sherry was like, wow, so I can't even drink coffee with my husband. It made the long hair look like nothing. It really did. I remember when He looks at that mullet and says, if you drink coffee, I'll, I'll, I'll give a pass on the mullet. Yeah, that's true. When you started drinking, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, mm-hmm. since we've been on the show together. Well, to your point, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, Greg, before you joined the show. Uh, Y'all wouldn't even make a pot. No. And, and people were surprised because I would say, no, there's no coffee drinkers on the show. Did They're you like what y'all yeah. do so early in the morning? Y'all don't drink coffee. No. Y'all and I've told coffee? y'all this before, but the person who got me drinking coffee was John Thomas. Okay. John Out of South Africa. Him. We were in South Africa, and, oh. and John was, the, Sherry was all excited, and they were all getting coffee. He and his wife, Sherry, mm-hmm. and there I was over there again. Uh, Rick, you do not drink coffee. <laughs> and I said, nah, I'm not a big coffee guy. <laughs> oh, have you ever had African coffee? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, sir, I haven't. <laughs> oh, Rick, I am going to fix for you <laughs> a cup of real coffee. You will love it. And I was like, okay. So he, it he brought it to me, and I became the guy on Green Eggs and Ham. There you go. There you <laughs> I, I drank it. Say, and I said, say. But, but what I realized is, you know, high quality coffee versus the, basically this dark water that I was trying. Right. Big difference. Yeah. Yes. Big, big difference. And you evolve. Yeah. I did from I'm putting a bunch of sugar and cream in it to Same. I'm just drinking it black because I don't want a food with putting a bunch of sugar and cream in it. No I, surprise. Does it there. taste better with it? It, should, it does. It <laughs> actually does. But I just don't want to fool with it. No, we have a thing at home where Sherry will go, I'm fixing coffee. Do you want fun coffee or just functional coffee? Mm-hmm. And, um, and fun coffee means I put the cream in it and yeah, all oh, that. Yeah. And uh, just I like it a little black. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, just functional coffee, yeah. please. But not, milk. Well, I don't milk in that. I don't thing. like it hot. See, I'm not used yeah. to drinking hot stuff. You don't yeah. like hot I thought stuff. you like hot mellow yellows. That's not hot. Well, well that's, yeah, that's, that's room temperature. Yeah, right. It's warm. But, yeah. uh, but he no, treats it like it's hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and then I, I, I did. get it in the microwave. And then I did notice the benefits if you talk for a living. I'd have on the is There is benefits to having a warm, hot drink. Uh, with all that, you know, how you're trying to get your voice clear for the day and all that. I don't want to be gross, but but it really it really helps with that. And um, and 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 as y'all all not surprised, Greg, same way. I'm not drinking it black now because I'm trying to say, hey, only real cop drinking it black. I'm really drinking it black because I just tired of hassling with exactly. you know with, yeah. with with trying to find cream and sweeteners and all that. We got too many right. choices now. But you, yeah. our dad was such a coffee drinker. Oh, back my, in those I've days, never never seen anything like it. It wasn't just readily available at every convenience store like it is now. And he would leave the house with his own thermos. Yes, he would not be without it every, so he, every day. So he didn't like going through Starbucks. Oh, oh, Bubba! If my dad could have oh, taken Bubba. could have taken a settling torch and burned every Starbucks to the ground before he passed, he would have. Uh, you know? Rick, he caught me drinking it out of a straw that time, and he, oh, he was so gosh. mad about it. Oh my gosh! He went on and on. And the only reason I do that is if I'm driving, 
And it's you one of the if it, straw. Well, if it's one from no, the gas I'm station. No, on his behalf. But <laughs> the little caps, Come when on. you don't spill it, they burn your mouth. Yeah, they do. I mean, he, would I rather it not be in a straw? Yeah. But sure. Sometimes I have. Oh, he went yeah. crazy when he started oh, drinking out of a straw. Rick, mm. Of course, the next time I went in and got him a cup, I brought it out with a, with a straw. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one. Yeah, here he goes. Yeah. Are you drinking that with a straw? <laughs> <laughs> so, Bubba, it's it's the heat as is, is to why you don't drink it. Well, it's, and the fact it tastes like stump water. I mean, other than it, that. It, so. It's got a little similar. But if you stump had water, somebody right. that did like, like John did for me that day, if they prepared it to where, honestly, all they were bringing you was hot chocolate. Well, uh, yeah. yeah you, no, I mean, you, I, you, you would well, drink that but and go, I, I don't hey. even want my hot chocolate so hot it burns. My no, mouth. no, that's yeah. it. I, I agree with that. I get mad sometimes when it's so hot. That's because if you cap it off, oh, forget it. You got to uncap it. Yeah. But you, you don't want it cold. Off, do you? It's gonna, don't want it cold. What about these cold coffee? Oh, drinkers? Lisa loves them. Really? Le- iced coffee. That's oh, yeah. Oh, Lisa will have an iced coffee that tall. Yeah, I'm not into that. I'm not either. <laughs> yeah. She loves it. Hey, the caffeine you're getting too. Hey, those amounts. Hey. Oh, I like caffeine. I think it should be a vitamin. Sure. Yeah. Well, they've always, like you C-12. said, they, they've, they've, tried tried to, <laughs> they've tried to make it bad. Do it they just can't do it. <laughs> Bubba, when we come back, thousands of everyday snacks oh. that may face being banned. Rick, it's called the Skittles ban. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share those with you. We'll get phone calls bottom of the hour as the show continues. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. East and in the Pacific and everywhere else, okay? So how do you do that? Well, you get us fighting among ourselves. You get us fighting among ourselves. You run our national debt up. You get it so we can't uh, do the research and development we need to do. And the best way to do that is keep us fighting among ourselves. Yep. That's what I would want if I was a Chicom sitting over in China communist. somewhere. Okay, I'll, yep. I'll go China. I'm picturing you Chinese. Mm-hmm. So this yeah. is called if so, Bubba was a communist. <laughs> yeah, and he's so, Chinese. Rick currently is Chinese. He and is. Then, then trying the, to picture. Are you Chinese right, right now? First off, I want I want the U.S. so that they're not a player in on the big stage. Oh yeah. Second, I want to help out my little brothers and sisters, the socialists uh, who want to be communists in, in our country. I want to help prop them up. Build well, how do I do that? Well, I have to tear down. I have to defeat the other side that's trying to stop them. Beat the other well, side. Well, how are you going to defeat the other side? You're gonna you're gonna come in here and they're convince gonna... 75 million people. That they shouldn't love freedom and free speech freedom and stuff. capitalism and uh, you know the way we live in middle class America that we shouldn't love that. How are you gonna do? Well, you can't do that. that. We're not gonna buy that. But what can you do? You get us fighting among ourselves so that we have no political power, so that the left, who is still a minority in their thinking, the socialist, can move right in, take power do things the way that they want to do, and you know they're not going to oppose China because they, you know, that's their big sister. Think about it. Think about if you were the opposition of the United States, how would you attack us when you can't beat us militarily? That's exactly how you would do it. That's exactly what they're doing. Gary Palmer was very clear on that. Disinformation, they know we love social media. They know we love movies. You know, they're feeding us all this crap to keep us fighting among ourselves. And when you say, I'm voting, we'll break, you're not helping. You're playing right into what a communist sitting in now, China wants you to do. Now, what are they saying? What were they, when you did wrong? Well, what, 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 what are they are saying? Huh? They're not going to vote. No, I'm not ever going to vote people <laughs> yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they are trying to divide and how do they us. Say it? And look, it's your right <laughs> if you don't want to vote. It's your right if it you don't want to vote. It is your right if you don't want to vote, yeah. But if you split, Hold like Gary said, if you split the, cons- the Republican Party, there is no opposition now to the left. None. Right. I heard the quote, well, 80% would go with us. Then you lose by 25% because we lost by about 5% this time. That that Those numbers don't work. That's I mean, it just doesn't work. Guys, think about it. Think about the bigger picture, the big picture. Not the fact that you've had your feelings hurt. Not the fact that you think you got screwed on this deal. Understand that. I feel the same. I got it. But there is a bigger issue in play here, and we got to be smart enough or we're going to be taken over by these people. Be smart. Don't buy into it. There it is. If Bubba was a communist. If I was a communist, that's what uh, I would do to all of y'all. This week he was from China. He was. Week. And some yeah. of you have been calling me one, so there you go. <laughs> do you still have the same look if you were from well, China? Or, I mean, what are we looking like? Well, uh, Probably not. Buddha. Okay. Let's let's go back. Let's go to this. <laughs> what we're saying. Guys, we came on the air. Okay, and this is where the the riots got y'all got to we may have to call we got to call some nuts. We came on the air and simply began to say 
that we don't think storming the Capitol was the right thing to do. That's all we said. That's it. Didn't say we didn't think. Lawlessness. Okay, Bubba. Yeah. We weren't just, we didn't have people saying, well, I just kind of disagree with that. That was fine. You might even convince me, you know, if you want to try to make one. But now y'all sold out. Y'all took, y'all, y'all, ain't nothing but a bunch of libs. Libs? Worried about your sponsor. That was one. What's, 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 who really wins well, that? ask those that tried it before. Neither side. Mm-mm. A lot won. of dead people. Neither side hey, won that. A lot of dead, hey, lot of dead folk. We, were in a, we weren't much of a union for a while during the, re, the we were repairing it. It weakened. And the hey, Confederacy we, didn't win at all. Got, got left with nothing. Just we, a weaker position. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot of men in this country were killed, and it was senseless. Senseless. It accomplished nothing. The people who won... "Quote unquote," Abraham Lincoln, he win that? No, he got a pumpkin ball in the head. Oh my goodness! Okay? Here, here goes go. here we go. Here it's go. true. Somebody do something. Did he, he, he go by how, how it long, ended for him? You're right. How he long did. did he get to celebrate that win? I wish I wasn't. Not long. Here. Not he, long. He didn't even get through one play. Sherman Grant, they were alcoholics. They had demons chasing them. They were, you know, mm-hmm. one foot in the grave half the time. Anyway, mm-hmm. nobody yeah. won that. Everybody good? All right. So let's talk about the weekend coming up. If you want to go and uh, be part of things attached to the show, Friday night, Blake Prime, Prime Time uh, from Team Man Church is speaking in Pearl, Mississippi, Park Place Baptist Church. They're kicking off the men's discipleship strategy. A lot of you email, hey, where can I find a church near me if my church isn't doing it? Uh, well, if you're in the Pearl, Mississippi area, be at Park Place Baptist Friday night. Uh, Blake Prime will give the first message, and they'll plug you into the curriculum, and off we go. On Saturday, Speedy, uh, we're talking to Coach uh, Skip Holtz coming up later in the program. Speedy will be there as the undefeated Birmingham Stallions uh, are at home again this Saturday. I believe they take on D.C. Mm-hmm, we do. Ooh. They're 2-1. and one. Mm-hmm. Now, That'll be uh, that's a good game right there. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, if you want to be there uh, and you're coming into town or just going out to see your home team, uh, Calvin Speedy Wilburn from the Rick and Bubba Show will be there work, working you into a frenzy. Uh, Sherry and I on the road this weekend to Op Alabama, Fox 1077, the affiliate there. Uh, the Andalusia Op area will be uh, at Op High School. Uh, they've moved it. It's hosted by by Westview Baptist Church, but they, they, they're they moving it over to the high school for more room, and, and Sherry will be the, with the ladies in the auditorium. I'll be with the dudes in the gym. No surprise there. The ladies get the auditorium. We get the gym. Uh, and then after that, the, the guys, uh, along with me, will roll over to the auditorium, and we'll talk to you guys together. So so uh, make plans to be with us. It's a free event. They have closed registration, but if you want to get on standby or something like that, contact the church. They still might be able to accommodate you. And then I'll stay in town, and I'll do the, the Sunday morning message at Westview. It'll actually be at the church on Sunday morning. Uh, and op as well. So there's the weekend. If you want to see what's happening this weekend or down the road, uh, go to rickandbubba.com under upcoming events. You can also go to themanchurch.com, click on events. Uh, and you, if you want to find out where Sherry will be or where we'll be together, go to burgessministries.com and look at events too. And ladies, Sherry's going to be speaking the next three weeks in three different markets. So check that. Uh, all right. So uh, Bubba, we talked about the snacks. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I don't. I don't like when I hear that Snacks that we love may face being banned in Come multiple on. states because they are linking their ingredients to cancer. Rick, uh, some people are referring to this as the Skittle ban oh. set to go into force January 2027. Oh, and it's outlawed four very common additives that you find in breakfast cereals, sweets, and beverages. Mm-hmm. Um 
Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to try to give you these names on this. No, don't um, worry about it, buddy. Uh, There's I can no need give for you, to get hurt. I can give you one of them, Red Number 3. Now, oh, we've heard no. prob- I thought we heard about no. Red 3 yeah, red for a long time. Red has been in there. What, did, was so, Red 3 supposed to be the good red that replaced the bad red, <laughs> and now they're saying the one that replaced I, the bad red is also bad? I That's always not, heard Yellow 5 was the one that... I yeah, I heard about that one, you too, as a kid. Yellow. So here, yeah. here are can- candies and additives that are on the chopping block. Yellow number 6, Yellow 5 and 6, uh, Titanium, Deoxide, Blue number 1, Red 40... Uh, various other food dyes, well, red's yellow got five oh, and no. red forty. Oh, blue one that's Con- contains benzene, which is linked to blood cancer and hyperactivity. I noticed most all of these are connected to hyperactivity. Yeah, of course they are. Mm-hmm. Could it be the sugar could, in there? Could be. Uh, Bubba, do you see who's on this list? Oh yeah, mm. Pop Tarts are on there. Whoa, Jello, Whoppers, uh, M and M's. I mean, Oreos is involved. Gatorade, Gatorade, Gatorade on there. is on there. You can't even. Um, I mean, hey, you can't even have nerves. See. Lucky no. Charms, Tricks, Fruit Loops, uh, several salad dressings. Um, Not and- Sour Patch Kids. Come <laughs> on, get out of here. How's the salsa on there? Now, All right. now they're, there's saying, a pop tart. they're saying that there are studies to back up that these ingredients uh, can cause a list of problems. Mm-hmm. Thyroid, uh, gastrointestinal cancers, mood disorders, just to name a few. Mm. The ban in California triggered similar uh, law movement in New York, Illinois, New Jersey, Missouri, and Pennsylvania. Um, and the Rick, a lot of this is based on what Europe is doing and looking at this. And I, I may, I may surprise y'all with this. My my take on it. I before it becomes political and we have to decide uh, is this a liberal or conservative issue. This is kind of crazy. Why don't we check the science That'd of what great. the Europeans have done? And see if this is valid or not, if it is conclusive or not, and then let's uh, mirror that with our own research, see if we get similar results. And if something is causing cancer at a higher rate, let's take it out of the food. I don't have a problem with that if it's real. And if it's, uh, but if it's just, hey, somebody said and all of that, I'm not for that. I I want us to actually get back on the science, on scientific issues. Wow, there's a concept. And if we have to change Lucky Charms because it has something that will raise your risk significantly of cancer, I'm all for changing it. If we can't prove that, leave it alone. Well, I will say, let it be. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Well said. Uh, do you do you agree though? Is it really surprising to us that here's a pile of things on a sheet of paper, other than that salad dressing, that's on a sheet of paper that we say? So you're telling me that foods that have fake colors, <laughs> fake, fake taste, fake mm-hmm. taste, <laughs> fake sweeteners, you're telling me those things are bad for us? Yeah. Huh? Uh, does anybody? No. Did it, these are all highly processed. We don't even know. Made in laboratories. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to have m- a long shelf life and all this, are we really surprised mm-hmm. that these products may not be good for us? So you, I guess you, that's why they spell Fruit Loops F R O O T. It's not fruit no, like yeah, fruit that no, you eat. No, oh. no, you you could lay these loops so, down to real fruit, and they would go, "We don't know these people." Gotcha. Yeah. Here, here is the problem: when you live in an industrialized society, which we do, and it has a lot of positives. You have highways, you have cars, you have TVs, you have jobs, you have sporting events to go. I mean, that's that's what we get from living in an industrialized society. But there is a bad side to it. We we have to mass produce things right. and to do that we have to have concentrated chemicals yep. and when you do that you're always playing with fire uh, now sometimes it makes no difference but you have to find out the ones that are going to cause issues and most of the time it's not the chemical itself it's the amount that you get right uh, because again we're living in a uh, society that demands concentrated chemicals but Rick we Every meal we have, we either have processed food or we have fresh food. And the number of fresh meals we have are smaller than ever, and the number of processed meals are more than ever. So do you think that that might cause us problems with our health because we are what we eat? Well, yeah, it does. It's a convenience factor. Look, if mom stayed home and grandmom stayed home and maybe the aunt lived with you and they could produce a Thanksgiving type meal every day for everybody to come in from the fields and eat, we would be a better society. We would probably live longer. But we don't have that. We're not willing to do that. No. no. So well, we're, we're taking also not shortcuts with, yeah. and, and 
you know, that's that gets you an average life expectancy of 76. Right. And when it comes to kids <laughs> and these highly, highly sweetened uh, cereals and stuff like that, what we do is we give it to them because it's what they want and out of convenience. And then when they're hyperactive and can't sit still, well, then we go give them a drug to make them sit still. <laughs> mm-hmm. And no telling how that's affecting And just keep feeding term. them the same thing and hope yeah. the drug will offset it. Yep. Uh, bottom you, of the You hour. could get away with eating that sugar if you worked in the fields before you went to school. Then you'd sit there because you would give out. We'll take your phone calls next. 866-WE-BE-BIG. All 10 lines available, America. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
That's right, baby. 35 minutes past the hour. Uh, Preparewithbubba.com. The five Ps. Prior planning prevents poor performance, uh, no doubt about it. And are you prepared uh, for the unexpected uh, troubles of life? Uh, Let's face it. Tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, earthquakes. They're real. They they can happen with, without any notice or even with notice. Uh, if it happens and, and you're on the bad end of it, uh, and you you don't have uh, food and supplies ready to go, you're you're in a bind. Uh, Preparewithbubba.com says, do not be in a bind. Uh, do not let something like this happen. You go, you know, Rick and Bubba were talking about this, and I didn't listen. Uh, go right now to Preparewithbubba.com. We we have the four week emergency food kits. They offer 2,000 calories every day. They're designed to last up to 25 years. 22 food and drink varieties. So you always can hydrate and you also always can eat. Uh, there'll be no food boredom because there's a lot of variety in there. And right now, as a listener of this show, each kit is $50 Ooh. off, and we'll ship them fast, and we'll ship them free. And unmarked boxes, okay? And you, you know what? You, what you, you know that peace of mind? I mean, you think about 25 years. For 25 <clears throat> years, if you ever ended up in a place where you needed food and water, you'd have it. There you and, go. And, uh, Boom. And, and you know how you go over and just check, done, and we're getting you savings right now, too. So go to preparewithbubba.com from My Patriot Supply. Now, they also are great for camping and backpacking and going hunting, and you know maybe you're going to go out and, and do some boating. They're, they're good for out, just outdoor living, too, uh, So and they're so easy uh, to consume. Four-week food kits right now, $50 off, and free shipping. I go to preparewithbubba.com or rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. Rick, uh, got one email here on the uh, the story we had uh, about additives. Said, I'm all for it. This is the type of protection I want. Don't let corporations poison us, especially the poor and uneducated. And uh, this is from Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I agree with you 100% if we can prove it. Right. Not just do it because we're wanting to do something or based on shoddy science. Show me the science. Look, this goes back to pollution again. And we're, we're going through various phases that no one wants dirty air and dirty water, okay? Who who are the people that want that? Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to hang out. But, you know, that. we know now we have some of these forever chemicals that are not breaking down like I was talking about. They're staying concentrated, and they can uh, gang up and pile up in your body over time and in fish and other things. So we do have to protect that. I'm all for the EPA being involved in that and the FDA being involved in that. That's what they should be doing. Now, what I don't think they should be doing is tell someone who owns land that they can't dam up a stream that I can step over to make a pond so I can fish in it. Right. See, that that's overstepping. That's sure. They're out of there. Stay with the science stuff. Let us know what you find out. Let the process go forward. If something is bad for us, we can prove it. We have steps to take it out of the of production. Let's do that. Are you saying shut your hole and know your own? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, Rick, I've always wondered what animal we kill to make Oreos. <laughs> well, you know, that, it's, that, uh, that, that's true. <laughs> By the way, Biden said just release something, too. He'd also like for there to be a ban on cannibalism. <laughs> right, that's right. 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 No right. eating people. I think we have that. Uh, let's go to Debbie, Kentucky, Bluegrass State. Don't Deb- be a downer. Hey, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Good morning. Hey. Boy, you all have got me riled up today over this um, nutritionist that we feed kids in the morning. The National School Lunch Program will not recognize meat as a breakfast choice. We have to feed them so much whole grain, so much sweet items. So you take a child that slept all night long, high energy, which us old people need that energy. But anyway, so a high energy child, you feed them full of sweets, and then you go tell them to sit down the rest of the day and be quiet. Yeah, No meat? It, it you can't have meat? They can have meat, but you have to list it as a grain. Oh. Well, meat is not a grain. No, uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, you, well, it, yeah. I wish you yes, could see our but faces. If you, look up, <clears throat> if you look up the USD guidelines, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And anybody that is in a public school that are eating national school lunch, this is the guidelines that we're having to follow. You know, it's 80% whole grain, 20% regular. You know, before we started force feeding all these kids whole grains, who had heard of celiac disease, uh, gluten allergies? Uh, you know, yep. USDA is trying to kill our kids. Yep. Well, thank you wow. for that, uh, somebody from the front lines. Uh, let's go to Dan in Huntsville, 100.3 The River. Dan, go ahead. 
Well, I just want to let you know, congratulations on your free retirement. I re I actually hired in the same time you guys started your show, so and I've been well retired done. for two years. Congratulations. And I just wanted to let you know, at 65 years old, I exercise a lot. I take care of myself. But, gentlemen, I eat whatever I want, and it's not right to do. But you know what? At 65 years old, think about it. I only got maybe 15 more years to go. Why do I have some fun and eat what I want? Don't you agree? Uh, 50's a lofty number there, Danny. Uh, you said you had 50 years left? 15. 15. Oh, okay. I thought you said 50. I'm like, yeah. wow. <laughs> he's going to wow. be. He's gonna be yeah. I, I kind of line up in your camp. Uh, probably should not as much, but I do. <laughs> Well, you want an Oreo? Eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In moderation, I guess. What I the only the only thing I would say about that that I would slightly disagree, and I understand your logic and it it, and it makes sense. Is for me, uh, getting older, it's more important for me to eat better because the things that I feel called to do, I need to be healthy, I need to have the energy to do it, and I need to be able to do it. So I want to finish, still rolling through the tape not finish poorly because I because I put bad things in my body and can't do what I feel called to do because I'm unhealthy. Uh, we continue, but I understand the logic of it. Uh, 866, we be big. Let's go. Rick, there's been a lot of times I was very close to God eating an Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real close. I was saying, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oreo. It's so good. I don't know what animal it came from, but it's good. I love Jesus more than me. <laughs> Haynes uh, to Charleston. Haynes, go ahead. I also get close to God when I eat Oreos, Bubba, so I'm right there with you. It's a good snack. Um, yeah, I think it I fell out of heaven. I really do. <laughs> That's right. But I did want to say um, they fact checked um, this Biden cannibal thing last night um, on Fox, Jesse Waters. Um, they said that, yes, it's confirmed that this happened. However, the plane crashed on the coast of New Guinea in the water, mm -hmm. so they could not recover it. Because they and ditched also, it. They ditched it. It didn't. Yeah, they, they landed and, where they wanted to, you know, out without right. an engine. And, and also, his uncle is not the pilot that he said he was. His uncle yeah. was on the plane as right. a part of the crew. Yeah, right. he was a courier. Yeah, we did so cover. We did cover some lies. of that. Yeah. It is. You that, know, he's been lying for 40 years. He doesn't even know what's true anymore. So. Well, yeah. The, it, the other thing that was yeah. uh, uh, somewhat in question, and the story had a picture of New Guinea and the uh, the natives, for lack of a better term, that were there. And they actually were helping U.S. and Australian soldiers carry them in uh, hammocks and things to get them help that were stranded. So it at least from that picture, it looks like they were helping soldiers they found not eating them. But I can't really speak to different groups. Which, by the way, from New wow, Guinea in 1944. Let me tell you, okay. th those two options could not be further apart. Now, I'm telling Are you here to help me or eat me? Yeah. Wow. Uh, now, you, now, based on the clothes they're wearing and the way they look, you really didn't know. But uh, the one the, there was a picture in that story of them. They had three or four soldiers in stretchers that they had rescued. So. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they were basting them for dinner. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, wow. It looked like they were helping them out. I don't know. Jim in Alabama. Jim, go ahead. Hey, Biggins. Hey, buddy. Have y'all go, go on YouTube and search Trump on Soul Train? I, 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 no, I have no idea what I will find. Can, mm. in, 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 you need to do it. You, you boys are going to love it. Trust me. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. There we Trump go. On soul. Cam in Birmingham. <laughs> ZZK. Cam, go ahead. I can't talk fast enough. <laughs> Cam. <laughs> Hey, Cam, I'm giving you one more shot. Hey. Okay, all right. Hey. Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, so let's go to Holly. Holly, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Hi, good morning, guys. I was calling about the um, ban on the foods, and I have two sons, one who is a nutritional fitness freak, and the other one is a 16-year cancer survivor, and he's 17. Mm -hmm. And um, they had to have you know, their annual checkups for sports and everything. And um, the cholesterol came back high on both of them. It's hereditary, so no big, you know, well, it is a big deal, but it's, sure. <laughs> we can control it. But anyway, um, I was telling my youngest son, who is the cancer survivor, I said, okay, I said, the doctors would prefer you eat more like your brother, and the working out wasn't a problem. And he looked at me as he was eating a piece of drip of bacon dripping in mm -hmm. grease. And he looked at me and said, I do not care. 
He said, Mama, I'm going to die. I may as well die happy. That's one, one right. way to go about it. Uh, I think uh, I think there's probably middle ground yeah, yeah. there. Well, off. again, as long as this uh, stuff doesn't make you unable to live effectively, I think some people are misunderstanding my point. I'm not doing what I'm doing to live longer. I'm doing it to live more effectively. Uh, and uh, as long as these things don't keep you from like, you know, I can't go do this because I'm always at the doctor or I'm too lazy to get up off the couch, then fine. But, but it's got to be effective. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, we start this hour with the National Anthem. Hey! I'm not talking about it. Bubba! Uh, how about it, Rick Burgess? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere. Come on in. The party's about to start. Grab a seat. Hey, grab that chair. Get your hat on. 10 and 2 if you drive it. Hey, Bubba. How about it? How are Ooh, you? I'm good. Uh, we've, we've got uh, you know, we, we got a lot we got to get unpacked here today. And, uh, you know, it's um, uh, some of it, uh, I don't, you know, you're kind of like, all right, we got it. Rick, it's yeah. a crazy world out there. I mean, yeah. we got, uh, you know, we got a lot of unhappy people. We yep. have a, an inauguration coming up. We mm-hmm. have impeachment hearings uh, going on. Yeah. Uh, D.C. D- D- looks like a, a war zone. Uh, Urban Meyer is now coaching in the NFL. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy. I Talk about miracles. Yeah. 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 The list, the list just goes on and on. It does. Urban hey. Meyer, what was, what's the latest health thing that he quit football? Well, it was it? a combination. He had some kind of cyst in his head. This, Plus, he? he had an uh, assistant coach that fired his wife's wig up, and Urban <laughs> knew about it and didn't tell nobody. Great. He had all that come together to be one big he health said problem. he didn't know about it, but then he had some email yeah. that came so, out. And then like, suddenly he had some health issue after that came out. Yeah. So, urban Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is not a fan of Urban no, Meyer. No, he's not. not a fan. Well, I, I think have... he's full of it. He's a good football coach, <laughs> but I think he's full of crap. When he gets in a bind, he makes stuff up. He's full of it. <laughs> Greg, seriously, we want to do an Urban Meyer segment. Got anything to stand? <laughs> How about thumbs down? And what? On urban Meyer. How about good this? football coach? Hey, yeah, Don't I started to say he wins everywhere he goes. Yeah, yeah but guess what? He can't maintain it. Who, why, who would have ever thought he would have left Ohio State ever? Right. You remember when they won the national championship? He was boy, the future looks good, and, and I agreed with him. They had players stacked in there. Well, yeah, because we had a, we have a little controversy. But but this health thing is the thing that always gets me. Oh, he always defaults to that. Yeah, he always defaults to. I've got some. I've got some health issue. That I don't know if, if he went and saw I, Benny Hinn now. <laughs> and he's back. Oh no! So he, what was it? He had uh, something when in his he head. Remember it showed him on the, on the stop at Florida. When he, he had, had like, headaches, didn't he? Yeah, no, that was Ohio State. Yeah, Remember it showed him on Florida was heart. It showed him something like hit his knees and hold his head. Yeah, it's like he was passing. I thought one out. time he just wanted to spend more time with his family. And, was, and then he went to ESPN or I Fox was, and did a lot yeah, of I thought that was sense. Florida. I want to spend more That's time Florida, with Florida. And I think he had, didn't he have, we we have a, a heart, 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 heart issue? issue. Some the, fluttering or something. Little heart issue. Yeah. The running joke back then was he wanted to spend more time with his ESPN family. Right. Yeah. And he did. Here I go. I'm but going out on the limb. You meant ESPN. What didn't he relate his his heart issue or whatever to the stress level that he was having? And and he just needed a a simpler life and spend more time with his family. Yeah. And that's what the the doctors were recommending. Yeah, and w- okay. which is great. And then before you knew it, a week later, he was at ESPN. And if I'm not yeah. mis- if I'm not mistaken, but Greg, this last one, you, you bring up the thing, the last one, because the thing with the assistant coach, that was a new thing to be added. However, he did once again revert back to this is not good for my health. Yeah, he had something no. in his head. Does he think the NFL won't be stressful? That's yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm I don't know. About a headache. I don't know that the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be a place to relax. But if, 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 I, if I need to remove myself from pressure, from pressure of football, taking the Jaguars' job is not the way to go. Uh, three or four years, he'll have something. Greg, where are you on Mervin Meyer? I'm, I'm not big on him. I think he's a good coach, but I ain't big on him. Is he a good coach? Oh yeah. But what uh, what what do you feel think about? <laughs> <laughs> Too much baggage. Uh, he's won everywhere he went. Right. Well, yeah, he, but well, for about four what, years. Which tells me wouldn't he, he should stay there. 
You know, yeah. when you got it rolling, why would you leave? Yeah, that's like saying I, I, I love my husband because he makes a lot of money even though he keeps leaving us. <laughs> Ohio State was his dream job. Is he right. from Ohio? Right. It was his dream yeah. job. Hey, he only stays with us a little while and then gives it, he leaves, but he makes a lot of money. Yeah, he does make a lot of money. <laughs> so we oh, that's fine. Good luck to him. Look, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I had all that. I had all that. So what's what's he making there? What's the, I don't know. I bet it's a good I don't one. Know if it's Ten mil a year? I don't know. Isn't that, isn't that what a lot of What about of the that bizarre people? owner they have? That guy? Oh, He's yeah. some foreigner that dresses weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. The yeah. owner of the yeah. Jaguar. Yeah. Jaguar. Yeah. Yeah. Character. Yeah. Greg, hey, welcome back. He's yeah. a character. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a, hey, Rick, 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 wait a minute. We got a new employee. <laughs> <laughs> He's Eel Spark. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're standing beside old Davis, Al Davis's boy with that bowl haircut. That's the weirdest yeah, thing. Yeah, what's, what's wrong with NFL owners? I did see a upcoming. There, there's some people that don't have friends out there. No, you're right. He's one of them. Hey, you, uh, hey, that haircut. You would walk in that haircut. No. It wouldn't last very long. No, he'd have the nickname Cereal Bowl before the water got hot. This guy got more money than he ever needs. You'd think he could get a good haircut. Yeah, it's un- Here we go. Nine minutes to the top of the hour. Still to come on the program, Birmingham Stallions head coach Skip Holtz. Uh, we'll chat with him before the uh, show is done, probably next segment. Uh, so that's the schedule anyway. All right. So, Bobby, you had one more thing you wanted to say. Then we'll, uh, we did. I know some of you on YouTube already saw the Trump video because Adler started playing it. He found it. Uh, but we'll. Uh, we'll that, that's we'll, not. That's not. It's Trump. not Trump. But no, it'll, it'll be kind funny. Of a joke, and it so does resemble him uh, as, as a young man days, a lot. Yeah. But 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 you had something that you wanted to say. Before, yeah. We, well, we, we're talking about these chemicals, mm-hmm. and and I would tell everybody and encourage them: don't jump on either side of this argument till you know the facts right. and look into it for yourself. Uh, can corporations lead you wrong? Yes. Oh, can yeah. the government lead you wrong? The yes. government is the biggest, oh. most corrupt corporation there is. And probably have lost their credi- credibility through the pandemic uh, where people don't listen to what they say much at all. Yeah, so like. look behind the curtain on right. all that. Right. But uh, I always feel like uh, to err to safety side when it comes to health and things. But one of the things I change, like now being uh, at remission for liver cancer, Uh, And we've all heard all the news about Roundup and Roundup and all this. And and some of that may be anytime something is a poison and kills things, you need to take a close (laughs) look at it. I think so. Uh, But I'm not terrified of Roundup. I still use it in limited uh, situations to, to kill weeds where that's really the only thing you can work with. But one of the things I changed this year is on our green fields. Used to, we would spray them with Roundup, let everything die turn it under, come back, and plant. But you still had that residue where you see it could get into the food chain of what's going on. Mm-hmm. So this year I told my, my guy that plants for me, I said, uh, what, what do we got to do to stop that process? I'm, I'm more sensitive to chemicals now around me and all this kind of stuff. He said, well, we're going to have to, like, bush hog it twice. It'll take us more time to get ready to plow it under than if we just sprayed it once and it was dead. And I said, well, let's do that. I want to make that investment. We're going to, we're going to kill this grass, plow it under, make new green fields without using massive spraying of Roundup this time. So that's just something I did in my life. I'm not saying everybody ought to do that, but that's kind of, I think we need to just look at things, be careful yeah. and not jump to, um, you know, conclusions. Now, honestly, none of us can go in the laboratory and look at some of these chemicals and see if they're if they're bad for you. I mean, we're right. gonna have to trust somebody, right? right. Yeah. So just be careful your sources and and know their uh, possible conflicts anytime they put that kind of thing out, and research it for yourself. And you can make, I think, some wise decisions that will probably be good for you in the long haul. No doubt. So uh, so here's the the video of Trump. Uh, it, it's not Trump, but it it is a Trump lookalike yeah. on Soul Train and with, and, with a and, mullet. And Greg, yeah. he is okay. throwing. Damn. Is this like the Nick Saban yeah, guitar? Greg, 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 Greg. Now picture, picture that <laughs> being the picture of that being young Trump, and uh, I mean, buddy, he is, he is throwing. He is he throwing is. Down. I can't <laughs> see him good enough to see if he looks like Trump or not. Well, he looks well, enough like young Trump that yeah. if he turns like that and you get that side God, view, and his hair is kind of like Trump's hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's he good is. stuff right there. What's that there. dance, Bubba? What's he no. doing? No, that's a good one there. It looks like he's in having oh, a spaz. Is that, is that it's a... some kind of popping, locking, robot <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> I don't know that, what yeah. that is. is that that's... That's... <laughs> well, I tell you what, he's a featured dancer on Soul Train. Yes, he yeah. is. Have, have you seen all these people doing the motorcycle now? Uh-uh. And and the guy that claims he started it no, in I, India. No, I'm not familiar with the yeah. I'm not familiar uh, with the motorcycle. Yeah, you'll see groups doing it. Okay, I haven't seen that one. I bet it's when I see it's easy to identify. Yeah, I bet when yeah. I saw it, yeah, I go, yeah, I bet that's the motorcycle. <laughs> Can you do it? <laughs> no, I'm just just saw it done. But, it's not that. I mean, it's a lot of this, you know. Uh-huh. Not a whole lot. Hand too. motion. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And some of them are kick starting as they move. Through. All right, so so now <laughs> le- now let's get to uh, let's get to, let's get to Caitlin Clark, the latest in the dance moves. There it is from Rick and Bob. The motorcycle originating out of. India. Uh, so we don't know why this is a story. Uh, from what I've gathered, Greg, you talked about it, that a reporter, and I don't don't know why a reporter would give her that hand heart sign that, you know, everybody who's now a big deal has to set up yeah. with the crowd or to their family, this, this heart <laughs> You're thing. doing a good job. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> one time I thought they were trying to look through yeah, binoculars. Yeah, right. like. I thought they were looking through binoculars. I'm like, why are they putting binoculars on? I, I don't That's a broken heart I, I you're holding. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> you, crumpled you, heart. You, you must not know my family. Uh, but anyway, so so when you – but they're saying that this was, was awkward – because and because I guess the awkward Unnecessary, part. Unnecessary, maybe. Because right. the why would the reporter do this heart sign to her and she doesn't know what the reporter wants? Do you want me to talk about that sign or yes, mm-hmm. I did that to my family when we won? What 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 do, what well, do you know do? me? I don't like moments like what, this. What, oh, I know. No core temperature rising. So uh, <laughs> so here it is, and they're just referring to it as a an awkward interview moment. Here we go. Hi, Caitlin, uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, oh, let me do this. So he does the heart. You like you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, it's well, let's cool. start doing it to me, and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is. That's a story. I don't even think it's even that awkward. Isn't that kind I don't of, even think it's that it, awkward. Is that, I thought she handled it. Is that not an inappropriate? Comment from a reporter. Who's now that, reporter? You know, that's that, what I thought the story it? was. You can you can do that to me and we'll get along fine. Yeah, I mean that's creepy and that's weird. That's kind of weird. Well, to ask I doubt he meant it. That. Well, first of all, why did he even bring it up? Yeah, I don't know well, why he's bringing it up. You but oh, well, I think like, he means your boyfriend yeah. or something. I think what he meant. Now I do agree with you. It can have those connotations, and you, that's why you shouldn't do it. But I think what or, he probably meant was, I'm press. Don't don't hate the press. Don't be upset with me. Give me interviews. You know, treat me right. It, it, look, it was terrible. It shouldn't have been done. But it but, wasn't a story. But I don't think it's as big as everybody made it out to be. I've seen things much more awkward. Mm. And now, that, now, is that goofy? It is goofy. And uh, how did it affect you? We really have to go to you, secondhand embarrassment. It, it was it was difficult uh, because okay. it took really? her, it took her to Mississippi to figure out what he was doing and yeah, why. That's good and point. you don't have to show a picture that's of him. Buddy. That's it's him. That's not Speedy. me. Speedy, why do you keep him. looking? At me? <laughs> It's Speedy. Uh, it's Speedy. Because he's bald. I'm not every bald guy. I didn't even okay? say it. Throw a goatee. You um, but, you know, a lot of times <laughs> when we're on air, we can't talk. We have to use hand hand signals to each other to communicate. So, oh, boy, do it. So, Greg, from time to time, I'm just going to look at you and just do that to oh, you. Buddy. Okay. So, yeah, show, I hope that never. I, I've never thought this looks like a heart. Yeah, I don't know. He said, Caitlin, Cl- he tweeted, Greg Doyle tweeted, Caitlin Clark, I'm so sorry. That, Today buddy. I was part of the problem. What problem? So, um, it seemed creepy to me and weird. Really? This is another reason that the 80s were better than what we're Thank living you. in now. That was we not didn't worth have to apologizing. do in the 80s. This is what we do. That's, that's all right, you had to do. Plus. Two pats to the heart, point at you, yeah. and it just that's meant love, love you, man. And those of us, you didn't have but, to do all this. If you got arthritic hands, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm just about to say. You I've, can't I do got, it and have the steering. Say I have the steering wheel driving. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I think that's the first time I ever have I've ever done that signal. I have never done that. I before. can't. Yeah, I but to you, Greg, to I can't do it. A because I don't desire to. But B, even if I desired to, with Bubba's point, my hands have so much arthritis. I'm afraid I'm going to make the sign of the occult. I don't I don't know. There's one of those out there you got to watch. Hey, for. Greg, that's not the sign. Oh, Greg, man. that's not. Did you it. see what he that's did? That's a different I, my sign. My hands don't work right. Okay, dude. friend. Buddy. You know, Bubba, another good thing about the 80s is, than today uh, is the I'm, fact there was no WNBA in, in the 80s. Oh, so, there he is. That was also a pretty good deal. So, Greg at Rick and Bubba. Wait a minute. What am I talking about? They the never way, turned a yeah, profit, yeah. by the way. I was about to say, who's going to email you? There's not enough people that care. Say. Well, I'll go back. Did you say Babylon B? Everybody wants to help the WNBA NBA except for actually buying tickets and going to the game. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, would help. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
haircuts can get expensive, but I think he could do well, something. This mm-hmm. just goes back to that. The, Rick, there's the owner of the uh, the Jag. He's uh, he's, very, Pr- he's very he's very uh, Fender. Yeah. Freddie Fender owns the Jaguars. He's some foreigner. Where's he days from? Fred, quit saying that. No, but no, he's he, good he gosh. <laughs> That's not a negative that he's a foreigner. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's the way you're saying yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's not you're not you're not it's helping Freddy, by the tone. Greg, I didn't know Freddie Fender owned the Jaguars. Yeah, Freddie Fender. Days and days yeah, did no. you have another uh, Urban Meyer comment you wanted to say? What you, well, you, I was just curious. Because I know Greg's uh, excited about we, it. We were talking about college coaches who had been successful in the pros, and uh, Greg has pointed out Jimmy Johnson may be the only purist uh, of the group we could come up mm-hmm. with. Uh, now, I'm going by Greg's rules here. He do, he doesn't count Barry Switzer because he took over a championship program. and just <laughs> That Jimmy just, Johnson put together. Right, that right, he eventually yeah. ran in the ground. Greg and, said uh, he could have won the Super Bowl with the Cowboys that year. I could <laughs> Or Or was it, Gary, uh, uh, was it Jones that ran it in the ground? Uh, but but Barry Switzer did not have an ongoing era of success. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson came he, and took a team that was a loser. Right. He yeah. didn't come in and turn around a he loser team. built a team. dynasty. But so I, we'll, we'll put him over on the side. For but I would say this. Jimmy Johnson's transi- transition from that era Miami team to the pros was not a big transition. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and you must go here. Yeah, they, they may have had a, uh, a you know a l- uh, less payroll at the Cowboys. Yeah. I, I, don't know. I need to check the numbers, but when Johnson left Dallas and went back to Miami in the pros, it wasn't. I mean, they didn't do very well. I mean, I'm gonna say it was a bust. Wasn't but, great. But uh, we had uh, I mentioned Pete Carroll, but Greg Can't has know. disallowed mm-hmm. that because he was a pro first, then went college and was successful, yeah. then went That's back not, to pro. And yeah. Was yeah. So he didn't come purely from college. So we'll have to no. set him over on the side under Greg's rules of order. Well, that makes perfect and, sense. That does. That's common and, uh, sense. Yeah. Well, I, so are there are there any? Because Saban, I don't think you would count as successful mm-hmm. at the Dolphins. Spurrier was a time. bust. No. Spurrier yeah. was not good with the okay. Redskins. Uh, Chip uh, uh, Kelly, not no good. Chip no Kelly good. for a while he had a he had a run with the Eagles and then it fell apart. He got canned. Yeah. Uh, so didn't get arrested in the NFL now. Jimmy Johnson's <laughs> really where we're landing. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Johnson seems to be the only it's, pure college coach that, that was radically successful in the NFL. Yeah, are we overlooking? Too early. Sure to, too are. early to tell for the Arizona uh, Cardinals and the. Um, uh, uh, pa- the Panthers, Kingsbury and uh, Matt yeah. Rule. Yeah, well, the fact that Kingsbury, the, the fact that Kingsbury got fired in college and then went to the pros, I, I, I'm not betting on him being. Well, he, he I don't want to hear. I heard your commentary. He wasn't uh, competing for a national championship. I, I don't even say you have to win one, but he. Th- they Did were he never, not get fired? Did they were never. Fired? They were never in the running for it. No, uh, I th- I so I, I don't know fired. that you would say overly successful in college, right? No, no. I um I yeah Greg said he didn't understand that hire. Uh, why would you that take, was why would you take a mediocre uh, college coach and make him an NFL coach? I, well, they, apparently they they saw something in him they liked, uh, and oh, I, I would yeah. say he's had he's had some success so far, mm-hmm. but the jury's still out. Full disclosure: I don't even know who that is. So I'm I'm just chiming in. He I, was I, Johnny Manziel. I've position never heard of his coach. name. I've never heard his name. Oh yeah, the one he looks like one of the movie stars. Everybody thinks he's mm. fine. I know nothing about. Uh, him. <laughs> 
And that, that's another mark. Against Greg, him. what did, was anything different this morning? When <laughs> no. you came in? But he was he, he was Johnny Manziel. Took, took, cups, took cups of coffee. Too. He was Johnny Manziel's position coach. Is how he got. Yeah. At, at, at A and M. I've yeah. never heard. And of then him. he got the head coaching job at Texas Tech. And mm-hmm. I think he got fired. And and he either was going to be fired or was about to be fired. He was on his way out when. The Cardinals picked him up, and and I think it was a surprise hire at the time. Yeah, and the Cardinals yeah, were but all they had to do was win their last regular season he, game, he and they would have been fired. in the playoffs. He did get, yeah, he did get yeah. fired, but they time. lost, and then that uh, I think got the Bears. He was young, so he they was were one one Bears. game away. He yeah. was there for six years, and they fired him, and then he got this job. Never even heard of that. Him. Makes no sense. Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma will be the next one that people are wanting in the NFL. Yeah, probably that'll so. be the next guy that we all are looking at. Where did he start at? I forgot. Where did he start? Uh, I've just Lincoln. known him at Oklahoma. Can I tell you what? You know what everybody's trying to do. Say, he, was, uh, he was going the to offensive coordinator there, wasn't he, when Stoops was there? Yeah. And when you think of those kind, what they're trying to do, and I, I don't – now, Urban Meyer's out of this because that wouldn't be the same game plan. But all of them – and, you know, this is just human nature. If you see something work, you say, i got to go find my version of that. Yeah. But but you don't understand that guy is a unique person. Yeah. You can't just – The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, here we go. From the Big Boy Studio, out on the bleeding edge of technology. From sweet home Alabama to the rest of the world. Uh, it is the Rick and Bubba Show. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, we got uh, the real Greg Burgess. We got uh, Speedy here today. We got Andler. Uh, Helmsy is out. And then uh, welcome back. Here's Bill Bubba Bussy. Rick, glad to be here. And thank all of you for joining us. It's the little party we call Rick and Bubba. Uh, scheduled to appear is uh, is Coach Skip Holtz. We do not have him on. They're giving me that, they're giving me that stretch sign. I feel like I'm singing the national anthem. At the game, and they kept telling you to stretch yeah, it so the flyover yes. will work. Ooh. And uh, Adler's giving me a thumbs down. Speedy's giving me a stretch. Uh, and uh, I'm getting the stretch from Speedy, Adler, and a thumbs down how, how from about, you. How about Coach Skip? We've got to know him better uh, mm-hmm. since he's Great been in guy. town. Mm-hmm. And I really, really like him. Well, I, of course. I had no idea that I would like him as much as I do. Right. Yeah, good guy. A lot of fun. And, and how about this? Uh, it, it's kind of like the song, hey, he just win, win, wins. How about, I didn't know that. <laughs> you have struggled getting win. the wins well, I, want, I thought, do I need an S on the first one? Hey, by win. the way, your impression. <laughs> win, win, win. I thought hey. you had a stroke. Now, Can I tell you this? Your impression no. of Joe Biden is getting Thank better. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I've been working on it a lot. <laughs> so, the, uh, 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 all right, now, now people are thumbing. They're giving me thumbs up now. Wait, now uh, he's flipping me off. He's what coming in. Here he is. Somebody, now somebody's giving me a heart signal. Uh, what are we doing? Here we go, okay. Coach. You're live. Hey, Coach. All right, I'm coming out. Right, there he is. There we go. Go with him. Jim. Is he there? Hey, Coach. How we doing today? Hey. We're good, Coach. How are you? I am fantastic. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's game week. We're coming back to Birmingham. There we go. <laughs> Coach, uh, you are, uh, I, I hate to bring this up, you're one minute and 40 seconds late, and you, <laughs> and you will be running after practice today. <laughs> You know what? And I, I deserve that. I definitely deserve yeah. that. Sorry, I was sitting in a meeting and, and Heather called me and it was like, oh, guys, I got to go. I'm sorry. I'm late. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. No, it's not not, not a big deal. I, of course, I mess with you. Now, you do still have to run. But, <laughs> hey, um, so, hey, let's, uh, hey, let's get fired. Hey, this week, hey, here we go. 3-0 and Stallions, uh, two-time defending champion of the USFL. D.C., uh, their, their time in uh, – uh, in the XFL, good football team. Uh, they're two and one. Uh, now that we've combined uh, the best teams of, of both leagues, uh, is this the biggest test so far? I mean, when you look at when you look at last year, you'd certainly say you know they had the best record in the XFL a year ago. A very talented team. Jordan Tamu, their quarterback, was one of the better players. The they were the he, Reggie Barlow was the coach of the year last year. This was. Uh, the most successful team a year ago. Uh, who knows what what all we have this year? That's why we're playing and trying to figure all this out. Who's going to be the best ones? But it's going to be a great test. I think they're all. I think the the difference between winning and losing is one or two plays in a lot of these football games. And I think they've been uh, very very close uh, games. I think everybody's got a lot of talent. So I think this will be a great test. I'm just glad we have the opportunity to play them at home. So really excited about the weekend. Coach Holtz, you uh, you know when you snap the ball, uh, football is football. But behind the scenes, as far as what you do and your operation, how has it changed being 
in a league that merged versus just the USFL that you were the last two years? I just, I think the biggest difference I see is, I mean, well, obviously we're in Arlington. There's some physical differences instead of being in Birmingham. Uh, we're back to everybody in the same hub. We travel every weekend. I mean, nine weeks in a row, we'll get on an airplane, even when we play at home. There's some physical differences to what we're doing this year compared to last year. But when it comes to ball, it's very, very similar. And my role uh, right now is very similar. And I've decided to wear this many hats as the head coach and the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach and trying to build a football team. But uh, there's a lot, to, a lot to get done every day. But I think the role that I have trying to build this team is the same as last year. And we just look at it as what we're trying to get done each and every week to make sure that we're organized, thorough, detailed, cross T's, dot I's, and give our team the best chance to win. You know, I, I watched a little bit of the of the Memphis game, and you know, and looking at the team offensively, you you guys cer certainly can be explosive, uh, you know, and seem to be making plays when you need them. But watching the defense, uh, it seemed like in that game there were times where Memphis, you, you were like, "Come on now, they're, they're about to get themselves back in it." And, and the defense started looking a little bend, but don't break. But boy, right now, talk about your defense. The offense has been performing well, but it seems like the defense is coming up with plays when you need them. Well, they certainly have. And you look at, I think the biggest difference from this year's team to last year's team is that defensive front. Yeah. Uh, right now, we have as many sacks in three games as we had in 12 games last year. Mm. So but when you look at, we have 17 sacks right now. And uh, I think there've been so many new faces up front out of our eight defense alignment, six of them are new and they are making an impact. I mean, and it's not just one guy. I mean, you look at, uh, almost everybody that played last week had a sack, uh, maybe two pressures. I mean, they just, they're playing really well together as a group. Bill Johnson's doing a great job with them. But I think the biggest difference right now is the way that defense aligns playing. They're playing great. But I would agree with you that the defense has certainly been very opportunistic uh, and that they have made some key plays when they needed to. But uh, I think they're staunch. I think they're really good up front. And I think as we go forward, people are going to have to start not only game planning, but calling games in order to try and keep that defensive line in check a little bit. But I, I certainly think people are going to start trying to get rid of the ball quicker and double teaming and chipping defensive ends and doing things like that because of the explosiveness that they've had early in the season. Oh, yeah, they were the difference in the game. Uh, it, was yeah. a, it was a mismatch up front. The, the, the Memphis offensive line struggled, and it, and it was big. Coach, in your organization that you run, uh, what do you think is the difference? You, you've been in spring football now for three seasons, two leagues. First time as a, you know, the very first time you were a brand new team, had to come right. back and defend. Now in a merged league, you seem to do something that everybody else is not doing. You're winning all the time across the board. What do you think is really, what's your strengths in that? What's the difference? Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, right now, I just, we, we try and look at it as, uh, let's just pick the ball up and throw it to first base this week. You know what I mean? Let's not make it complicated. We can't, uh, you can't live in the past. You can't look at what you've accomplished yet. We're, we're still, you know, we're still fighting in a battle here. Uh, you don't have time to look back and to um, kind of admire your accomplishments and what you've been able to accomplish because you still have, you still have a lot of things going forward. And I, I don't think you can look at game two, three, four down the road uh, we got to look at this week as D.C., and I think right now it's very hard for me to be sitting in the middle of the forest. It's hard for me to see the 30,000-foot view or evaluate, um, what do we do better than somebody else? You know, I yeah. mean, it's much more uh, – it's just hard to see the big picture when you're in the middle of the forest right now. You know, I am I see trees. You know, I see this obstacle, <laughs> right. this hurdle. I'm just – I am in the middle of that forest trying to figure it out right now and how do we have to find a way to win with this team and how do we do this and do that – and I think when it's all said and done and when, when our 12-game season is over or 10-game season is over and see what we can accomplish, I think that's when you look back and go, wow, you know what the 2024 team did? They did a great job of this. Yeah. Um, but right now, it's very hard for me to look back and evaluate that as I am in the middle of it right now. Yeah, looking when you're, you know, you're coaching college, and, 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 and I know this isn't the case, and, and it's not as – not as much as it was in the past now that everybody's got players. But let's be honest, there are times that you are by far the better team. 
You're playing a team maybe in the lower division. You got a Saturday coming up. You're trying to get the team motivated. It's it's a check game, and and you are much better than the other team. In professional football, that just doesn't happen. I mean, the the margins are, as you said earlier, are so close. I mean, you can be sitting at three and zero and zero and three just as easy, and 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 that yeah. sounds like is what you concentrate on because it really is true that any team y'all play can beat you. Oh yeah, I mean it's like every week is. Auburn versus Alabama. Yeah, I mean, every week is a is a game that anybody can win. And like you said, I mean, there's some teams right now. I mean, I look at Arlington as zero and three, and they're three plays away from being three and zero. Right. You know, in just last second field goals, there is an awful lot of talent. It is very evenly dispersed. I think the job that the league did in the merger, the way they used the dispersal drafts to spread the talent out uh, amongst the teams that were dispersed, the way that they did the draft after that to disperse some talent, uh, the way free agent is is organized. I think it's all designed for for balance, for equality. And I think that's what you're seeing right now. You're seeing the, you know, you've got, like I said, three teams that are two and one and Arlington's an 0 and three, but they're three plays away from being three and 0. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think anybody can beat anybody. There is no uh, power five versus group of five. There is no uh, power five versus FCS. Right, yeah, there is yeah. no, it, you don't have any of that. It is, like I said, it is, uh, you know, we talk a lot about uh, the SEC, but I think even in college now, there is becoming a big difference well, that's true. In, in what people are willing to spend on their NIL money. Well, and that's true. And, yeah. yeah. And, and now all of a sudden that's creating not just it used to be if you were in this league, everybody had the same thing. But now it's to the point where uh, it's all about. NIL money, you know, you have the transfer portal. People are trying to get in the portal for more money. Uh, So you do have some things that are probably differentiating your talent. Uh, I think professional football is built all about equality. There's a reason the teams that finished last draft first, you know, I mean, and that's why it's so hard uh, to build a quote, quote, dynasty or continue winning. You may have a year where you have a good team, but then the rules are put together where the teams that finished last They get to pick first. They're the ones that get the opportunity. They get first jump on the talent that's available to try and create equality in these leagues. And so I think it's a very balanced league. I feel like we have some really good players. I feel very blessed to be able to have the success that we've had to this point. Uh, We just got to keep our head down and keep banging that rock. It's not time to look up just yet, but uh, I, I really have enjoyed professional sports i've enjoyed that everybody has the same um it's yeah. kind of like we talked about before it's like nascar everybody has the same size engine just who does the best job of driving it that week thank so you we coach do- thank you coach hey, 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 we're gonna be sending you a little help this weekend too speedy's gonna be the stadium guy so uh, i love it we're gonna work it. it into a frenzy thanks a lot coach we'll see you uh, all right guys appreciate it it's always good. a wave It on March 1st of 2019, and yep. I, can, I can hear everybody say, Hey, thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, and then I mean, we had that was a good month, Bubba. You wouldn't believe the plans we had and, <laughs> and, and, and stuff, and and so uh, we've had to adjust and help and work and whatever. So we, we're here in 2021. Um, you know, we have some people um, uh, that are still not comfortable and they're canceling or rearranging, and sometimes there's there's uh, you know, there's there's crowds that are reduced, and, and we're living in it as best we can. Mm-hmm. And anybody who uh, who says we're in, will, will, but you can do parts of the strategy virtually if you need to. But but some but but the original design from uh, Deuteronomy sixteen sixteen and Exodus thirty four twenty three, I think, uh, when God is talking about three times a year, He wanted Moses to bring him the men in, in, in a setting where they hear from God and then implement what He said. So we we do have designs of you know of four. Uh, quarterly meetings where men gather in a service uh, or you know a wild game feast or whatever you want to do and then you know you have the high challenge where you come in and we we send speakers to you and teachers and then you know men's ministry has been done that way for a long time and it, it's effective but where we were kind of men's ministry was lacking was that high equipping and that's that discipleship uh when you you, know, you can stream spiritual leader at a man all day long but if he's never been shown how to do it and he doesn't know the word of god he's going to have a very difficult time doing that uh, so we then had put you in small groups, and we provide a 40-week curriculum every year. We got a new one coming out in March for the churches who did get through it last year. 
Uh, and for those that are just getting started, like last night, and I told Bubba this and, and Rick and Bubba tie in, we appreciate every single human being that consumes this show, either by watching it, listening to it, live, archive, whatever. We really do appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, but but over our history of 27 years, there are markets that, and we can't even really explain it. There, there's there's markets that, that that we will say are special, and I don't know why. Uh, I mean, it's like there's just a connection this show made with the people of of these communities that is a little bit different and unique uh, than maybe some of the others. And they're all important. Every every human being is important. And there's pockets where you there's a lot of passion for the show. But these are like communities where the passion just seems to sweep the entire community. Uh, and, and Laurel and Hattiesburg, Mississippi, is one of those markets. We've had a very special relationship with them, and we were on an affiliate there for many, many years. And even that affiliate, the way they found the show, was very special. And, uh, and you know, for whatever reason, business reasons, whatever, and we, we, we bear no ill will. Uh, the station that we've been on for many, many years, Bubba, you, have the, you have the number. I don't know how long we were on. It was a long time. A long time. Uh, they took us off. Now, praise the Lord. We now have other ways to get the show. And last night, buddy, we saw for an example yeah. that's really important mm-hmm. uh, because those the, the passion is still there. They've just shifted to new ways to get the show. And uh, and there's just it, – it's just I can't – I mean, I, like, like they don't just know a little bit about the show. They, they, know, they know a <laughs> yeah. tremendous amount. And, they, and, of course, you know, people were there last night talking about I was there when y'all nearly knocked down the – Chandelier. I was I was in the theater. Uh, some glass hit right, but right not far from me. There's you know what? There's urban legend there, and I think you'll support this because Ham's. Uh, I wanted to go last night and got to go, and that was great. But I think you'll support this. There's there's a bit of a murmur campaign there. Now I don't I don't want to say this is true, but people love murmur campaigns because we're living in time. There there there's an absolute. I I heard guys talking in a group that didn't even know I could hear them. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, that's when they took them off, right? They after that happened. Yeah. Uh-huh. And and I was that what they said? Oh yeah. Yes. And I was like, and I kind of walked over and said, guys, I don't, I don't think that's <laughs> that's in, you got bad information. No, no, no. I mean, did they not take you off right after? I said, I don't know how soon it was after. Well, I'm just telling you, so and so over at so and so. Yeah. He said he knows that family, and <clears throat> that's probably why they took you off. So the and assault I, on the chandelier. Yeah. The, you know, you, you mess up a gift from Germany. It's hundreds of years old. Yeah. One time I and mean, nearly kill people. Everybody it, holds it over your head and then, forever. And then they take you off there? Yeah. So I had never, I will say the owners, their their face was one to remember. Yep, there they, is, they came out Gosh, in the well, lobby it's, and it's saw a, us. One of one of my most uncomfortable nights in Rick and Bubba history. Yeah. 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 Rick, yeah. it's, it's Rick. a better chandelier today. And those of you that don't know the story, uh, we were on the twenty five year anniversary tour, and of course we go to this market because it's special. It this was, was the first it one. Was twenty years. Twenty years. I'm yeah. sorry, you're right. It's the years. first one we did. Yeah, yeah. and it was our first right. stop. We yeah. didn't we didn't know whether this theater Quite a presentation was going to work or not work. We didn't really know. I and, thought it worked real, real well. I mean, I was very Bubba. happy right up to the hey. big finale. There. <laughs> yeah, Bubba, we <laughs> we didn't win any better until then. Bubba, yeah. we, we were <laughs> Turn thrilled. It up, Rick. I remember us looking at each other like we did it. Let we it did fly, it. Bubba. for being with us so uh birmingham stallions three and O, leading their conference taking Dang. on dc uh dc a really good football team they're at two and one uh, uh the ufl conference uh, has a, a three-way tie for first uh and the dc is one of those three birmingham uh leading the their conference the usfl conference from last year uh, those teams, uh, second place, Michigan Panthers at two and one, Stallions three and zero. Oh. So it'll be a great matchup. Speedy will be there. Uh, if you want to to be part of the fun, uh, get your tickets by going to theufl.com. Theufl.com. Saturday in Birmingham, Stallions against the Defenders. Rick Speedy will be at midfield doing the heart sign with his hands. Yes, he will to the enchi- entire crowd. He loves the crowd because he loves the crowd and they love him. They do. Uh, so uh, that that's coming up. So he meant, you know, C- Coach uh, Holtz. And, Bubba, I, I thought when you kept throwing things out there that I hope people were paying attention because here's this coach that continues to win the championship, and really every year he's coached, they've changed his setup. 
The, I, I mean, the change it, it, is right, not yeah. minor. I no. mean, it's dramatic <laughs> no. from a cold start yeah. to a defending team that lost a lot of its players. Yep. Now to a merge league. I mean, it's just a constant change. And and he said something too. I don't, I'm not sure everybody fully grasped. Under the old league, they were in Birmingham, all the players, right? right. right. Well, for last year one. one. And then they went, and it was just two teams, year right, two, yeah. right? They split right. it, yeah. Right. So, but they, they are or two in, hubs. And, and what he said about getting on an airplane, the Birmingham team does not stay in Birmingham. No. They're in Texas, right? Right. Yeah, and at Dallas? Right, yeah, yeah. And, and all the teams and, are and, there. And they, and they fly to their cities to play, which is a whole other. Yeah. It seems like it would be costly, but. Uh, so they went from yeah. two hubs last year back to one hub. It's just in Arlington. In Arlington. It's in Texas. So, we, so if this, is the, this is what he's lived with. One hub, two hubs, back to one hub, but not in Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and then like you say, defending championships every time, so and, and uh, winning. And think about yeah. the change in players he's had. I mean, you get yeah. some back, but you have big turnover. Sure, your best guys are going to get a shot at the NFL, and two of his best players did his quarterback and their kicker, who was unbelievable. And they have uh, two, even really the third guy who's been with them since day one. Uh, quarterbacks, they're loaded. I mean, yeah. they 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 can they so, start. So his person. his style or his technique or his. Uh, you know, the way he's set up to run things is working in various situations, which to me is even more impressive. Yeah. Well, I don't know w- whether he is uh, it does this or not, but I know that um, I-, I saw a guy being interviewed about Nick Saban, and, and he said that Saban, throughout his entire run at, at Alabama, and I don't know if he did it at other schools where he was at, but while he was – he, he would have people – that they would hire, and the sole job of of the of these people that, that he would bring in, and the, and the guy was one of the guys who got to do it, and he said he would sit down with us after we'd been with his program for you know a couple of weeks, and he would say, "Tell me things that we could do better. Where where, where are we not? Where where do you I'm think we can? Where, where do you think we can improve?" So he was never ever saying they have arrived. They always knew there were things that they could do better, and, and and they tried to find those things. They were never going, well, we must be doing everything pretty good. We win all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they yeah, were let's all, just keep they, doing what we've been doing. Yeah, they were always trying to find a way to do it better. So this mentioning of the NCAA and, boy, good night. College football has just turned into – yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Headed to, I don't even know. And of, course, wild, wild and of course, I'm part of the problem because I can't wait for the the playoff coming up. <laughs> but so now they they're dealing with the transfer rule because the NIL is its own problem. But the NIL mixed with the unlimited transfer <laughs> opportunity a bigger problem. It's really mm-hmm. a, a mess. And so now the NCAA is uh, saying they are going to allow all undergraduate athletes to transfer and play immediately if they meet specific academic requirements. Uh, so the decision isn't final until they uh, have the meetings. Uh, they all end today, I guess, uh, is the end of the meeting. So, um, Yeah, they've still got to vote on it, but it looks yep. like they're going to do away with limitations on transferring. So you literally could transfer and play in a calendar year for two different teams. Like, it's possible I could be on a team based on where the, how the schedule is, and Greg talked about this in high school, and I could say I'm I'm playing for Team A, mm-hmm. and but but uh, the Team B I'm going to is is late on the schedule, so I could leave Team A and literally play against my team. I don't know uh, if they're saying that in the same I, season. Am I, I, I do. I, are they if you meet certain handling, academic requirements? Are they handling in season <clears throat> transfers? Do they have only a certain now? Time what you I can mean, transfer? Y- yes, the two windows are still there. That's but true. what I'm talking about, Rick, in a calendar year, you could be in the playoffs. Yeah. for a team playing in January. Or February, yeah, and then transfer and be in spring training in September for another team. <clears throat> well, it says here the legislation, which y'all are saying, won't limit the number of times the athlete can transfer, uh, but they can't transfer mid-year and play for a second school in the same season. Okay, right. We're talking about right. academic years. But I, and what I was saying is still in play yeah, in the yeah, same yeah, year, yeah. you could, which is right. still kind of weird. Right, right. So right, right now in the 23, 20, uh or I should say, right now what they're saying is they have, I think th- this window opened up, they have till April the 30th. This 15-day transfer window is open right now, and players have until April 30th to enter the portal uh, and if they don't find a new school, they can stay where they are, but they could transfer this late and then still play in the fall for that new school. Yeah, same calendar year. All right, well, 
We'll come back. Bottom you know, of the hour. It seems like they're going right the, the wrong way on this. Yes. They, they need a little more governance, not less. I mean, it's the wild, wild west. Yeah. Now. Phone calls are next. All 10 lines available. Calvin Speedy Wilburn goes to the phones. A Patriot Mobile phone troll coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. We yeah, did it. We yeah. did it. This was better than we thought. Hey, guys, this will work. This yeah. is good. Yeah. This is yeah. work. Wow. This is, looking forward to the rest of it. This mm-hmm. right here work. By the way, I think we may be wrong. I think Montgomery was the second stop, wasn't it? I mean, Montgomery was the first stop. It right? was. This was the second. Montgomery was the first. It was the very first stop on the tour, I think so. Mm-hmm. But I thought hey, it was Hattiesburg. I there, think it was Montgomery. I thought it was Hattiesburg, too. Because that was part of the story. I truly thought it was Montgomery. Oh, my gosh, we have this. I may be wrong. I thought it was Adler is showing you what some men last night think this is why we got canceled. Did you just not see the show? It was Hattiesburg, I think. I think it was. That just said the end of the first show. Yeah, Was it? Okay. It was. Because I remember thinking in my mind why the first one. And there it is. And there's when it happened. Because we never shot it again. And we didn't shoot it in Montgomery. No, you're right, Greg. No, it was the first stop. You're 100% right. You've got to be careful. If I could have ran home from there, I would have ran out the back door. And Did just kept y'all running. see the text that Adler had <laughs> yeah, following that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody okay? Yes. Hooray. Yeah. Right, the glass came showering down yeah, on, like on a crowd. Mm-hmm. It's like a weapon. It, that was it, tough. It was, I, great. It was not I a good I kept waiting to hear somebody go, ah! Yeah. Start screaming. Right. I, I literally thought we was going to see, like, I mean, it yeah. was, it, yeah. there it is. That's a terrible And moment. I wasn't sure I was controlling the music from the stage. I, do you turn it down? I mean, what do you do with the music? Oh, my God. No, please look no, at that. I, I wish everybody was showing this. I do, too. Yeah. Can we please stop it's showing It's making this? my stomach hurt. By the way, I talked to the guy. <laughs> the guy one of the guys. <laughs> look, I talked to one of the guys. I talked to one of the guys that was there. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to over, because it's very serious when people have PTSD. Mm-hmm. But you could tell when he was trying to talk about it. It, it, it still shook him a little bit. Rick, we're, we're lucky. I mean, you forgot. It cut a guy's shirt. Well, don't yeah. forget about yes, it. Yes, it did. It, it cut did. a guy's shirt. I know yeah. you're all concentrating yeah, on did. the glass, <laughs> and we should, because if ancient glass falls down on people from how many ancient feet? Glass. Yeah, you, you yeah. don't really want that. Because that's when they made glass. Yeah. How about this? You don't re- you, hey. Back in the day, Greg. Listen, you don't really want that. Mm-hmm. No, really. But, but one thing that y'all don't talk about, because I think it bothers us so much, that son of a gun was swinging. Yes. I know. If that, if, if that thing would have cut loose. loose. Let's talk about something like that. <laughs> yeah, <let's laughs> if that thing would have cut <laughs> loose. Get on Urban Meyer some more, Greg. Yeah, Urban Meyer, if he'd have been there. What about Urban? All right, so so anyway, I don't know. There it is. Wow, look at that smoke coming out of the end of that I just want y'all to know that it's become a kind of an urban legend in the in Laurel and Hattiesburg that this led to us being taken off. Yeah. Rick and Bubba show eight six six. We be big. So, uh, recapping our thanks last night to Pastor Robbie Johnson, PR, um, at Journey Church. Got to hear the history of that church. Started in his house, uh, and uh, there in Laurel, Mississippi, in the Laurel Hattiesburg area. Uh, he um, he also told a funny story. About um, and I, it, it, you know how these kind of things. So he he said that he's been looking, which is why this was created, and I think that's why God, uh, you know, said, "Hey, th- do this. We want, uh, you know, this, this, that you can't really find curriculum for men's ministry. Okay, now you can have wild game feast and sports banquets and all that, and that, those things are great. And you know, there's 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 men's conferences, and I love men's conferences. I go and do them, but but those things are mainly about high challenge or fellowshipping. High challenge and fellowshipping are important, but they're not discipleship. And so what we were trying to do is say, well, we'll provide a curriculum that goes along with your men's ministry that keeps them in small group Bible studies, the ones that are willing, for an entire year. And every year we'll have another one for you. And then hopefully the men will become so um, well-versed in Scripture and all this, they may get to where they don't need us anymore. And they, they say, hey, we expository teach in our small groups. we got men that have grown so much they know how to teach the Bible, and thank you for getting us started and giving us these materials and whatever. You know, that'd be great. But he said, I was as a pastor, our men's ministry was, was pitiful, as sadly is the case in most churches. He said, and I want to do something about it. And I got to researching and researching, and I found you guys. I found this the this 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 discipleship strategy, loved it, went ahead and got it, and then want to get to start the state. Uh, we talked to Ren Clark there, who 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 contacted. Well, so I was the only one that could say you were. I thought his name was Ryan, and 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 Helms was right. He said there's no way they're going. He's going to spell Ryan that way, and it was Ren. Mm-hmm. And so uh, and he contacted us and started getting the part about bringing in the, the the teachers for the gatherings. So the funny story is, so he's he's in his office, 
And all of a sudden, some of the men the church bust up in his office. And it's funny. <laughs> it is. So, hey, you got to see this. Greg, you love stuff like that. You love stuff like that. And they come in. And what I love about the, the, the about Pastor Robbie Johnson is he has our sense of humor. He <laughs> let them do the whole presentation to him. Pastor, you, we want to show you something we need oh, to do. Oh, boy. We, look, and they do the entire presentation. And they had already purchased the curriculum themselves. And he goes, by the way, I bought that four weeks ago. <laughs> Look, and they were like, what? And so so what they did, since they had it, they went ahead and started their group on their own. Uh-huh. So, so they're already 10 weeks into it. Okay. And then last night was the opportunity for any any church, any group of men that wanted to plug into it. So Journey Church there in Laurel. So, so he's talking to us, and he said, So here we go, 35 minutes past the hour. It is a Patriot Mobile phone troll. Uh, all 10 lines are available. Make your phone money matter uh, by going to patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. You do have a choice uh, when it comes to your wireless provider. Uh, let's open up the lines. Uh, we got the combination of the real Greg Burgess and Speedy on the phones at 866-WE-BE-BIG. If you want to join us at the end of 30 seconds on the Patriot Mobile phone show, the buzzer grabs you. Uh, what that does, well, it keeps things moving. It also may be a mercy buzzer. Uh, not not all calls, uh, 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 you know, it's not desirable for all to continue on. Uh, Bubba's toting two timeouts today. Uh, he can take those if he wants to expand on the call, but there's only two. Uh, no meaningless shout-outs, no shameless plugs, uh, no talking about the speed of light. Uh, all of that. Uh, By the way, got another email today. <laughs> if you mention that today, I'll burn the studio to the ground. Okay, so uh, so line those you, up. Can I tell you, I appreciate it. he will not come off of this car watching the a same car guy. from the, yeah, the same guy yeah, well, from the start that, line or watching it on I the side. I can't believe that guy hasn't removed himself to a new town. <laughs> I mean, after that thing he yesterday. Keeps, he keeps emailing he going, you don't, he, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. And he'll go into the same thing again. He single-handedly <laughs> killed the show yesterday. He killed it. All right, so to, to, the, phones, <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the phones we go. Clark is in Huntsville standing by. Clark, you got 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, good morning. Hey, hey Rick, I had a question for you. Okay. Um, you are reading a debt relief ad recently. You mentioned that they try to keep them trapped in their prison. Yes. Uh, and then also gave uh, options for debt relief yes. and to lower your debt. Yes. I was curious why you don't have that same thoughts for student loan relief. What do you mean? Uh, I, I, I do. I do. Well, here's, here's the thing on that. If you can find somebody that will say we'll cut that down, you know, kind of like uh, we even had uh, forgiving of, of debts yeah. in the scripture. Yeah, and so the thing on student loans, the problem you have on the student loan is that we're all still paying for other people's college. You know, if I am a organization and I say you owe me $15,000 and it's my organization, my company, and they're like, I'll never be able to pay that back. And I and I come to them and say, Well, we will allow grace. How about seventy five hundred? And 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 they go, you know what, that'll help me. And if I agree to do that, I don't have any problem with that at all. The problem with the student loans, you're you're kind of talking apples and oranges. I mean, we're all going to continue to pay for people's college, uh, even if, you know, the student loans are forgiven, we're all gonna be hit with that. I mean, there there's not gonna be um, you know, because the college has got their money. Yeah, this, this is yeah, it, 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 yeah. And, and, it's it's really two different things. Now, yeah. uh, th- this company is helping you walk through this and right. look at ways to lower your situation. And I don't have a problem if if the company uh, works with you to try to lower your liability and work through your any loan that right. you've got. Uh, but I, I don't think blanket forgiveness of these things uh, ha- has is doing anybody any good. You you teach people that they don't have responsibility. Uh, somebody's got to pay for that, right? Uh, which will be the government where they print more money. So it, it's two different things. It, it really is. We, we allow people to declare bankruptcy. Yeah. Uh, and and they end up trying to find a way out. If, if, I, I would I would I would take it a step further. I would say if you're for these across the board forgiveness of student loans, why don't we have across the board forgiveness for every mortgage in the country? Right. 
no yeah. matter how much, we're just going to forgive yeah. it. Well, I stop now, so, so if it's good, if a little of it's good, a whole lot of it should be better. So, yeah. and you know that will never happen. It would collapse the economy, yeah. which somebody's going to have to pay for it. Well, when you talk about the government getting involved in forgiving student loans versus a company that will negotiate with each individual person you owe money and see if they can help you, that's not the same thing. Uh, one, you know, if, if, if the, if zapmydebt.com can go to whoever you got your student loan from and get them to give you a better deal, or how about you 50% will, will free you of it. Fine. But the government for giving student loans, no, that, that's a completely different situation. Mm. Uh, we continue Allison in Kentucky, Allison, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to talk about the food dyes. Um, we've tried to cut them out of my toddler's diet. And so We've actually found that an alternative for Fruit Loops is one of the off brands, and it's actually cheaper and it tastes better. Wow. But it's not fluorescent. It's not fluorescent in color. <laughs> so I think as Americans, we look for that bright neon color. Yep. But actually, they can dye the foods with healthier alternatives, and they taste better. Wow. Yeah, and like Bubba said, I, I think it. You know, there, there's there's no way. I mean, we're not saying you can never have Fruit Loops, but if Fruit Loops can be healthier, good. You know, let, 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 if there's something that, that we can prove, you got to prove it. Now, I want to yeah, keep it right. It has to be real. We're yeah, not right. going to just uh, make blind assumptions. It's going to cost these companies money and take taste out of a product. But if it's a problem, let's identify it and let's let's work to do it. And I think you're doing what everybody ought to do. You you be a responsible parent. If you feel like that uh, exposure to these chemicals. Uh, could could harm a young child, then you take them away from the young child. If you're not bothered by it, eat Fruit Loops. I mean, it's you know, I think that's where we need to be landing on this, as opposed to I automatically have to ban all chemicals that someone said is bad, or I'm not going to listen to them. This is some kind of left-handed uh, move from the far left to mm. get me. Right. I mean, there, sometimes yeah. it's in the middle, guys. Yeah, right. Sometimes it's in the middle. Alan out of Asheville. Alan, go ahead. Thirty seconds. Good morning, guys. I've been listening since '95, and Thank I can you. remember when we, when you asked for or got people to donate for the hot dog launcher. The people's good. I was wondering what happened, and I was wondering what happened to it, and mm. if you still had it, what were y'all going to do with it when the show was over? That's a good question. We uh, we still have it. It's in the storage room. It is still operational. It has not been used in public since the, since the uh, incident we, we call the tragedy in Hattiesburg. The incident. That's the last and, time uh, it was fired. The it, incident. Uh, it has been on ice since then. A little spooked. And it will be uh, part of the property of Rick and Bubba, Inc. that will have to be disposed of at some point along the way. As a matter of fact, uh, I talked to Bubba about it, and I had a guy, his name was Solomon or something, and he said we could cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> we do need to set up the parking lot and launch a few. Uh, you know, Greg, Why not? Well, Greg, you don't remember. I'm, saying he's in I'm top still traumatized. Been, I'm been sorry. Been I was yeah. traumatized by that. Yo, I'm sorry. It it, it it was one of the worst feelings I ever had when I, I saw I chunks of glass falling. Yeah, that like, was bad. And the worst part about it, we the tour was going so well. We felt so good What an about opening it. night we had. We, set, we felt so good about it <laughs> up to that point. I just felt so good about it right until we saw. That's so funny. It just played during the breaks. You guys were I recapping. Saw yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's continue. <laughs> uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Adam in right Birmingham. Now. Adam, go ahead. 30 seconds. If Adler goes to Amish, is he going to have Henry pull that sweet A wagon he's going to have to get? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, I guess so. Uh, Bailey and Calera. Bailey, 30 seconds. Go. Yes, sir. Uh, how you guys doing? Good. Good, good. good. Uh, I always wondered, do y'all on the morning show, do y'all have any, is it scripted or is it just whatever, Speedy and Greg and, Hamzy wants to do. Yeah, it's pretty much every word is scripted. I'm yeah, reading yeah. off a teleprompter right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. We even knew you were going to call. Scripted I'll, your call I'll, out today. Yeah. Yeah. You call I'll let right. Coach Nor know. I, I said, hey, let Coach Nor know. I said, hey. Okay. You you called okay. exactly when you're supposed to. Right. You followed the script to a T. Thank you. Right. Perfect. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if this if this teleprompter in front of us ever goes off the show, we'll just go solid. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll just sit here and stare blankly into the camera. Uh, let's go to John and, and Huntsville. Scream, roll a flashback. <laughs> John, 100.3, the river, go. 
Yeah, just a little quick comment on the gentleman that called in about student loan forgiveness. Yes, if we want to tie it biblically, I mean, forgiveness is a fantastic thing that sure. Christ did for us. Sure. But when he did it, he didn't require Jimmy down the street to pay part of it. You know, the That's... government doesn't need to come in and pay for part of it. Bingo. There's a difference in forgiveness and elimination and then spreading it amongst everybody else. Bingo. Boom. Bingo. Well and, said. And clearly, Which is what we were trying to say, but you said it better. Yeah, and, cl- and 23 and, seconds, by the way. Out. And <laughs> clearly, this is a situation where they're just trying to buy votes with the public treasury. And uh, if it was so, wouldn't we start with getting the cost of college down yeah, for those people start, that are yeah. signing Thank up you. today? And what about somebody that's wanting to go today and they go to make a loan? Or should they expect their loan to be forgiven too? When's it in? Yeah. See, yeah, it just, and, and if loan forgiveness for that loan is loan. good, then we need to start one, I think a good place, car loan forgiveness, and then let's move to re- retiring all mortgage Private and public and commercial, Boy, all at one time, and no, nobody will owe anything anymore on anything. Cindy in and, Texas, and, and you know what? There is a biblical reference for that every, every seven, seven every years. Seven years, yeah. The Jubilee, which may give us a better idea about what you can afford if you can't pay it off in seven years. Maybe you don't need it. But right. anyway, I won't get into that well, today. That's a whole nother topic. And the and the caller made the point that biblical concept is called debt elimination. Yep. Not, not you don't have to pay it, but everybody else has to pay it for you. Yeah, not redistributed. Uh, Cindy in Texas says she can tell us what's coming down the pike on the on the student loans. Go ahead. Hey y'all, and I'll do it quick, but maybe Bubba will have mercy on me and won't buzz me. Okay. So I worked for uh, the student loan industry, and as the background is, you need to be bank loans if you went to college. School approved you, you went to a bank, you got it, and then of course the federal government said, no, we're going to do it. Well, then the private lenders still have a market because, you know, you can only get X amount if you're a freshman, junior, sophomore, senior. So, you know, your cost of attendance has to be made up with private loans. Well, private loans are the ones that can't be forgiven. Hallelujah. But I have a very strong premonition, and my team has been talking about this. More than likely, the federal government is going to shut down even the private loan programs. They're going to do it all which means somebody can go in and get, instead of a $10,000 loan to pay for school, they can get a $30,000 loan to pay for all of their school. And then even that can be forgiven. So this is going to turn into a huge, huge problem, which I think is going to go to what Bubba says. Well, then let's forgive your mortgage. Let's forgive this. All for votes and all for power. The federal government is going to, and I would probably say in the next five years, totally take out the private student lending program. So as a company, we're, we're going to start diversifying. We're going to start doing other stuff. Now, you're probably, you're, you you really make a good point. You really do, because it gives them, boy, so much power to be able to buy votes. No matter what destruction it brings, it keeps them in power. Grant that money. I wonder why inflation's going up. And, and How could it be? And I, I know the horror stories of these government student loan programs. They are they are evil and wicked too, buddy. You talk about trapping you. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Look, I got this worship leader, and uh, and I think he said he's also the youth pastor, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. and yeah. he he says now he loves y'all. And he said, then you'll love this guy. And, and so we're like, okay. So so we go in, we're excited, and all of a sudden, <laughs> guitar, they're doing sound check. So picture, he's got guitar. Civilis. He's got everything in, 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 in I mean, he's a musician. He, he's a worship leader. I want you to think about this, Bubba. And when we saw him, I said, my goodness, that's, that's Adler. It's Eddie Van Adler. Look. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. I said it's Adler. That you would have, that especially is kind of far back like that. You go, well, hey, there's Rick and Adler. It's, yeah, it's Adler. And, 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 that doesn't look like me. It, it, <laughs> I thought it yeah. was Adler. Yeah. Well, this guy's he's a, a little lot, better dressed than Adler. Yeah, and he's a lot taller that. than Adler too. Yeah, Smelled better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can we zoom in on that a little bit? Like, he, yeah. like I said, he does. He's got no resemblance. <laughs> he look. He looks just like you, Adler. He could be your twin, funny. especially from when you see him on stage. Yeah, he I thought y'all were exaggerating. Hey, listen, don't miss that he's a musician. <laughs> His beard's a little thick. Can we get a split screen, Adler? <laughs> Adler, I, you have to do a split screen of yourself. I mean, we got we got to look. I know you don't want to, and sometimes we don't know what we look like. <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, Brandon looked a lot like you, and boy, that went on his mannerisms and all. Yes, guys, we were not the only ones crooked? to say it. There were a lot of people there even <laughs> saying. How that. was his posture? 
Uh, his better. posture's better, yeah, better than, than Adler. Uh, it so is. Good. And, and I, he said he prides himself on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, Greg, he's a savant. He, he knows everything. He knows all, you so think he didn't know that joke? split that's screen so for you, Greg, Greg, he was throwing out. <laughs> yeah, that's what Greg, he was throwing me. out because he said the true fan of the show. This was his point. And he said I, he's all in. <laughs> He said that he, oh, no. Adler, you're not using you try, the right picture. You, know, you, you better Adler, get one with glasses on and, and, and the you, hair you out. Get your hair right. Now, both of them we're look like Charles white. Manson. We're both white, so all white people look the same. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> no, y'all look alike. Get your glasses on. I've seen you with your glasses on. That's right. Adler, this is a compliment. Oh, yeah, it is. White people look the same. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he said, and he's right. He said, the true Rick and Bubba fan, <laughs> you can't ask, he said, you can't really ask a true deep down to hit my level Rick and Bubba fan, yeah. what's your favorite moment on the show? He goes, because my favorite moments, even though I love the, the ones that are classics, is the little comments that are made that everybody misses. There you yeah. go. Okay. He so said, he, his he preference. Said, he, and, said, hey, he said, I love the little one-liners that come in. And gave us he, he specific said, go, examples he of did. that. I go find little pieces of gold. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he, yeah, so. Serious about it. Okay, yeah. let's see what he's got here. Right, I, see, see. I see something going on in there. Adler. <laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is not what we're looking for. That's when, that's when Adler was in Antifa. I don't By the see way. it. I don't see it, guys. I don't see it. Adler, this guy looks a lot like you, and y'all yes. about the same height. I mean, the same height, yeah. everything. Don't okay. picture that I saw some guy. Don't let Aaron get around him. <laughs> okay. That's awful. Okay. <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, what, what if it was Adler 2.0? <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> what does that even mean, Bubba? <laughs> literally, literally, what does that it mean? It means you look alike. We took a picture in the break, because last <laughs> night we I, I said that Journey Church in Laurel, Mississippi, as we were kicking off their uh, men's discipleship strategy with the Man Church Gathering, we met Brandon, the worship leader slash youth pastor, and he looked... Like our own Adler. So I just took a picture <laughs> with Adler, just like the one I took with Brandon last night, and I wow. want you to look. <laughs> if the lighting had been a little different and he'd have had a blue jean jacket on, they would look like twins. I want yeah. you to look because you, you know, you've you known me for a very long time. You see my face in the picture on the left. Yeah. You, you think I'm not loving this? Oh, you, you, you are I'm laughing. How many one liners do you think I've been throwing out? <laughs> that, huh? That's amazing. If Adler had washed his hair, they'd look exactly like Right, that. right. Well, you, you know, yeah, that's true. That's it. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, well you, know, you know, women don't wash their hair every day. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. They don't, not with longer hair. That's I a good know, point. I know. Yeah. Okay. I'm and sure, it's not good for it, Rick. And if he had had his cool hip glasses cool on too. It might look a little bit more like he just grabbed some right, that right, I had. Yeah. So <laughs> didn't realize that light's still up, by the way, from the podcast. Sorry about that. I got to put yeah. that away. Well, I don't think it adds character. Note, it's all inside, but hey, that's what we do. It's how well, we do the show. Well, well here's what I was going <laughs> to. Here, here's what I was going to say, Adler. Though it's not like Brandon is some, you know, scourge on society. I mean, yeah. he's a hip dude. What's wrong with looking like Brandon? I mean, I better keep Aaron away, you know. <laughs> like Bubba right. said. Yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> well, I mean, if she found you to be, yeah. you know, an attractive, handsome man. Bubba, you she better probably be... thinks that guy's pretty good looking. Bubba, I bet you're happy Wilford Brimley's dead. <laughs> <laughs> you better keep Betty away. <laughs> Otherwise, Betty would be going nuts. <laughs> because they look the same. <laughs> <laughs> I was a... Here we go, eight minutes to the top of the hour. You got a choice, folks. AMAC, that's right, Association of Mature uh, American Citizens, uh, amac.us slash Bubba. Right now, uh, we've got an election year special. A four-year membership is only $30. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, if you were like us, I, we start getting all the AARP stuff when we turn what 50 uh or something like that and you know what didn't didn't care for the organization started out there as i said it didn't like didn't like where they were politically didn't like, their politics. Didn't like them so uh, i kind of stayed out of it and i thought well i wish there was another choice well there is and amac.us slash bubba so many money saving travel benefits for hotels car rentals cruises theme parks shows events movies food and dining there's a lot there it's uh and also they have an array of insurance discounts. Hello. Uh, also free Social Security and Medicare advice. Yes. But here's where they are different. A trusted voice in Washington. 
uh, a community of like-minded patriots who love our nation. And you also get the AMAC magazine, too. So right now, right now, election year special, you do have a choice. AMAC has all the benefits that you like without all the politics you don't like with AARP. AMAC.us slash Bubba. Go right now, or you can go to rickandbubba.com, and you can find that link under the Sponsors button. By the way, if you prefer just a year, $16. Okay, so that, that option's available, too. Uh, all right, so, Bubba, we had, you know, with, with our 30th anniversary and the final year of the Rick and Bubba show, people are finding really cool historic things. Did you get this email uh, from the guy who just got a job uh, at Jacksonville State University, and he sent us a picture of him sitting right outside 92J? Yeah, I did. 92J, I did. yeah, and, and so he, he said, there he is. Look, he, he pulled up. <laughs> And he's he's got his Gamecock hat on. He just got a job with Jack State, and he said he pulled over to where you and I both began our radio career, WLJS yep. Radio, there right there. Go. Need to work on the sign a little yeah. bit. Got a little yeah. ragged, yeah. Yeah. but Somebody's... but but uh, but see, there. See that tower and yeah. the yeah. I'll put that up. Yeah, you talk, you're talking about the Tower of Power. <laughs> the tower well, that's, of Power. That's just the SDL. You see those uh, four little windows? That used to be my office windows. Yeah, Speedy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that Speedy little glass r- work there. By the time you locked yourself out, that you glass door it. is the one I was looking through mm-hmm. oh, yeah. when I saw the record ending, and I and couldn't get back out. out. You used to interview yeah. Kevin Derryberry there when he was yeah. with Teddy, right? Good gracious. Uh, Greg would stop by. Well, he didn't do a whole lot of work and didn't, never got him on there, but he stopped by. <laughs> stopped by. <laughs> yeah, we, we would. That's the old uh, studio and that studio. Well, that is correct. So, Bubba, Bib Graves, remember? Mm-hmm. Yes, Greg, of course <laughs> I do. You put all that up, Bubba. <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, I had to climb turn out well. the STL antenna on that tower. and mm-hmm. uh, I kind of like that. Like I say, I, I helped wire a lot of that building. So, mm-hmm. uh, that, was, that mm-hmm. was fun back in the. Gosh, what year did we move it? I'm trying to think. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be honest. I like the Bib Graves better. You like Bib Graves better? Eighties yeah. sometimes. Really? Wow. I'm go ahead. I was not allowed to go back yeah. to Bib Graves. I was at I, both. You weren't. And uh, I was removed. I, I was not at Bib. I, that was that's where I was. Well, I was there, but <clears throat> was and, and Self Hall was built mm-hmm. uh, by money basically raised by Dr. Theron Montgomery at there the time. Go through the sale of the TV station. So so there you go. So thank you, buddy. Thanks thanks for sending that to us. A and, very, uh, very wise man to be able to do all that, although yeah. he was being criticized at the time by a lot of economic oh, people really? that really didn't know what they were talking about. Oh, well, well, well. Oh, that's the truth. I've noticed economic people uh, will talk even when they don't know what they're talking about. Yes, yeah. a lot. Yeah. A lot. Uh, an awful lot. And then it, this was um, another thing. It's weird he sent this because just like last night, so – at the house, you know, you always have these projects going on. And then when all the kids finally move out, you know, by the, by the grace of almighty God, you then kind of, you have rooms that you don't really do much with, you know, unless you got people over or they come home or whatever. So we, Sherry and I have had this, that she, we've always wanted to work on. She has an area that she's going to be like her office. And then me kind of have a home office and whatever. And so she's been working on those this year, hard and heavy. And she's got them, she got them finished. Well, in that process, you know, you're pulling out drawers and you're finding this uh-huh. and what is this? And you had this in the drawer. And so she comes in uh, to last night and we're getting ready to go to bed. She goes, oh, by the way, when I was getting clean up all the stuff, trying to get these two offices ready, she said, uh, I found a picture that somebody sent you for us talking about she and I, and it would apply to, to the show too. And I said, what do you mean? She said, somebody sent you a picture of the two studios where, I, where Sherry was working at Wax. And then you had the little walkthrough, and then Bubba and I were working over at Q104, and they sent us a picture so Sherry and I could frame that and be able to talk for generations. Here's the two radio stations hmm. that mom and dad or granddad and grandmom, where we met. Hmm. Mama was working right there. Dad was working right there. So I, I did. I, I Of course, she said, now, what have you been doing with that picture? And I said, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <You didn't> know. <laughs> it's just all in drawer. Yeah, so whoever you were that sent us that, last night we finally found it. It worked And out. I think I, pro- I probably brought it home from work one day. Meant to say something about it. Completely forgot about it. The fact you got it home is a It's It's laying with your American Express. Yes, it is. (laughs) So don't you think that's a good idea, though, to frame that? And now you got the two radio stations where mom and dad met. That's where love met. Oh, buddy. Let me tell you something. (laughs) That's where it all took place. Yeah. I, I think of all the things we've done over the years and all the different accolades we've gotten for marketing, the fact that Sherry Married Me may have been the greatest marketing Campaign I've ever done. 
Because I'll I agree. Sh- I sure didn't have a lot to work with, just yeah. like this show. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, yeah. No, so I, 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 there was not a lot to work with. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was now, quite an upsell. Yeah, it really, yeah. really was. And then Bubba, I mean, look at you though. I mean, you, oh, I'm you, you get to brag. Sure, you broke pretty up good marketing, up. wasn't it? Yeah. Now Bubba's was a little more of a hostage move, but, right? But I mean, it, it was effective. What I mean, you, you know, know it, it it got the job done. I took her captive with my love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm holding your heart hostage. That's great. That is great. <laughs> and I know that these two women every day they wake up and go, "How could they be so blessed?" <laughs> you know. What? <laughs> Uh, All right, so uh, top of the hour, if you're checking out, we wish you well. Uh, Don't forget, uh, with the daily archives on our YouTube channel or our podcast channel, that enables you to get any of the show anytime that you might not get on your normal schedule. If you're staying with us and you're still working through the show, we'll do a top of the hour break and we'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. by that joke, Bubba, when you said it in the hall. And I'm not sure why my response in the hall led you to think it would be good to say it on the air. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. I still think it's funny. All right, so, just, just clarify how I feel. About it. So, so this is not this is not some ugly guy. It's not like you like somebody weird. No. We better keep Aaron away. <laughs> she's crazy like that. Yeah. <laughs> She'll and be you all over it. <laughs> Stacy out of Georgia. I uh, would like to comment on the on the minimum wage the, uh, deal that we brought up, and then we'll, we'll move to some other stuff. Stacy, thanks for your patience, and welcome to Rick and Bub. Hi, thanks, guys. Thanks for um, having me. I got no, I got thirty seconds. No, so no, no, no. Thing, no hey, we're I not like trolling. To to- yeah, we're not trolling now. So you go. Take right your ahead. time. Yeah, take your time. Oh, okay. Well, my concern is about the comments I heard about minimum wage, minimum wage, and the fifteen dollar living wage. I'm a nurse. I work in a personal care or nursing home, and I work for a multi million dollar company. But 20% in that building probably make minimum wage, housekeeping, cafeteria workers, whatever. No adult can live off 725. I don't care where they live. You can't rent a decent apartment. You cannot live off 725. When I entered the workforce back when I was uh, years old, mm-hmm. minimum wage was $3.85. Mm-hmm. You have to increase the minimum wage. Small businesses, I know you only have a small area. Of your ink of your budget for income to pay your your business people your employees, but then you need to look at your profit margin. Yeah, well, if you want quality people. You have to be. They have to be able to live and work. I agree with you. Seven twenty five. You can't rent an apartment on seven twenty five with two people working full time. No, I, I agree with Not that. In a decent I, area. I, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I think we're kind of talking about two different things. The na- that's the federal mandate is seven twenty five uh, in many many states. The states can do whatever they want. Twenty nine of them actually. Twenty nine, mm-hmm. but but most people in, in your and in to, some cities. To your point, correct. most people, if they want to have good quality employees, are going to pay people beyond the minimum wage if they are talking to someone who needs a living wage. The minimum wage was never designed to be a, your full time. Uh, hey, I'm, I've got a family wage. The problem you got to look at, though, Stacy, is if the if the government comes in and mandates it and they double it, the minimum you have to pay someone is fifteen dollars an hour. You know, there there's math in play in this, and see, you're talking about people's profit margins that you really, in all fairness, don't have any idea what their profit margins are. And this is that problem that you're we. You're right, and you correct. But but, but, but really, but you, in fairness. But you don't. But you don't want to assume. Well, you're making too much money. You're just going to have to start making less money. We just had a guy call up in, in the math and said, if I get forced to $15 an hour, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because I, too, want to feed my family and pay my mortgage, who, who I put out my risk on this, on this business, and I invested money, and many times I didn't make, uh, take a paycheck because, I, look, I'm a small business owner. I know that that's how they work. Many times these people invest, and they go a while. When, when, when there's somebody didn't get paid, it's, it's them. But what there's, they also have the opportunity to benefit uh, from the risk. But he, what he's saying is, I know the profit margin I got to have to make it. So what I'm going to do, if I have 10 employees and they force me to 15 minimum, and he said he already pays more than the minimum wage, because like you said, if you want to get quality people, you got to. It's mm-hmm. competition. It's the free market. He says, I'm just going to pay less people. Uh, and so people will lose their job. I th- we also complain about the cost of things. If you raise the minimum wage, 
It's just like taxes. When you raise taxes on, on corporations and you raise the what they have to pay people, we end up paying for that, the consumer. That, 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 they, we don't, they don't do it. Yeah, they don't have a yeah. printing press. Yeah, so what <laughs> happens then is now the person out there who's trying to make it, everything that person's buying costs more. And, and, and it's like we don't learn that as Americans. The free market needs to work. If I, if I was running where you work and I wanted to, to bring the best people in for those jobs, then I would find a way to pay them more. But when the government mandates it, it, it that, that, that rarely ever works because now people start making adjustments and, and the cost of things go up, and, and, and it's just math. Uh, so I understand. Stacey, I, I really think I understand your point. We're, we're on the same side yeah, of this. Really don't put me on mute so y'all talk back to me. Hello. Yeah, you're you're there. I, I know what I did is I, I I had you potted down so I could finish my sentence and then I potted you back up so you could finish yours. Okay, because I had a couple of rebuttals. Well, go ahead. Actually, you 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 have the floor. Okay. Actually, what I'm saying is, fifteen dollars an hour needs to be federally mandated. Because people cannot live off of that. We're going to pay for that either way as taxpayers. Because if you got a bunch of people making seven twenty five an hour, then they're going to need food stamps. Then they're going to need rent assistance because you can't live off that. So you're going to pay for it either way. So it needs to be federally mandated at $15. Because if I can't feed my family or the next person can't feed their family because they're on seven twenty five, guess what? They're might going to have to apply for food stamps. They're going to apply for Medicaid because they can't afford their work insurance. So you're going to pay for it either way. That's a good point. I, I, so this I, is my point. You need to allow people to be able to be self-efficient, and you cannot be self-efficient on $7.25 an hour. Well, we, and so if well, you're I, not going to do it as a person, then they need to do it as a country. Stacey, Y'all guys have a great day. I, you too. Stacey, Thank you, Stacey, I think, too, the point is, and I think we all want the same thing, but I think it's the, the, the way we get to it. Um, you, you can't survive on $7 an hour, but when the government comes in and mandates these things on private business, it, it sets up artificial barriers that, that throw the whole system out. Really, the thing is, is you want to try to get a job and move above minimum wage. Right. From the Big Boy Studio, living out on the bleeding edge of technology, from Sweet Home, Alabama, to the world. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Adler, all here. Helmsy out. Welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. Rick, glad to be here, and thank all of you for joining us. You know, we only ask for five hours each and every day. Doesn't seem too much. Not too much to ask. Now, Bubba, you are, you know, we've heard murmur, murmur about uh, the Democrats' game plan this year. Honestly, if this game plan, not that the details may be different, but in general, if the game plan that you say people are discussing, Bubba, that claim they know, if this game plan isn't the game plan of the Democrats, then they are stupid. Uh, of, I hope this is their plan, but but anyway, so here, here we go. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's just one, uh, you know, rumor We'd heard Roger Stone. Murmur. Roger Stone was the first one I heard that said the Democrats will replace Biden before the election. Um, and that was like a year ago. Well, there's another guy named Jim Richards, and it's spelled with a K, Rick, A-R-D-S. And he is saying that, uh, and he, I mean, he's given a date. He said that Biden will announce on June the 13th, he'll have a press conference and announce he is withdrawing from the race. And that the Democrats then will be faced with coming up with a candidate during their convention shadow in candidate. Chicago. Shadow candidate. And that shadow candidate is already in place and already ready to go. Now, Roger Stone said it was going to be Michelle Obama. Uh, Michelle Obama said she don't want it, but you know how that goes in politics or football coaches. Right. You never know. Mm -hmm. right. But he is claiming that, uh, that, that it is done. Now, he... He says he has been, uh, he has worked with the CIA, the NSA. He's worked with several presidents uh, all the way back to Nixon on different things. And so he, he says he's an insider and he's got the scoop. But I don't know if, if, you know, if it's valid or not. Who knows? Well, I go back to my original statement. If, if you're the Democratic Party, I hope this is your plan. If you, if, I mean, if your plan is to stay with Biden all the way to November at the rate he's declining, 
Um, I know you're saying, well, Rick, they have a, a shadow government in place now. That may be, but the difficulty of just trying to put on this charade, it, it's going to get harder and harder to do. And to me, if you, if he keeps declining like he is, there's going to be just walking around logic of people going, well, this person, it doesn't make us safe as citizens. It doesn't put us in a good place in the world. Uh, and, and we at home or abroad, we are going to vote against him. If you're the Democrats and this isn't your plan, then I don't think you're very smart. I hope this is your plan. Uh, if, if you're a Democrat. And I don't know if he knows what he's talking about or not, but he, he would be the second person to come out and say that, mm-hmm. that something is coming. He even give you the date, so I, I don't know. And when we interviewed, was it uh, Scott McKay? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When we interviewed him on the Rick and Bubba University podcast, he said that they did want Michelle Obama. The problem is that when Michelle has been given responsibility in the past, she doesn't really like to work. Uh, that she prefers to travel. So, uh, she's a, she's big on vacation, and that they the problem is she doesn't like to be hassled with that responsibility, right? Mm. Because Her she's and Biden w- would get along. Yeah, well, she's wealthy. Well, she you, doesn't have yeah, to work. You, you know, she's, I mean, she's got to have a pretty good life right now. Right. Yeah. I mean, and this would be a, a disruption for that, even though it would be, you know, basically, you know, President Obama running everything again. Now, the, Jim Richards does quote the latest polling data saying that Trump wins head to head Mm -hmm. and the Democrats know this and he's winning head to head in toss up States, battleground States, all six out of seven. He's, he's ahead of, but he is saying that if you replace Biden with another Democrat and, and it's just unknown Democrat and the same poll that the unknown Democrat will win by five to six points because of the dislike of Trump by so many. Yeah. So as a Trump supporter, I hope they stay with Biden. As yeah. someone who just looks at things and goes, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, I don't know uh, how you can. If I put on the Democrat coat, which doesn't fit, but um, mm-hmm. I would go, well, I hope this is our plan. Yeah. Surely we're not riding this all the way to November. Uh, so that, that to me, that's plausible. I'm not saying it's going to happen like you said, but the same thing. But I, it, I'm not saying they're going to do it, but it sure does make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. If they don't, then they're not very smart. So interesting. No, you're right. Yeah. It is election season. And according to McKay on the podcast, he said they want another yes man. And so Gavin Newsom wouldn't really fit that. No, because he's his own yes man. He's his own yeah, yes he, man. He's, uh, yeah. you know, he's about Gavin, and they want somebody that will, you know, curtsy to Obama and continue that, that run right. of control and command that he's doing now. But you know what I mean? You know why this guy's saying this on the polls? It makes a lot of sense. We've all been in that situation, haven't you, where you wanted to do something but the what the state of it, you're like, well, I can't really do that. Somebody give me an excuse not to do this because yeah. I don't want to vote for mm. the Republicans. And somebody says, but I feel like an idiot supporting a man who clearly is in the stages of Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, and you and all of a sudden they go, okay, good news. You, when you vote Democrat this time, it's not for Biden; it's for a shadow person. And they go, okay, whew, thank goodness. All right, I'm back in. Yeah, that's really what he's saying, isn't it? Um, so, much. you know, all these, uh, celebrity, uh, pictures have resurfaced where Trump used to be buddies with, uh, you know, most of the Democrats. Oh, of I'm course. talking about from Oprah to, oh, yeah, yeah. to yeah. Hillary. To, that, I yeah. mean, they would, Went to they the would wedding. smooth and, and stuff and be at all these gatherings and stuff and interact. And now they all hate his guts. Yeah. It's funny. The transformation that once he changed and did certain things, now they all hate him. But it's funny that they've all resurfaced, and they're like, okay, <laughs> they were all real buddies back then, and it was like be a, a Brady Bunch uh, box of, of a picture of like seven or eight prominent Democrats that were all hug, hugged up with him, and now they hate his guts. Well, yeah. go well back, he was go, donating to their campaign. Yeah, yeah, and go back to what Greg points out all the time, and, and we have as well, which look at Kamala Harris, what she said about Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean now now Joe Biden's the greatest thing ever. At one time, he was a sexual predator, yeah, and oh, a racist, and a racist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, pretty much called him. That. She mm-hmm. dogged him everything he's worth, but she had no problem going to work for him. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. which means either she, you will, you're a sellout, or you didn't believe it, or go. what? What's right. your deal? There's not you another know? option. No, 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 really not. No. Yeah. She made some statement. They asked her, and she was like, "Well, it was a debate." So saying that, so a lot of the points you made in the debate, you're saying you really don't mean. No, no. That's what you're saying? Yeah. You would have so which no ones problem. do we keep I mean, and which ones would, do we not? Would you, would you go to work for Trump if he offered you a job? 
Right. I mean, you know, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. She she basically said exactly. worse things about Joe Biden than she has about Trump. You're right. True. Yeah. Well, where Kamala, and all of you are making the point, where Kamala, I would say where you're wrong. No, no, no. A debate is when you tell us why you're a better candidate yeah. than the other person based on tax structure, foreign policy, you know, infrastructure, yeah, all this. But you didn't do that. See, those things, I admit. You you can go and say, well, I can be his running mate because we just disagreed yeah. on some things fiscally, fiscally. whatever. You but, call him but, a criminal. But when you call him a racist and yeah, a sexual a predator, yeah. and then you say, well, that's water under the bridge. Now, those are two pretty big accusations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th- those are big ones. I think that's why uh, Biden made Kamala the border czar. It's just like he knew he was going to open the gates and name her as the border czar. That can help kind of put kind of some of the blame on her. That's what I think. Well, it also gives it gives you a shield because she's a female of color, uh, and you can't be critical of a female of color or you're a misogynist and a racist. Right. You know. So sure. Th- you you yeah, do. That, that's that's been a demo- that's been a democratic strategy for for a while now. They did that with Obama. You were not you were not allowed to disagree with him or you're a racist, and uh, and they they always play those kind of games. So they they their deal with merit is not a big deal to them. It's all how would it play politically? Yep. Oh yeah. How how could we have power and protect ourselves against any kind of um, accusation or defense against us? Hey, we don't really like the way you do taxes. Why? Because you're a racist. Wait a minute. I didn't. What? <laughs> I mean, and, 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 but, but they but they play that game all the time. I don't I don't want to vote for Hillary Clinton. Oh, because you're a misogynist? Uh, no. I think she's evil. Uh, no. Right. Yeah, that's what misogynists say. Gavin Newsom to me looks like the number one replacement. I don't know what y'all think. Oh, I well, think he's been running yeah. uh, all along. But yeah. I, according to one of our guests, he's too independent. He won't get in line. Yeah, not a yes man. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. And if you can't get it on the job that you're at, look at at your com- at the competitors. Uh, look at moving up into a management role or some higher step up the the ladder. Because I, I'm telling you firsthand, all that sounds good, what you said, and we want people to be able to to, uh, to take part of the American dream, and that is work hard, get paid, and do better, okay? We want everybody on that model. But I, And I'll change the, the scale here just so it's easy to understand. I know firsthand, and this was many years ago, back when uh, and I, I started working, uh, Stacy, like when you did, I think I started at three and a quarter, when I first started working, but say you have 10 part-time employees, okay? And at one point, the minimum wage made a, a big jump up. And they took uh, those 10 employees, they put two of them on salary, which means you were no longer now tied to the hourly wage, and they got rid of three of them, fired them. And they, they covered those people's work with the salary people and spread it out. I mean, that was the reality because they had no more money they could pay. They're... When the government drops the hammer and says, boom, you got to pay somebody more, their income doesn't automatically go up. And I think there's a, uh, a real misconception that, that businesses just make money hand over foot. Look, I've been in several businesses that just skim by for years, okay? And, the, and the, any bobble in that was going to put it under, and I've been involved with some that didn't make it. So it, it does matter. You can't just artificially say that. It's a it's a thing that we got we got to work together to try to get people a better living, but we also can't kill the golden goose that's providing them a job to start with, and that's what happens in a lot of cases. Yeah, I think St- Stacy, we do. I agree with, but we want the same things. We disagree on how you get there, and I think, in all fairness, I think it's very dangerous that because the the, the concept that we just heard was the government is involved in every bit of this. Well, if somebody can't afford it, now the government's got to give them stuff for their food. Well, the government's got to mandate what's going to do, and the government does this, and the government does that. Gov- the answer is the government. you got to get this straightened out. Who's straightened out? The government's got to straighten it out. We don't agree with that, and I think that that's been the downfall of many countries when that becomes their mentality. I've been to Europe. I've been to France. I've been to England. That's their mentality. Whatever problem we got, the government's got to solve it. And see, I believe that our founding fathers actually had it right. I think in this country, if we would, would just set up the way they intended it to be, that you, Stacy, you, Bubba, you, Speedy, that you and everybody in this audience, let's try to see if we can't give you an environment that you can maximize your God-given potential by giving you a world to live in 
that affords you maximum liberty, and then you use that maximum liberty to then fulfill your God-given maximum potential. And I still believe the private sector, the free market, if we could get less government involved and more opportunity, that a person might work minimum wage to Bubba's point for a time, but because of the environment and the economy, if we would set it free, they would find their way uh, to a much better living by working hard. Uh, and and I, I think that if you don't watch that government, they go, you go, well, hey, we got this problem. Well, we gave you $15 an hour. What you complain about? And before you know it, anytime you say the answer is the government, I'm always going to say I, I respectfully disagree. Yeah, don't make your goal minimum wage. No. Because if you're doing a good job, I promise you there's people across town that notice it. And you can get into a competitive situation. That's how you get a raise. We got to get back to the point that you're saying the guy who owns this place or is the boss, that's who I want to be. And you work to get there. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. <laughs> Bubba, Tommy from Brooklyn's got beef. Tommy. Yeah, he's mad about something. He's annoyed. <laughs> Tommy. Hey. Hey. Huh. Get out of here. All right. So, Stacy. Calm down. <laughs> Jeez, like we're, we're just talking here. <laughs> letting you guys have it. I felt like I was in trouble. <laughs> well, I mean, I Jeez. thought I thought Stacy, you know, she just had some passion. And, and of course, you can be passionately, yeah. passionately she wrong. Brought, she we'll brought up some passion. good points. The part about the government programs, that's a legitimate point. Uh, I still don't think they're the yeah. answer, but uh, uh, I think I think No, we had... never the answer. No. Never. Never, ever the answer. <laughs> uh, I lived, and me and my wife lived off of 725 an hour both. Uh, full time for like four years. All right, and uh, I worked in the restaurant business, and my wife worked at a like a, a store, kind of like Dollar General. Like like, and, like um, Dollar General. Hmm. Here we go. Twenty one past the hour. Thank you for being with us today on another Rick and Bubba. Bubba, do you want to reveal what the guy said who can it was? Uh, okay, so I, I watched this during the break, and uh, he said he knew some of the names that had been out there, and he said there's several possibilities. He uh, listed the Michigan governor as one of them. Um, but he said that all indications to him is it's Gavin Newsom. Mm. So Newsom's been running, as we've said, a shadow campaign yeah, for 12 yes. months. Yep. He's meeting with world leaders. He's doing things that you would do if you were running for president, not being governor of California. But again, uh, wow, what a track record in California. Oh, if, yeah. if, Did if you say the buy, guy said he's dumber than Biden? That's what the guy said. <laughs> Did he really? He said he's, uh, he's out there. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, don't you think that the GOP, though, they have a couple of plans in case something like this happens? Well, well, At least I hope so. I well, mean, I know a, yeah. a defensive coordinator does if, you know, they're getting beat oh, yeah, uh, well, in, well, in a football and, game. Yeah, sure. the, the, the guy points out that the Democrats have done this before. Yeah. And they did it in 68 with Lyndon Johnson. I mean, Lyndon, did, he was did, unpopular. Did exactly. He was sitting president. And he bailed out after winning most of the primaries. So he had his delegates intact. And that that Biden will stay till the end of the uh, the season as far as gathering delegates. And then he can, you know, release them under law to whoever he has handpicked to, you know, he, he will ask them to, to nominate this person at the convention. So they'll go to the convention floor with most of the delegates, quote, undecided or uncommitted, uh, but would probably follow whatever orders they bark down. Yeah. And this guy Because they have the super delegates too, you know, which kind of stacks the deck. Yep. Remember Bernie Sanders? Yeah. He was winning primaries, but had no hope of the nomination. Right. They yeah. just wouldn't let him have it. Right. Uh, Bubba, and, and if you want to see the state of the left that may or may not be working this plan. Of of America. Uh, Bubba, the new. The, the guy even named the operation. It's called Operation Stalking Horse. <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> Stalking Horse. That's all news to me. Uh, new NPR. Bubba, I know you're a big NPR fan. Oh, the, National Public Radio. Yeah, the new CEO, Catherine Marr, I guess. Uh, she was a former chief executive of Wikipedia. 
Uh, you'll find out why Wikipedia can't really be trusted after she talks about this. She wants to explain to us, Bubba, that truth is an outdated concept. Uh, so, um, can, can I say this? When I sent this to Adler yesterday, there's a challenge in play. Can the Burgess boys play this in its entirety without belling or thinking about the birds outside okay. and stuff like that? Because right. you, you're uh, going to feel it, but that's the, the challenge. It's not as bad as the light guy yesterday, right? No, well, but it's, 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 it's going to give you a headache. Right. I skipped forward about 30 seconds. Good. That's too. okay. That's I mean, look, hey, because they'll still bail. She's talking about, before this, she's talking about Wikipedia, but now here she gets cut oh. straight to the, the truth. Okay. Uh, so you're cheating comment. a little bit. A little. It's okay. Good. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm watching Rick. That perhaps for our most tricky disagreements, seeking the truth and seeking to convince others of the truth mm-hmm. might not be the right place to start. In fact, our reverence for the truth might be a distraction <laughs> that's getting in the way of finding common ground and getting things done. Still got a minute for the Wait now, a minute. I've heard enough. That is not to say that the truth doesn't exist, nor is it to say that the truth isn't important. Clearly, the search for the truth has led us to do great things, to learn great things. But But. I think if I were to really ask you to think about this, one of the things that we could all acknowledge is that part of the reason we have such glorious chronicles to the human experience and all forms of culture is because we acknowledge there are many different truths. Are you still listening? And so in the spirit of that, I'm certain that the truth exists for you and probably for the person sitting next to you. (laughs) But this may not be the same truth. This is because the truth of the matter is very often, for many people, what happens when we merge facts about the world with our beliefs about the world. So we all have different truths. They're based on things like where we come from, how we were raised, and how other people perceive us. Mm. No, no, I think you, you know. You know what you Adler. what you, you saw then was somebody who was asked to give a TED talk and had absolutely nothing Thank to say. You. That's and true, and that's what that may be your with. truth. That's <laughs> your <laughs> truth. That's, hey, now, look, that is my truth. Yeah. Now, what we but, need to but, do is lie so we'll get along. But you understand, this is the mindset that and gives teacher, us, Chris, that, that, so. that gives us. There's no gender. Right. Yeah, that's See, that, exactly. That, 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 I'm sorry. That's not truth. That's not somebody. That's not somebody's truth. That is truth that there are two genders mm. that's not somebody's truth that's that, fact that is the truth there's fact and, and there's, there's also there's also <laughs> biological science that tells us it, that they're not interchangeable we know this okay so but she says that, that may well, be your truth no no that is the truth no, that's really it just it, it just is so anyway so next bad. next bubba would you like to know what she thinks is her biggest uh, uh, way to stop disinformation? No, oh, I can't hardly oh, wait. Is it during the same? Oh, this is another. Another idea. one here. Okay. This, mm-hmm. Let's listen to this. Uh, what, who is this? <laughs> She's the president of NPR. Come Greg. on, Greg. Everything Pay attention. On, everything on NPR, now she oversees. Gotcha. Taxpayer-funded NPR. Okay. Awesome. Here we go. The number one challenge here that we, we see in, is, of course, the First Amendment in the United States pro, is a fairly robust um, right, uh, protection of rights. And And that is a protection of rights, both for platforms, which I actually think is very important that platforms have those rights to be able to regulate what kind of content they want on their sites. But it also means that it it is a little bit tricky to really address some of the real challenges of where does bad information come from and sort of the influence peddlers who have made a real market economy around it. Bubba, she just said. I think she had better one. One one, one of the the biggest (laughs) problems we have uh, on trying to control disinformation is that doggone First Amendment is pretty robust. Yeah, it gets in the way of a lot of stuff. Pretty robust. Yeah. And sometimes people who want to keep you from seeing and hearing things you want to hear, they can't do it because of that First Amendment. That's our biggest problem. Yeah. That's, that, that, well, that, 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 that's in the, that's in the way. Honest. But she, now, don't forget. But then she did say that these platforms need to be able to regulate the type of speech that's on there, which fights against the First Amendment. It does. Right. What she said almost conflicted there. It did. Or, well, or she was talking does about it. two different things. Yeah. Um, or does it? She's saying that, that I, we want to be able to do it, but this doggone uh, right that people have mm-hmm. been given keep us from being able to do it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so really, now don't forget, when someone says they want to control what you can hear and see has also just told you there is no truth. Yes. 
If, if you combine that, yeah. put oh, that right. little soup yeah. together. That's, that's quite a So then I just, then I have, to, I will now ban you based on my truth. Yeah. That may not be yours. That may not, you see, it just. Eh. Well, they're in a circle fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, There's they no are. Way. Yeah. And, and this, this goes back again to the platforms. Are we <laughs> going to hold the platforms responsible so that they have to edit content? Now, if they edit content, they also, also should be open to liability on people that they edit out. They should be able to be sued for that. Or are we going to say they're not responsible, let everything go through, and then not hold them responsible for the consequences of that speech? They're really trying to have it both ways right now. And, and I go back and I'll give this example. We had the same thing with the phone company. They're, they're a common carrier. So the phone company's not responsible if somebody uses a telephone to plan a crime. Right, that's right. Uh, but at the same time, the phone company will not shut down somebody who is planning a crime because they're monitoring them for content. Well, and you know, what they're saying, they always act like it's to protect you from danger, it's but that's sticky, not what. Sticky thing. But that's not the, what they what they're proving is it's not because remember they always look at what they want to ban and what they don't want to ban. Uh, it, no, they want their worldview and ideology to be. Unopposed. Yeah, Dollar General. You know, the, the <laughs> stupid store that's everything's up priced and it's like a miniature Walmart or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and they that put them out in the country. The, yellow, the, the ugly yellow signs down there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You see them everywhere. Like one every three blocks. <laughs> everywhere we go, there's another Dollar General. Get out of here. We so live off can, those you things at Hunt Camp. You can't have you a store with everything a dollar. dollar General. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you go buy a dollar, tree. dollar General and fling it over to the other Dollar Tree. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's funny. close together. Right. What? But no, uh, it's um, it's crazy. She was talking about, like, uh, you know, you got to feed your kids. How about, you know, just don't have kids until you're financially prepared to have kids? Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. Tommy, sometimes it's Tommy. Tom, it. Tom, unexpected you know, things happen, Tommy. I know baby making kisses sneak up on you, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, tired. I'm just saying. They right. do. All right. I understand nobody's perfect. All right. But just you know, just be prepared to not have kids until you're ready to have kids. That's what me and my wife did. And, you know, it's called having a budget. It's called eating ramen noodles or whatever you guys call them. We just call them pasta noodles. The plastic pasta noodles, you got to boil them three or four times and strain the water to get all the wax off so you don't mess up your stomach. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you. Eat that for weeks. Yeah, yeah, you guys have a good day. I'm just saying, you know, budget, people. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a budget issue in this country. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah we don't have sure. one. Here's a concept. Uh, Here's how much money you make. Yeah. You probably don't want to spend more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, you it, may have to you know, tone down, like, instead of six streaming services, go with one. You're not talking about sacrificing, are you? <laughs> That's exactly. You're Rick, not talking I about thought, doing what you got to uh, do to make it happen to you and get to a better place. You're not talking about that, are you? I thought we might get, concept. get through Friday without a full fledged forest fire out <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, some of the things we got talking oh, about, boy. I know that the. Um, of course, everything now is, you know, just polarizing. I, I, the NFL playoffs are this weekend. Yes. Uh, and uh, We had the first round last weekend, uh, the wild card stuff. Now right. we're into the divisionals. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, Some speak- pretty good matchups yeah. too, Rick. Uh, yeah, here they are. Uh, one of them that's really going to, uh, I think, draw a crowd, and it, they've, they've got it on Sunday night, which will even make it a better time. And that is Tom Brady versus Drew Brees, the the two leaders in NFL in almost every category they keep one and two. Uh, they'll be showing that there on Fox Sunday night. Probably the last time these two guys will square off on the field. Yeah, five forty our time, six forty uh, Stacy's time. Uh, she, she called from Georgia. All right, so um, <laughs> the uh, the Buccaneers and the Saints. Here here go the two old men out there. They just still hang. Aaron Rodgers up there still hanging around. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just. And then we got a pretty good matchup earlier. We got Mahomes versus uh, uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, two guys that are you know the, some of the new new Isn't faces in the NFL who have definitely made big impacts. I mean, if you watch these two games, you go from here's the young guys, yeah, and the young you, guns to the old dudes. You, you, you know, the, you bring this up: the AFC and NFC. If you look at the the age of the quarterbacks, one of them has all the forty year olds and a twenty six year old, mm-hmm. and then the other four teams have all guys that are 25 and below. I found that interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And three of them are like 43, 41, and 39 or 38 or something like that. Uh, and then 26. This interests you all at all? Absolutely. 
Uh, yeah, the game. I, I think yeah. so. I yeah, mean, the, the, I think the, some the, of these are real good. Matches. You know, the, the Saints and um, uh, the Buccaneers they played in the regular season. I think the Saints just killed them. It was like thirty-eight yeah. to three or yeah. something like that. So this is it'll be a little different now. I mean, now we're in, in the playoffs and stuff. That one is interesting. And of course, I'm in a I'm in a huge dilemma with the Browns and the Chiefs. Yeah, you've got uh, you your, know, your new and your old favorite just, team. You sir. can't let the Browns overcome your little little, little, <laughs> little Calvin, little Opie, and his little red hair with his chief hat on. Huh? Mullet screaming. Huh? Uh, uh, you can't. No. I'm you can't go get him. <laughs> Questioning saying thing because something because Bubba just said, uh, you know, we're trying to avoid a full-fledged forest fire. But yep. I'm going to tell you something. Here we go. If we can just keep it to a dumpster or a trash can, I'm going to tell you something. And this may help you, Rick. And I don't know, there may be 90% of our audience that disagree with what I'm about to say, okay? I think the NFL this year has been a better product than college football because you've had one system. You hadn't had all these people opting out, and and there's people actually in the stands at, at a lot of these places. Um, you, I don't know. I just I, We're not ejecting people because they had a targeting call. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've just it's a to me it's been a better product, and there's so many storylines. Helmsy, Tom Brady, at Drew Brees, mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield, Aaron Rodgers, guys has lit it up like no other. I mean, you can go on and on at Buffalo. Josh Allen with the Buffalo Bills has been a fantastic story. Buffalo the, itself the, has been a fantastic. The Bills story. are an interesting team to watch. They are. Thirty-five minutes past the hour. Say, we're back. Uh, my old Israel, my old Israel is saying, "Can you help the people of Israel?" And if you desire to do so, feel led to go to IsraelNeedsMe.com. Unfortunately, on a much uh, more down note, uh, lives are being destroyed in Israel. Uh, the horrors uh, terrorism has brought, the situation unfolding with Iran, world pressures, uh, they're impacting so many people. Uh, people have been hunted down on the streets, kidnapped, slaughtered in their homes, soldiers, women, the elderly, children, sadly, sadly, entire families. Innocent lives uh, are shattered. Where there's communities in despair, and emergency war relief is needed. So if you want to help the people of Israel, go to IsraelNeedsMe.com. IsraelNeedsMe.com, helping uh, our brothers and sisters in Israel regain hope, rebuild their lives. Uh, This is a Messianic Jewish organization that's been around for 50 years. Uh, Go to IsraelNeedsMe.com or RickandBubba.com under the Sponsors button, uh, and hopefully you can help. Uh, Bubba, I hate to take our Year America and just and just crash this red, white, and blue thing right into the ground. But mm. um, we we by the way, when you're listening to NPR, you have to know that was the person who's now overseeing. You you have <laughs> well, to. Well, we know had that. The, we had the editor quit this week. Yeah, saying, it, yeah. Look, it, it, he said what we've all known for a long mm. time. This is a leftist organization being right. funded by taxpayers. There's no middle ground. There's no journalism to it. They have a take on everything. And they push the liberal agenda. They always have. Well, now, I've known since I've been around. Babylon B did a headline on that. They said NPR removes this man because he was found guilty of being a journalist. Yeah, uh, uh, you don't want that. You don't. You don't want that in there. Uh, so, uh, so there you go. All right. And, so and I didn't hear anything Blondie said that made any sense. No, I, I did not. But did not. Did mm-hmm. not. Um, no, not at all. They said afterwards she did successfully. Uh, she struggled to, to answer the question, "Who's buried in Grant's tomb?" Um, so, all right. So, wouldn't you love to ask her where you want to go to dinner? Wouldn't that be quite a conversation? Oh uh, well, boy, can you imagine how long it takes us to get to whose truth? And, I know. And, and just a good gracious. The vocal fry was just off the ah, chart. Yeah, 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 and, and, and some of that is your truth, truth is is my truth, my truth yeah. and whatever. Um, All right, so next, uh, the hits just keep coming. Uh, I don't know if you know about this bunch uh, at Columbia. Uh, Representative Jim Banks is going to ask the president of Columbia, don't know this person's name, wouldn't even attempt it. uh, There's a woke guidebook that that has been sent out, uh, I guess, under the president's approval to all Columbia students 
um, and he is going to ask a question about part of the guidebook he would love for her to walk out. Or he, him, is it a he? It's a he. So, is it a he? Yeah. All right, so here, here we go. Yes, yeah. The president's Okay, can you help me understand something else? I didn't go to an Ivy League school, admittedly. What Can you, ex you, can you explain why the word folks is spelled F-O-L-X throughout this guidebook and in other places at the School of Social Work? What does that mean? I'm, serious question. They don't know how to spell? I, I, I mean, I'm not familiar with that yeah, I, spelling. I, I'm not, I, I, I don't find it a laughing matter. No, I'm, I, I'm not laughing either. I you're, think it's, you're, I, I, you're I really denying don't. that this really, is a official product of the school, but this is handed out to all of you. You are aware that it's handed out to all of your students and you're not doing anything to stop it. As I said, it's not an official product of the administration. Is it this is how Columbia University students. spells the word folks? No. Okay. And does, does Columbia University recognize the word? It, because it's not found in the Webster's Dictionary or anywhere else, Ashka normativity. Right. Is, that a, is that an acceptable term at Columbia University? Congressman, I am, I am with you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I agree with you that I, I don't find this a okay. it, meaningful this is, this way. Is, of, this is handed out on your watch. As I said, this is not a product of Columbia to the, University to the board, to the, faculty. The, the, the board of trustees, so. do you... Is this appropriate? Either one of you? That term is shockingly offensive. It's ridiculous. Congressman. Ma'am? Uh, we had discussions about that memo. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the well, check what does it that mean? somebody ah, is writing to, to send your kid to Columbia, and these, these trustees and this president are so aloof that your student, you're being given this bizarre guidebook um, of, of wokeness, and they don't really seem to be able to even understand it themselves. But as the senator keeps, I mean, representative keeps pointing out, then, then should you police it a little more maybe? I mean, I, I still don't understand what she's saying. She's saying we don't put that out. That's yeah, somebody saying, else yeah, that she's puts saying, that out. Yeah, and what he's saying is, but aren't you in, don't you have a say on what is being well, given who, to who, every student at the university? Who puts it out then? Um, uh, I don't know. Some organization, I guess. She never really explains that, does she? Or them either. So there you go. Um, now, Bubba, we get down to our, our old friend, Senator Kennedy. So Senator Kennedy uh, is going to be asking, um, um, uh, I guess this is a Democrat, Secretary what? B-E-C-E-R? Becerra. Becerra uh, about where we draw the line when it comes to abortion on demand. I don't think any of us, sadly, are going to be shocked by this. But he gives him a scenario that you would think that even maybe the person who is the most in on abortion on demand would say, well, now in this case, I think that's an abuse of this right. But uh, that's not what we're going to get. So he here, here we go. Well, let me phrase it another way. What restrictions do you support in the third trimester to the right of a, to an abortion? Tell me what restrictions. Uh, if you read the Roe versus Wade decision, it'll answer your question. Why don't you just answer it for me? I did. Roe versus Wade what established the protection. What restrictions do you support on the right to an abortion in the third trimester? You Roe personally. versus Wade. Roe versus Wade. Okay. Roe versus Wade doesn't say what restrictions. Roe versus Wade just says the state and the federal government have the right to impose restrictions. I'm asking you what restrictions you, you, you support. For example, if if the, the mother and the baby are healthy and we're a week before birth and the parents change their mind and say, we don't want a boy, we want a girl, abort the baby who happens to be a girl, would you support that right? I know no one who would go as far as what you're indicating. Well, then why don't, wouldn't you say you would oppose it? Because I'm telling you where I stand. No, and I have not. been very you're clear on that for a long time. and weaving and flip-flopping no, no. like Let a Let me stand as still as you'd like. <laughs> Senator, I won't move, <laughs> and I'll just move my again. lips. If a week, before, a week before birth, baby healthy, mother healthy, would you support the right to an abortion because the parents dislike the gender of the baby? Yes or no? Yeah, as I said, a woman should have the right... 
that that is not a hard question. What he's saying is, mm. it, it, would, would you just find anywhere that you would say, well, I don't think that's I, I think it's a fair question as yeah. to where you draw the limit. I mean, he uh, tried to give you the most outrageous scenario. So you could so, say that's So you could at limit. least say, yeah. all right, well, there, yeah. there's my line. Yeah. But we won't say that. Uh, Rick, I was looking up this spelling of the word folks because mm-hmm. this is the first mm-hmm. time I've heard of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Indeed. They say it's a way of writing folks, F O L K S, that emphasizes the fact that you intend the word to include all groups of people, including the LGBTQ community. So I guess if you spell folks, F O L K S, you're not showing that you support LBG. T Q F O P. Says who? P. Folks, is it anyone uh, that would be out there? If the, I said, the, "Hey, they, folks, good to see y'all," and there's people in the audience that are LGBTQ, it would include them. Rick, you know that we have to have words, and oh, special words. Blah, blah. So you know we've already changed pronouns. Which, by the way, they just kind of changed that on their own. Nobody that with official language ever approved that. And now they're going to change the spelling of words that you have to put an X on the end of it. Because you got to be well, clear what you mean. Is, you got to yeah. be clear you ever what seen you mean so what, in and, your life. If that's where we're at, everything's uh, been. This is 1984 of. stuff, guys. Hey, 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 Greg, that is where you are. That so the official you, you, spelling you, 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 that they you, use is F O L X, and that's used. and the president says this is not a uh, official publication of the university, so she has no control over it. But the senator or the congressman was saying, this is handed to every incoming freshman. Who's in charge? If you're not in charge, who is? When, 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 I'm, t- I'm, over, I'm over here in the heterosexual community because, you know, I came out years ago. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> That's I, brave. I, I just want to say that who declared that heterosexual people, when using the word folks, F O L K S, are discriminating? Are discriminated against any group of people anywhere? That's the only people who declared that are not the people who are actually saying it that are being accused of doing it. Yeah. Well, what they've no, done no, is they they've taken the letter X and used it as a tool to to identify gender neutral uh, whatever. But anyway, but, me, but, meaning the, the, thank you, the, that's their that's their letter. So they put an X on the end of everything. Yeah, but it's not necessary because the word folks still it, includes them. the word folks. is not a discriminatory word. It's not word. a discriminatory word. It means yeah. everybody here. Phone calls next. All 10 lines are available. We'll chat with you when the show comes back right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Anybody like Lamar? Yeah, what he's doing. And what's his, what's his I mean, there are so right? many things to get excited about with football you, in the NFL this you, year. You know, Rick, what I would like to do, and I, I've, I've missed an opportunity to do it so far. Of course, I didn't have antibodies and tiger blood, but <laughs> you know, I would like to go to one of these games where there's only twenty thousand people and see if I like it better because I don't have people up <laughs> under my armpits. <laughs> you know, if you're a little large like us, you go to a game. Oh. You got, I mean, I got a friend under each arm. Yeah, you know even, what I mean? I, I don't you, even enjoy. It. If I go to those places where you have to sit on bleachers. I'm just like, well, there's not because well, think about it they, now, built those bleach, they built those yeah. bleachers at some of these stadiums so long ago. It's when people weren't as fat as they are now. Yeah, and how about this? We we've got used to the lower noise floor in the stadium, so now when you have twenty thousand people cheer, it kind of sounds loud. Yeah, you know no, we're not right. used to hearing seventy or a hundred or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah. <laughs> Nine minutes to the top of the hour. Rick and Bubba show. All right, so we were talking about Mark out of Missouri asked the question, and a lot of us have asked this, why, why when the case was brought to these Pennsylvania courts about voter fraud and, and uh, you know, the, the, the things that were done that the Constitution seems to not allow, and that is you changing the voting rules uh, without going through the proper channels, um, and, and they wouldn't hear it. And, of course, I thought Congressman Palmer had answered that by saying, well, some of this is due to the fact that the Trump team, uh, the legal team, didn't do a very good job. Uh, that didn't seem to be satisfactory. And we started talking about some other things, uh, and Gabe and Prattville about you know the, the role of the Supreme Court in the state, the federal Supreme Court, uh, the local. And, and Gabe says he thinks he can, he can clarify some of this about where we were you know, maybe confused. Go, go ahead, Gabe. Hey, guys. I appreciate you taking my call. Sure. 
So uh, long story short, I lived in Pennsylvania for a short time. I'm from Alabama originally, back here in the great state, and uh, I have a lot of friends up there, so I paid attention to this. And what happened is the uh, court in Pennsylvania extended the deadline to receive those mail-in votes, and that was against the legislative uh, law at the time. And so when it was presented to the Supreme Court, they said, look, we'll look at it, and I'm talking about the Supreme Court of the U.S., they said, look, we'll look at it if those extra votes matter. So in that, that, that space where they were receiving the votes, that were beyond the law, uh, they set them aside. There were roughly 10,000 of them. Well, Biden ended up winning Pennsylvania by 80,000 votes. So even if they saw it, those 10,000 votes wouldn't matter. He was still won by 70,000. So the Supreme Court was like, hey, it's not worth our time to pay attention to this. I think, I think that's the reason they didn't look at it. Yeah, and, and that needs to be communicated better. That seems like such a simple point. And it's like it's – I understand because – like somebody said in an email to me, and I understand their sentiment, and said, well, you have to understand, you guys have talked about it. We can we cannot bend to the mob. And I sent back, which mob? Does that mean all mobs? I mean, it, yeah. because we, we have mobs all over the place now with all uh, different points of view. And I agree. I don't think we can give in to, give in to mobs. But what we can't say is, well, you got to give in to one mob, but right. don't give in to the other. But, Gabe, you, you make a good point. See, if, if you – and Congressman Palmer said this – he said, there's people trying to divide us. They're giving you a half-truth. A half-truth is they wouldn't hear it. Well, that was true. But the actual whole truth is it didn't matter. Yeah, why? Didn't That's matter? why they didn't hear it. Right. Or they didn't meet the criteria for it, or, which would be in this case. It didn't matter. So that's that was one of the checks you had to have uh, to get the case heard. So w- we've got to be careful we don't buy the easy headline because a lot of times – Look, there are people who want to divide us. The Chicoms want to divide us. John in Birmingham. John, go ahead. Hey, um, I, I understand legal standing, and there there are certainly some issues there. But, Bob, I couldn't disagree with you more on – well, first of all, the Capitol thing had not happened. So claiming that that was a reason why these guys failed to listen to the case is no, a moot point. I, I'm it's just saying they've seen finish. mobs of let, all let, types. Let me, let me, please let me finish. Yeah. Please let me finish. Number two – there was no Trump mob at the time. The only mob was the BLM and the Antifa people who were completely tearing this country down. And John Roberts is the guy who was quoted as saying, supposedly, um, they're rioting in the streets. And he certainly was not referring to Trump people. Okay? So I, I just couldn't disagree with you more. It had nothing to, it had to do with their fear of Antifa and big tech and the major corporations who – um, sided on the other side. I think that's where the fear was. It had nothing to do with fear of Trump people. Nobody's shown any fear from us the entire time. Thanks. Well, they do now. I, hey, what, what about uh, what do you think about the, what what the caller said before that? That they said they would hear it if there were enough votes that would have swung the election. And when they looked at it, they it wouldn't have mattered if those ten. Yeah, the boys are standing by. Uh, call us, and we'll chat with you. All ten lines are open. Well, uh, about seven of them are open, as people are now calling. Hey, go to rickandbubba.com. Check that contest button. A couple of opportunities. Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix down in Sweet Home, Alabama, at Barber Motorsports Park. You can register. Our cutoff is tomorrow. Uh, you could get a meet and greet with country superstar uh, and the Grand Marshal. Uh, Riley Green. Also, you'll get tickets, you'll get parking passes, garage tickets, uh, and you need to enter uh, by the time we hit midnight uh, tomorrow. So uh, we'll announce the winner coming up uh, uh, on the 22nd, which is Monday, right? right? So so anyway, if you want to register for that, you can. Also, fix Mama's Mouth in play. If you have not entered your mother to be considered for the Dr. Dudney uh, Fix Mama's Mouth uh, makeover this year, $17,000 $17,000 value. Uh, the deadline for that is May 3rd. Uh, follow the directions to the letter or mama won't be considered. Okay. Uh, to the phones we go. Uh, let's start uh, with Kathy in Sweet Home, Alabama. Kathy, go ahead. Hi. Yes. First, I'm in a car and I don't know where the microphone is. So am I yelling? You know, you yeah, sound you're, good. You're go good. Ahead. You're all right. Go ahead. Okay, good. Um, you had played the clip about the questioning of the 
word folks, and it sounded to me like I'm in my car, so I can't see anything. Um, sounded like they asked the president lady, and she said she didn't know anything. Sounded like there was a man next to her. He didn't know anything. Right. Was there another woman on the other side? Correct. Because I heard somebody say, yes, we talked about that. Yes. And then the clip cut off. Yep. And I'd really like to know, is there anything more? What did what did they talk about? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I want to well, know. Yeah, what you heard was the president. Then you heard a, a trustee. And then the final woman was another trustee. She's the one that said, yeah, we did talk about this. And then it cut off. Well, see, the, in the point yeah. the congressman what was making, he, he said, you've got to misspell word here. Yeah. And they knew exactly what they were talking about. Right. And they're not going to say, yeah, it's a misspell word. No, we did that on purpose because it's more inclusive. Right. I mean, the the, the level we're going to now on inclusivity, uh, we have to change the spelling of words. I mean, come uh, on, people. This is getting ridiculous. Well, well, especially when there's no need for the word to be changed for your benefit since you're still included in the original spelling of the word. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're wanting to be elevated to a special place. See, that's not what we all discuss. I thought you just wanted to be living your life in society like everybody else. Right. But no, you have to have a special version of folks, folks to make sure that you're not included, you're elevated. Mm-hmm. Uh, we continue Cecil in the Peach State of Georgia. Go ahead. Hey, what's up? Um, do y'all ever think that all these politicians, not all of them, but it's sort of like watching the student council nerds from high school. No, I do feel that way. I, I think sometimes uh, there's certainly some exceptions, and I'm thankful for those that, you know, I th- you have to be careful when people like this is their time to tell others what to do and to feel powerful, and, and they start get and they just drink that power juice, and, and uh, before you know it, you know, they say they were only going to stay a few terms, and they got to stay longer because they've become so important, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, uh, and all of that. I, I, think, uh, I think there's something to be said for that. I do feel that way a lot of times. I'll tell you the thing that concerns me, and I, I think there's a lot of wisdom that comes with age, uh, as long as you still have, can think. And, 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 but I do think it doesn't hurt uh, for us to have some, you know, at least a little bit younger folks. Sometimes I look around and I say, I see our, our hands are in, in in the hands of some really, 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 really old people, uh, mm. and, and, and maybe somebody else really might old. might need to take that baton. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we continue. Uh, let's go to Casey uh, out of the Music City, Nashville. Casey, go ahead. Hey guys. Hey. Um, I know this is an hours old conversation. I had to tune out, so I apologize. But um, I wanted to come back to the topic of artificial food dyes because my son is autistic and he also has ADHD. So he's got a few neurodivergencies here. And I've noticed that when I give him uh, items with artificial food coloring in it, he is a totally different person. And I realized that after kind of starting to cut stuff out of his diet yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that he started to kind of open up a little bit more. And I'm not saying food dyes are the reason for his autism. I have my own opinions on that. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Um, but I do notice that neurodivergent children tend to have more sensitivities yeah. to those food items. Yeah. I even noticed, you know, a lot of times I think we're learning more and more uh, and, and this is not new information, but we're learning even more about it because we thought it was just with the elderly, that our gastrointestinal health and our mental health, especially fogginess and cloudiness, they're really, really connected. Uh, and, and, Absolutely. And, and, and when you are when you have a healthy gastrointestinal um, um, you know, body, your, your clarity of thought and fogginess uh, really, really uh, is so much better. So, yeah, I would think with, since we know those things, how they're connected, it would not surprise me to hear that. Uh, and uh, and I'm like you. When it comes to where we are with the autism spectrum right now, uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't said by us. It was said by a medical doctor from Baylor is there's really there's no such thing as a genetic epidemic. Uh, and, and, we, right. and we have epidemic numbers now, so it can't all be genetic. Uh, so there has been insults, I think, because every individual is so unique, it's hard to nail it down. But um, I don't know what your opinion on it, and I'm not asking you to give it. But I do agree with you that there's been some sort of insult to a whole generation of people, uh, and and we have a 317% increase in autism. And and again, that that mm-hmm. can that kind of increase can't be genetic. 
So, so there you go. And, and, and two, it kind of goes back to the industrialized society. Yep. Uh, the, a lot of positives come out of it. But yep. then we have, you know, these processed foods. We have certain things in that that might be an issue. Yep. We have certain things in our environment chemically that might be an issue. You throw in, you know, something in the middle. And when you add all these together, you come out with, you know, peanut allergies and mm -hmm. yep. autistic things yep. and, and yeah. other diseases ADHD, that we stuff. really, it, it's a combination of things put together. And we can, it's so complicated, it's hard to get a, a bead on yep. what it it's actually so, is. It's really because you, you, you can lie on one thing and add it or take it away and you get, well, it looks like an anecdotal, you know, result to that. Yep. Yep. But then you do it with other people and you don't. And it, it just gets, it's very difficult difficult to track down. I mean, it's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Well, you know, and I know, and you're getting, it doesn't work for everybody and that's the hard part, but I, I, I have seen treatments where they address the gastrointestinal health of the child and they actually go from like not being, um, able to communicate and suddenly they can, uh, you know, and the improvements sometimes have been quite remarkable. So, uh, so there's no doubt that in, in some cases there, you know, it, those types of treatments, uh, are certainly, worth it uh to to take a look at mm -hmm. you know but sometimes it, that plays a big role yeah uh so you would you know who, like bubba said earlier who would have thought that you know what you're putting into your body might actually impact your physical and mental health <laughs> probably would yeah uh but again it has to be proven not just somebody said uh top of the hour thanks for being with us uh, if you're leaving us have an outstanding day uh, thank you for being with us. If you caught some of the show, but you're like, wait a minute, I didn't catch the whole show. Uh, catch those daily archives on our YouTube channel and podcast channel. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba.